Kyle Bank challenge calling to the best in the sport of stock car racing. Dale Earnhardt, five-time Winston Cup champ and the man most likely to succeed in 1993. He has dominated the season to date, but surely he must be feeling the breath of his closest pursuers. Like Rusty Wallace, 1989 titleist who well remembers the thrill of his championship. Wallace has six victories this year, and today his third pole position. And this man, Mark Martin, winner of four races this year. Martin's Jack Roush team has recently been all but unstoppable, a juggernaut of performance. Will his late season charge deliver the so far elusive championship? Three men chasing a title. 34 others chasing victory. A sure formula for drama as NASCAR returns to the Monster Mile. TNN Motorsports proudly presents live exclusive coverage of the Split Pyre Spark Plug 500 presented by Pep Boys. From Dover, Delaware and the Monster Mile. This is the car that owns six victories and three pole positions in 1993. It's on the pole today, and with its driver, let's go trackside and Glenn Jarrett. Well, Mike, throughout most of Rusty Wallace's racing career, he has been a Pontiac man, but recently, rumors have surfaced that he may switch to Ford next year. But like you said, he's won six races. He's on the pole for today's race. Your Pontiacs have been causing a lot of excitement, Rusty. You're really running well. I got a good Pontiac. I really enjoy being involved with the people, and... Uh... I've had a lot of wins. I've probably had more wins than I could ever imagine with them, but uh, unfortunately, it's not my decisions right now. It's what it's in GM's decision whether they want us or not. Well, looking at today's race, so you've been darn near unbeatable on one mile or less racetracks this year. Well, it's a long race today. We've had good handling all the time. We really pay a lot of attention to our engine combinations, our chassis programs, and stuff like that. But uh, uh, we're really ready for today's race. I think we are. I've, I led this race a ton the first race, and then Mark and I got in a big wreck coming off of turn three there, and I wasn't able to finish it, but. Uh, Hey, we're on the front row today. This is the car I had at Bristol. It's a good car. I've won four or five times with this car so far, so I got a lot of confidence leading into today's event. Well, good luck to you. Here's Randy Pemberton. Well, folks, unless you've been doing the Rip Van Winkle thing over the last four weeks, you probably know that Mark Martin has been the hottest driver on the circuit. Four Winston Cup wins in a row until last week at Richmond. Didn't have a bad run last week, Mark, but uh, you're at a place, Dover, that the, it probably owes you one. You've done everything but win. Well, we're looking forward to today. You know, the Valvoline team's got a great car under me, and we're all pumped up. This is a racetrack where we've run, you know, really good at in the past and haven't won yet. So uh, we got our fingers crossed today. We're looking forward to it. Good luck. Glenn Jarrett? Well, I'm standing by with uh, the points leader, Dale Earnhardt, and, uh, you know, some talk has been uh, bandied around lately that uh, this guy's been stroking a little bit, trying to protect that point lead. I've known this guy for 35 years. I've never known him to stroke. Dale, you gonna go get them today? Well, we, uh, you know, want to race about 450 so laps there and try to be in contention to race in that last 50. Uh, it's gonna be a tough race. We hadn't had much practice and we think we got the car right or close and uh, we, we want to have it right so we, you know, our tires wear right and everything. And you got some guys up here that need to win a race before the end of the year and then trying to prove themselves to the car owners and to the sponsors. And it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be a tough race. You just going to. Hopefully stay out of trouble until the end there and race him at the end. Well, he's a tough man. He can do it. Mike? Thanks, Glenn, and hello, everybody. It's a beautiful day for racing here at Dover. Those are three familiar faces in three very familiar cars, but that's not the case all the way through the field. Silly season, 1994, is already upon us, and already there are big changes. Beginning today, Jeff Bodine climbs into the seat of the team he purchased from the Allen Kowicki estate. That leaves Jimmy Hensley rideless. Lake Speed takes Bodine's seat in the Bud Moore Motorcraft Ford. Ernie Irvin has moved into the Robert Yates Racing Texaco Ford. And Jeff Purvis, who's been running a kind of a farm team development team with James Finch for the Morgan McClure people, now drives their Kodak car. And earlier, Todd Bodine replaced Dick Trickle in Butch Mox Factory Stores Ford. There's one other temporary change Glenn will tell you about in a moment. But first, what is driving all of these mid-season changes? What's behind it? And what lies ahead? Let's go to my two broadcast partners, Neil Bonnet and Buddy Baker, for the answers. Here's Neil. When we start talking about driver change and the things happening internally in this garage area, just think back. You're looking at Jeff Gordon's car right now. 
He was being brought along by Ford Motor Company to drive a Winston Cup car. Guess what? He went to Chevrolet. Ford was really upset. Now you're looking at the Chevrolet that Ernie Irvin just got through driving. He went over to Ford. Is that a payoff? Who knows? But let me tell you what. We're always talking about the Winston Championship. Not only the Drivers' Championship, but the Manufacturers' Championship. Ford, Chevrolet, they fight every week on the racetrack, and now they're fighting off the racetrack to who drives which race car. I've never seen them so involved as they are right now as to which driver goes into which car. They're getting very protective about losing their drivers, and they're getting very aggressive about picking up new drivers. Very tough on the drivers to decide which way to go, but they're getting some help from the manufacturers. Let's go over to Buddy Baker and see what's happening to the driver points. You know, guys, everybody's concerned with who's going to be number one, number two in the point. But there's a race going on back in there from like from fourth place, $170,000. That's a lot of money. It drops. When you get the 14th spot in the point, you drop to $40,000, the difference of $130,000. Had years I didn't make that much. This is for the point, not counting what you're doing now. These guys are going to go after it the last part. There'll be no pulling over or anything else. It's going to be hard racing, and everybody wants to move up in the points. The 26 Quaker Straight Ford that you're looking at here is normally driven by, by Brett Bodine, who is in 14th place in the points, but Brett crashed hard in practice on Friday. The super sub of NASCAR this year, Dick Trickle, has taken over. He ran some of the fastest laps in practice yesterday. Dick, you got to feel good about your chances. This car's flying. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, Kenny Bernstein has put a super team here together, those Quaker State people. Uh, the car is quick, you know, and only like five laps or so, we were running a 23-second bracket. And, you know, I'm just proud to be filling in for Brett, and you know, I know it's harder for him than it is me right now, but uh, Brett, this is for you. Well, we have a report that Brett is okay. He's gone to Allentown, Pennsylvania Hospital to have a cast fitted for his wrist, but he is okay. TNN Motorsports exclusive coverage of the Split Fire Spark Plug 500 he is brought to you by Haviland Formula 3 Motor Oil. Car. By cold filtered Miller Genuine Draft and Miller Genuine Draft Light, taking the country by storm. By Goodyear, number one in tire. By Buick and your local Buick dealer. Remember Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. And by Pep Boys, for quality parts, accessories, and service, come to Pep Boys, America's automotive supercenter. It's a packed house and a perfect day for racing here in Dover, Delaware. Pre-race ceremonies continue. We'll be right back. Deaf. <laughs> hello, hello. They want to make it quick. Okay. Is that really Joe Mattioli the third there in the middle? Mr. Thurman over there, Peabody. <laughs> you got it. <coughs> 30 back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, yeah, I don't want you to get. I don't want to mess you guys up. But you can leave it down for a second, too, so if not, then you can put the Coliseum of Speed. I like it. Get out of your way. <coughs> that, makes a, that makes a majority of one. <laughs> Two.
Let's go back down to the starting grid. Here's Glenn Jarrett. Well, Mike, we're standing by the uh, DuPont Chevrolet driven by rookie phenom Jeff Gordon. And you know, it's not unusual for a young kid to take a fast car out on a ride for a Sunday afternoon. This guy does it regularly, and he does it well. You've been running awfully well lately, Jeff. I know you've got to be looking for that first win. Could it come today? Well, I hope so. Uh, we've got a lot of folks from DuPont up here, and the car is just driving beautiful. It's a, probably one of the best cars I've had. This crew is doing a good job, so uh, we're just going to see how it goes. I think today might be the day. Okay, best of luck to you. Of course, Jeff, along with everybody else here today, was led to the checkered flag at last week's race by the same man who will lead them to the green flag today as Mike Joy reports. Mark Martin going for a modern-day record fifth win in a row with the leader at the halfway point. But Rusty Wallace, earlier penalized for jumping a restart, would move his way back to the front at lap 267. Soon, Bill Elliott would be right on Wallace's tail for the lead. 15 laps to go. The restart turns into a major pileup as you watch from Bobby Hillen's car. Next restart, 10 cars to be on the lead lap with nine to go. Earnhardt and Elliott almost get together. A caution comes out again. With just two laps to go, Ken Schrader, a lap down, battles Dale Earnhardt as he tries to overtake Elliott. Elliott winds up second. Rusty Wallace gains his sixth victory of the season. Earnhardt still with a secure point lead. Rusty Wallace gained a bit of ground over Mark Martin, Dale Jarrett, and Morgan Shepard. Kyle Petty, Kenny Schrader, Bill Elliott, Jeff Gordon, and Ernie Irvin are your top ten. The final practice session was canceled due to darkness after the Bush Grand National Race ran late yesterday, so reverting back to the early practice session in my book, Ernie, you were the quickest. This thing was flying yesterday. Well, I'll tell you, Larry and all the guys and Robert and uh, just done a great job with this Texaco Haviland Ford. And, you know, we haven't really touched it since we got her qualified good. It seems to be racing. You know, hopefully it'll race good. A little different weather right now. And I want to say hi to Kim and Terry. They're all at home watching, and uh, hopefully Jordan's feeling better. Ernie, good luck. Mike Joy? Thanks, Randy. Sears Die Hard Battery now with more power when you need it most. Presents the starting grid for today's race. You've met Rusty Wallace, his 15th career pole, but his first here at Dover. And Ernie Irvin has his second straight front row start in the Robert Yates car. Jeff Gordon, fourth time this year he started third. Jeff Bodine, first start as an owner driver in Winston Cup ranks. Run number three, Mark Martin, who's won four of the last five, and Rick Wilson with seven top tens. Morgan Shepard, winner at Atlanta, and Harry Gant, who has four Dover victories. Dale Earnhardt, who won here in June. Kenny Schrader, who won here at Dover in 91. Bobby Labonte, freshman driver, and Rick Mast, who ran sixth here in June. Bill Elliott, who's won here four times, and Derek Cope, who has a victory here. And now, ladies and gentlemen, to give the command that will send the field on its way, and the split fires, start plug 500. Presented by Pep Boys, here is the founder and vice president for auto racing of Dover Downs, Mr. Melvin Joseph. Gentlemen, start your engine. And with that, 37 cars come to life here at Dover Downs as you look down through the rest of the starting grid. Ted Musgrave was fast in second day qualifier ahead of Ricky Rudd. 36 positions in the official field. And one provisional starter, Jimmy Means. What a day for racing. Yesterday it rained most all day. We just snuck in the 200-mile bush race, won by Todd Bodine. After Joe Nemechek wore out the field early, cracked the wall, and then Bodine came back after getting four tires with 50 laps to go and one in a walk. Exciting race, and I tell you, Neil knows a little something about not being able to practice yesterday. A lot of these guys didn't get to run their tires in, and they're worried about maybe having a tire problem later on. Yeah, they like to scuff the tires before the race. They didn't have that opportunity, so they'll be running new tires all day long and see what happens. We'll be back to Dover after this. Absolutely. No, okay. that was that was fine. Time we're doing our first thing here. Coming back. Boom. <laughs> I'll tell you. Gentlemen, start your Indian. Did you hear him say Indian? Oh well. Oh well. 
I didn't see Glenn Wood today, did you? No, I saw Leonard and all of them. I didn't think about that. Okay. Yeah. Let me see if I see him up pits. Yeah, I see him. I see him. Right in front of the box. Right Who that? Yeah. Glenn Wood. Wood. Oh. Good. We always look for those guys. Are we up on satellite people? Yeah. Hello, satellite fans. Yo. Satellite fans and scanner fans out there in the grandstand. If you have your scanner on TNN, just raise your hand. I could have been a contender. <laughs> Getting ready to go racing on the Monster Mile. Bunch of TNN fans. A bunch of them here today. What a crowd. That's the new grandstand down in turn one as the field rolls out for the first of what looks like will be four pace laps today. Everybody moving. We'll be riding along with Mark Martin in the Jack Roush Davoline Ford today, winner of four of the last five races. We'll have three cameras on board of Mark's car. First, what Mark sees through the roof cam. That's as close to his view as we can show you. And the over-the-shoulder 360-degree pan and tilt race cam. And also we'll have the suspension cam on Mark's car. Up there in the right front. TNN pioneer to Rockingham. In fact, it was on Mark's car. It's like one of his old that. favorite springs. It's been used a little yeah. bit. <laughs> just a bit. Look at the debris is generating off the right front tire there, just going around here now. That's why it's so slick the first couple of laps until you blow that away out of the groove. But he also will be riding with Jeff Gordon, leading rookie on the tour in the DuPont Finishes Chevrolet from the Rick Hendrick Racing Team. And there's a look at Jeff at work from the right window sill over near the windshield post. And we've got a roof cam on Jeff's car, but it's looking out the back. And that's the view he hopes he has of the competition today. And also the standard race cam is mounted at the midpoint of the roll cage, just over Jeff's right shoulder. And you see him following the pole sitter, Rusty Wallace. Dover down one mile, measured 15 feet up from the inside rail here. 24 degree turns. Nine degree bank in the straightaways. Short straightaways for a mile track, just a thousand feet. It means a lot of corner as you look at it from the aerial view and the harness racing track inside of the stock car oval. Couldn't ask for nicer fall weather here in the mid-Atlantic states. There is the NASCAR weather radar painting uh, essentially a blank screen. There's not a little bit of, I think there's a cloud down there past Martinsville, Virginia. Hopefully it'll be gone by next week. 69 degrees, 64% humidity. Winds out of the north. Stiff breeze there, 13 miles per hour. No chance of rain today. Here's Randy Pemberton. Here's an update on, update on the tire situation, guys. Uh, they ran this tire here in the spring, and if you can remember back, a couple of guys did cut down some right fronts. Now, this is the tire that they've used at Bristol. They also brought it to Michigan, where they picked up a tremendous amount of speed at Michigan up there in the recent race. Now, uh, in light of the tires cutting down it over here last time, Goodyear has recommended that they up the tire pressure. It's going to be 50 pounds recommended on the right front, 30 on the left sides, or excuse me, it's 50 on the right sides and 30 on the left sides. Now, uh, most of these teams have around 40 to 50 tires. They want enough where they can change tires about every 50 laps if need be. So that's really the tire story. And depending on who you talk to, there may be a problem and there may not. We'll just have to watch and see. A couple of laps before we go racing, Randy. Look at all the tires mounted up for these teams. We'll be back to Dover Downs for the start of this race in a moment. Polaroid. Wants to know if you think you know NASCAR racing. In a few seconds, we're going to show you a photo and want you to spot the error and play the Polaroid Captiva photo fake-out game. The Polaroid? Yeah, I hope so. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Yeah. All right. Is that it? 
It'll be any harder than most of our fake outs we have. Is it no. a little tougher? They, they took it. They, well, I can't tell because it's on you the know, satellite, but no, it's pretty know, easy. Why would we they need to back you up, Neil. So, so you're. Let me ask you something. Oh. Why did they say every 50 Tip laps over. if they didn't think you had a problem? You can go further than that on fuel, I uh, promise. That's for sure. Yeah, tires All will right. be when they stop today. Um, we pop the 800 number in when we get uh, we get a get a chance here. Thank you, sir. Who's got somebody's got their foot <laughs> down here? NASCAR. Look. Yeah. NASCAR shoes. Oh, coach is busy. <laughs> yeah. I think he's one of yours, coach. Says NASCAR on there. He's one of yours. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well. One, one, one to go. One to go. Well, I have a chance to talk to them. That'd be nice. Would you please? <laughs> look at the, the soles of those tire treads. I like what it. They look like. Yeah. Okay, go back to Chuck. We'll get start. Well, that'd be nice. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. They'll look for a green flag this time by. The field is in the back stretch in front of the horse race grandstand here at Dover Down. Today's race. Starts 37 cars, 500 laps is 500 miles around this place. Bill Elliott set the race record back in 1990. Average speed 125 miles an hour. We'll have our toll-free number in use throughout today's telecast. If you have questions you want to pose to the folks on pit road, people in this race, or other questions about this race or NASCAR racing, the call is free, 1-800-451-7331, and that'll be in operation all throughout today's telecast. Make a note of the number. We'll repeat it in just a bit. As we get ready for a start here at Dover Downs, 500 of the toughest miles anywhere in auto racing are set to begin. Chevy versus Ford on the front row. Harry Gant drops down low right there mid-pack at about the sixth row. Earnhardt behind him gets a good move. And the front three are single file coming off the corner. Rick Wilson up high really shook the car coming off of turn two. And a crash in the back straightaway. Daryl Waltrip goes spinning, sliding. One car dives to the apron to miss him. And Dave Marcus is in the wall along with Bob Schacht. Oh, what a tough break for Marcus. Southeast Technical Group, his primary sponsor today. There's Jimmy Means who was involved in it. Daryl Waltrip just come by. He didn't hurt his car at all. No. He was up to full speed. And Bob Shack, the Arca racer in the Queenstown Harbor Oldsmobile, pulls away with minor damage. Marcus's car is sponsored also today by a honeymooning couple. Got married yesterday. Alan Young from New Jersey called up Dave, said, what would it cost to get on that car? And Dave told him, and he sent him a check. And uh, so congratulations to them. Hope the marriage survives better than that quarter panel. <laughs> with the first lap. See what happened. Top of your screen. You see Daryl crossed up right there. He's down near the bottom of the racetrack. He lost traction coming off that corner. I don't know whether somebody bumped him or what, but he just turned around there on the straightaway. Jimmy Spencer gets through. Spencer was the car right behind. There's Shaq into the outside wall. And he's going to come down into Marcus. Oops. Sorry, Alan and Tina. Looked like Walter was either got loose or got a little bit of help getting loose up off that corner. Well, first thing you see was the back end of his car break loose. Boy, Greg Sachs just did miss him on the bottom side. That was the car that snuck past on the bottom. Good move for Sachs. So caution out on the very first lap here. And with this caution flag, we'll take this pause from Dover Downs International Speedway. The monster has gotten in the first fight here. Two laps complete. You know, watch Daryl right here. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, that's a caution. But what it looked like, he might have got a little bump. Jimmy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
wouldn't surprise me. I tell you what, though, when you wreck on that back straightaway and you drive away without hurting the car, extremely lucky. Yeah. <clears throat> What's your line, Neil? He started the wreck, he just didn't finish it. <laughs> do that, do it. <laughs> now we look more down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Shaq's got some real problems. Okay. And then could you uh, could you show me the 71 car so we can pay off that little story with the dented up dented up quarter panel on Marcus? Because I don't think we'll see him again today. He's smoking too. He's got a yeah. tire rubbing. He's back in the pits here. Under the first caution of the day, Darrell Waltrip's car unscathed after that. Bob Shack, Dave Marcus, and Kenny Wallace were not so lucky. They each received damage in that accident toward the back of the field. Here's Randy Pemberton. Well, Darrell Waltrip came over the radio and said that the air pressure in his tires were just, just a little bit high, it was. So uh, he said the car just came out from under him. Uh, Barry Dotson, the crew chief, also told me he thought there was a little dust. There's a gate that opens on the back stretch over there to let uh, spectators across the racetrack. And he thought there was a little dust there that he hit. But it was a little air pressure problem. He thinks it'd be all right. But it uh, gave him a little scare back there. So there's Marcus. Uh, rather, there's Walter. And <laughs> that's not the, way to, not the way to start your honeymoon. It was a big dent in the quarter panel. But just married, says on the back there. Now, Marcus says he's going to send his PR guy around to every city they're going to look at engagement notices and see if he can keep this deal going. <laughs> Hasn't decided, though, how much he's going to charge for divorce notices on the quarter panel. Boy, you're touching on the gray area. Be quiet. <laughs> I'm telling you. Line up somebody's divorce on the car, and the wife will want the whole car and the house and everything. We are going racing this time by. Here's the way they're running. Rusty Wallace, the race leader. Ernie Irvin running in second. In third is Jeff Gordon. In fourth, Jeff Bodine. And in fifth, get a quick. Mark Martin is running in the fifth spot. Morgan Shepard is sixth. Rick Wilson is seventh. Harry Gant eighth. Dale Earnhardt is ninth. Bobby Labonte tenth. Mike, we just heard at the top of the show they said they, they upped the air pressure to 50 pounds on the right side. That's a lot of air pressure for a track this size. That might be some of the deal Walter was feeling the first race. It's a lot of air pressure for this size racetrack. Four laps complete, two under green. Caution will end at lap five here. What is that, about 10 over what they normally run? Yeah, about 10 over. And what you got to keep in mind, they run 50 in that tire there. The inner tire has 70 pounds in it, so pretty rigid amount on the ground right there. Started to oil four, showing them to hold it down, and now green flag waves, and Rusty Wallace brings them up through the gearbox and back down to turn one. Jeff Gordon's car in third place. There's that area they talk about the dust on the back straightaway. That's where you come across. Take a lap to get that out of the way. Up ahead, Rusty Wallace, Ernie Irvin in the Haviland car. Gordon is third, and right in his mirror, Jeff Bodine. From Mark Martin's car, off the roof cam. Looking ahead at Jeff Bodine in that black and red number seven four. There's Martin. What a tear he's been on these last few weeks. I talked to the crew chief the other day about Jeff Gordon, how well he liked the car up here, and he said I had to leave the front office and go back down there and set that car up myself again. The crew chief did, and he said he really likes the car. In fact, like when they were running for Davis. Dick Trickle running for Kenny Bernstein has drifted back to 32nd spot in the race. Trickle might have been in the middle of uh, when Darrell Walter had his incident. Boy, there's Jeff Gordon right up on the inside of Ernie Irvin. Irvin slid up about a half a lane. Gordon drove him right out in there beside him. Fantastic. And from Jeff Gordon's car, you see him complete the pass and move up into second. Big challenge, Morgan Shepard up the outside, and the Citgo four to the Wood Brothers. Just gained about three spots, just like that. Ooh, look at the back end of that 21 car. It was switching there, everywhere. Morgan did a great job in that car this year. And he's had a lot of success here at Dover. The boy at the Wood oh, Brothers. That uh -oh. car's always been good here. Look who's on the run. Earnhardt on the bottom, and Rick Wilson is Mark Martin in trouble. 
this is a case where he just got out of the inside lane. Or they won't give it back to you. You got to take it back. He's going to have to work to get back inside. Top of your screen, Harry Gant passes Mark Martin on the inside. As they come back to start finish and complete lap eight. There's Rusty Wallace leading the field. From our Ray Bestis aerial chopper, Ray Bestis, best in breaks, bringing you these Probably chickens. We have a spin in turn one. Phil Parsons. Mannheim Auto Auctions Chevrolet up into the wall. Phil had a great run here in yesterday's Bush Grand National Race. Rusty will handily lead the pack back to the flag as Parsons sits against the wall at turn two. Trying to get it moving, but it's not any use right now. I think it's wow. got the radiator and all going all knocked off along with the right front wheel. Well, we ran two laps of caution and then we ran our, our green and then six laps of green. 11 complete. There he Looks like he's getting down. Oh, he's Ooh. down under. Uh, who is that? The Musgrave. Musgrave car. And they got together a little bit. And around he goes. And I'm telling you, you're going to hit this fence a ton. Mm. Look who's at that? Him. Derek Cope. Oh, Cope. Man. People wonder why Cope didn't just turn left to get out of the way. You just <laughs> can't turn left up there. It's real slippery on that part of the track. You just got to ease the car on down. Then Parsons looks like he guided the car back up to the wall to keep it out of more trouble as everybody moves by on the inside. Here's another angle. Ah, he just got underneath and had nowhere to go and got down on the flat a little bit there and it turned right around on him. Oh. Cool. Anybody's ever hit that wall like myself, that hurts just to see that. <laughs> that can bring flashbacks, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> The car still rests up against the retaining wall where it stopped. And the track crews kind of cautiously going to Phil's aid. It's a good indication how steep this racetrack is. So these guys are like climbing a mountain to get up there too. You can see Phil outside the car there. He's okay. He's moving around and everything. I would have thought the fire station would set up. I figured it would fall off of that bank. On pit road, Dave Marcus and Jimmy Mean still repairing crash damage from the lap two incident. 12 laps are complete here at Dover out of 500. We'll be right back. Just barely touched the inside. Yep. That's all it took. Okay. Oh, okay. Shot of <clears throat> yeah, a little cooler. Feel good. You want to talk to him or me? You want to? I can talk. Take to a him. shot. Make sure he's Dialogue. not coming in or anything. I don't like to bother him when he don't know what they're going. No, to. I know it. You want to talk to him the first hey, time around? Hey guys. That's okay. Go ahead, Randy. Just to let you know, uh, Steve Meal uh, got here, I believe, last night or this morning. He hadn't been here all weekend. That's all I wanted to tell you. Just, you know, so okay. they set that car up without him, basically. And Phil Parsons said he just lost the brakes. That was it. Right. All right. Steve wasn't here because they were rebuilding the... Uh, Correct. The, uh, okay. One minute. Jesus. We got time to... Shiner shoes. What? Yes. I know that. Thanks. Got that. Oh, yeah, what's the deal with the 26? He went backwards. Yeah, he went. Yeah, 26 they're went way back. Absolutely nothing over the radio. I can go down there and find out, right. but if they're not talking about it on the radio, I don't yeah, know you're what, right. what I'm going to get. You know, I wasn't okay. wasn't he around Daryl when that thing all got started? Yeah, I think it was because of the uh, the Waltrip incident. Okay. I think he was kind of right there. They well, he started 23rd. My mic's open. Mics are open in the pits. TNN Motorsports exclusive coverage of the Split Fire Spark Plug 500 he is brought to you by Napa because there are no unimportant parts. Bill Parsons is okay after his bout with the wall at turn number two, and the monster claims another victim, this time a Chevrolet. Larry Hedrick car started by 
Phil Parsons. And uh, they're trying to get squared away that they can pull that car. They want to roll it down off the wall instead of sending a wrecker up there. And Phil gets the mandatory trip back to the care center. I wasn't real sure about that. It looked like he might have been looking at somebody uh, trying to make a little gesture there. Yeah, it looked like he's walking on track. Uh, kind of questions what happened. It's hard to say. So they'll try to roll the car down off the banking and then be able to clear it off. See, yep. if we, see if we can get a word here with Jeff Gordon in the DuPont Chevrolet, buddy. Jeff, this is Buddy Baker at TNN. Can you hear me? Yeah, buddy. How you doing, bud? Doing well, man. You're flying. It looked like you're really hooked up. Well, we're only 15 laps into this race right now, so we just had to see it's a long, long day. But I tell you, this DuPont Chevrolet has been running good uh, this weekend, and it's running really good right now. We're just... You know, just trying to get up here and get in a rhythm, get in a pace. I'm not really looking to just take off or anything. I just want to be there at the end. Well, we wish you good luck. Thank you. Jeff Gordon currently running in the second position. Calls on our 800 number. And again, it's toll free. And if you have questions, particularly about this race, but other questions about Winston Cup racing, if we have time, we'll try to get to them. Otherwise, pass them along to some of our sister shows on TNN. Toll free number 800-451-7331. Sam from Massachusetts. Neil wanted to know what your job was outside of racing before you got racing full time. I work as a pipe fitter. I worked out of the union as a pipe fitter, putting pipe all together in these big buildings. And it used to be really dangerous when it was high rise buildings. So I went to something easier and went to racing. Easier <laughs> and safer? If you fall off one of those buildings, you don't have a chance. A race car, you got a shot at it. <laughs> Let's get a word with Jeff Purvis here in the uh, Morgan McClure Chevrolet. See if we can set up our uh, in-car commu communication with him. Get all the right knobs in the right direction here. We'll do it. There's a bunch to it here. Jeff, this is TNN. Can you copy us? Here you real good. Well, how's it going so far here? I know we're only 16 laps into this thing, but you didn't get much practice yesterday afternoon. How do you find the track today? The track feels pretty good. The car's feeling real good. I'm just trying to take my time and stay out of some of these accidents and try not to cause any of them. <laughs> okay, good luck today. Thank you. Purvis has had quite a relationship with the Morgan McClure team. His car owner, James Finch, has purchased cars and engines from uh, the Morgan and McClure team and Runt Pittman to run in ARCA. And so it was kind of, they had that natural relationship going. So when Ernie Irvin left, here was the driver that they had worked with. And uh, so he and James got together. James Finch is going to run the Bush operation uh, with Jeff as driver, and Jeff driving this car for at least the balance of this season. Yeah, James Finch and Purvis have been together for a long time. He used to win a lot of those big dirt races and all. James is a big racer, and I tell you what, uh, it's a good opportunity for Jeff Purvis to do good in his four car. Let's hope he can do well with it. His first trip up to Winston Cup racing went with less than success. Uh, he's a lot older, a lot wiser, and I think he'll do pretty well. Polaroid Captiva photo fake out says if you know NASCAR racing, and you spot the error in the picture that we're about to show you. That they have supplied us requires us manually to pick up the radio, look at the top of it, dial in the right number channel, find it. It's nowhere near as easy to use as the thing yesterday. So to drop everything I've got in my hands and what we're doing to do it, it takes a little time to set it up. Did you see the Parsons car come down running the wrecker? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. Thank you, Greg. No, it's not. <clears throat> How's everything down there, Randy? Up. Oh, lost Randy. There's Daryl back in again. Greg, it's just that deal where you could just flip up he the can't anything to lose. He's on the rear anyway. Yeah, he might as well come in and do whatever he wants to do. Oh, he was loose. They're beating no, on I the spoiler. I, I understand that. Thank you. Loose plus they're putting some bite in her too. Putting bite in it. They beat the spoiler up and took on four tires. And back in the battle he goes. Night of the round track. <laughs> okay. 
No, he didn't hear me. There. All right. Except Gordon Tomahawk. Yeah, he's got to say he got a big Tomahawk down there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whatever they do. Eighteen laps complete at Dover as you watch from the Pontiac safety car driven by Elmo Langley. There are the turn one suites. And here's the big picture of the Monster Mile. Ray Bestus, best in brakes. Provide our aerial photos today. You see the horse track in gray inside of the one mile stock car oval. And just in the upper right hand corner of the picture, that's the new Delaware Superhighway Route 1 that will connect this part of the state with Interstate 95 and make commuting to the races a lot easier for the fans up north. It's really going to make me mad when they finish that. It'd be, easy Why? To get, <laughs> oh, it'd be too easy to get in and out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting. I should go out there and help them finish it. Yeah, <laughs> quickly. Before next May. Two cautions in these first 20 laps to dump the average speed back to a less than impressive 62 miles an hour. And I think he almost got the record in the pace car, 62. He has led the most laps so far. I wonder if he'll get five bonus points. What do you think? Eight laps under green, 11 under caution so far. And we're going to get one to go this time. Light will come off on the safety car. And Rusty Wallace will lead Jeff Gordon, Ernie Irvin, Jeff Bodine, and Morgan Shepard toward the green flag. Dale Earnhardt's running sixth, Rick Wilson seventh, Harry Gant eighth, Bobby Labonte's in ninth, Ken Schrader is tenth, eleventh is Bill Elliott, Mark Martin slid back to twelfth, Rick Mast is thirteenth, fourteenth is Kyle Petty, and fifteenth is Hutt Strickland. Sterling Marlin is in sixteenth, followed by Ted Musgrave, Jimmy Spencer, Ricky Rudd, and Michael Waltrip twentieth. Then it's Todd Bodine in twenty-first. Fifteen car. Who's that? This Lake Speed. Lake Speed. Let me I, help you on these things. Thank you. Bit. Thank you. It's going to take a little <laughs> while. Lake Speed. In Bud Moore's car is twenty-second. Then Derek Cope, Dale Jarrett, and Greg Sachs. There's the top twenty-five. Ahead of Terry Labonte, Wally Dollenbach, Jeff Purvis, Bobby Hillen, and Dick Trickle in thirtieth. We're cleaning these tires off for this restart. Get all those junk off of them. It's going to take a pretty good run down in turn one. Maybe now we can get this race started. Lap 20 coming up here. You notice he's got his hand on the shifting lever. There's two reasons for that. Of course, going to change the gear right away. But you want to make sure it don't jump out of here when you accelerate. Rusty got a good pull on the field that time. Yeah, I was going to say, when we talk about accelerating, Rusty Wallace car really takes off on all these restarts. Back here, Mark Martin. It's kind of misleading. Mark got hung on the outside and really fell back. I don't think his car is off that much, other than he just got caught outside early and fell way back. Harry Gant moving up. He slipped under Rick Wilson. So did Bobby Labonte. They each picked up a spot. Well, Bobby Labonte's been strong these last couple of weeks. And there's Earnhardt going underneath Morgan Shepard and into the top five. Earnhardt started ninth. He's up to fifth. Point leader and five time champion. You know, we were talking yesterday. It's about time for Gant to really start flexing his muscles. And this racetrack, I don't know if the guy that runs this racetrack any better here again. Well, it is September. He's going under Morgan Shepard right as we were talking there. And this will be for sixth place. It's very hard to feel. And Shepard's going to backslide just a bit in the field. He's lost three spots by being up in that high lane. Jeff Bodine had a look underneath Ernie Irvin. Got a real good run around the middle of the corner. I thought he was going by him. He pulled right up on him. You know, guys, there's nobody in this race that wants to win any more than, than Jeff Bodine because this car is not on winner's circle for next year, and he feels that he might can win a couple of races before the end of the season. And I think Ford Motor Company's betting just that, too. Helped them win that manufacturer's championship. We'll put him over from the Bud Moore car into the car to the team that he has purchased. You see Jeff Gordon's running this car back down of Rusty's. I tell you, he's strong. He says he's just riding, but he's doing a pretty good job of riding, don't you think, Jim? Yeah, he's just riding at a high rate of speed. 
Uh, you know, anytime you touch that, it's going to take it easy. But if you get the least little bit of sniff that that guy in front of you is falling off the pace or something, it's just as well to ride out front if you can do that. The speeds here have really climbed in recent years. When Jeff Gordon gets down to the end of the straightaway, he'll be traveling about 170 miles per hour on a one-mile racetrack. And then down in the middle of the corner, just before he gets back on the gas, he slowed down to about 135. Okay, well, if you're asking a lot of these engines to pull that torque down, pull them down low RPM, zing them up off the corner like they do, and that's one reason this racetrack eats these engines up. Well, okay, Gordon's car really makes a good move right in the middle. It seems like Rusty jumps off the corner. 26 laps complete. You're watching the two leaders, Rusty Wallace and Jeff Gordon. Never saw Gordon close up right in the center of the corner. Let's go to Glenn Jarrett. Well, Mike, I'm standing by with Phil Parsons. He walked out of the infield care center. And Phil, that was an awfully hard hit. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine, Glenn. Uh, I was got up beside the 55 car driving down in the corner, and I don't know. I don't know if he thought he needed to block me this early in the race. He was holding me up. We had an awfully good car here today, and uh, best car we've had for months. And uh, he took us out. I don't know exactly why. It's a little bit early to be blocking, but uh, he took us out. Well, we're glad to see you're okay. Better luck next time. Thanks. That hey, smoke. I'd like to say hello to Marsh and kids who are back home. Uh, I'm all right. Be home tonight. Thanks. That smoke you saw a moment ago in turn one. Bob Shack split, uh, slid up banged the wall, went back down to the infield, and the car, I believe, came to rest at the inside of turn two. No caution. There is Bob's car. Wow. And it, yeah, it smacked the wall pretty good after it looks like he cut down a right front. Yeah, he didn't do one of those glancing jobs. He got into a pretty good. He squared it up pretty bad. But there will not be a caution as he's made it all the way around without putting any debris on the racetrack. Well, he didn't put any debris on the racetrack and went over the fence because there's, <laughs> there's a lot of that car missing from the part I saw. There he is limping around into the pit lane at turn four and behind the wall. Boy, Jeff Gordon's trying every straightaway to get by Rusty. I believe he's got a little advantage in the center of the corner. The car seems to turn a little bit better than Rusty right at this point in the race, and he's trying every way in the world to get by. But he's just riding. Know, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> he's just racing. That's what it's named. The game is racing. Very little riding goes on. And one reason why, there is Ernie Irvin moving in. The front two cars have broken away a bit on this restart, but Irvin is catching back in. There's the interval. Back as far as fifth place. As it's closing back up. There's Mr. Earnhardt. He's moving in to join the battle. And a long gap back to sixth place Harry Gant from there. There's been the least bit of concern about tires. Everybody's concerned. If you remember the last race of your Earnhardt was the guy that kept wearing the right fronts and busting down a couple of right fronts. So I, I would say he's probably the gauge. If they've got a tire <laughs> right. problem, uh, either that he's going to be careful to see what happens, but uh, there's a little bit of concern about it. But too, Neil, I would imagine they have changed their chassis setup for this track a whole bunch from what they had here in June. We'll, we'll see. When I went through the garage this morning, they said, hey, we loosened the car more than he wants it, probably, just so it worked that right front over. So uh, I guess they're going to have to just get the car balanced towards suits and tires more so than him right now. Mark Martin's moved back up to eighth as Rick Wilson slid up the groove. Bill Elliott and Kyle Petty drove past before Wilson gets back in line. Ken Schrader now dips to the inside of the STP Pontiac. Schrader going to take a look on the inside. And once you get that nose there, you have definitely got the right of way. <laughs> that guy will give you that inside lane. You know, in the Bush race yesterday, they can do a little bit more two but side by side racing than they can for these Western Cup cars. All this horsepower, you need that bottom lane to get a hold of that ground. So Schrader moves up and moves on. Up there at about 10th place. Up front, lapping by the Hurley Limo Ford of Jimmy Mean. The lead is really tightened up with that one little bit of traffic right there. There's your front five. Wallace, you're riding with Gordon. Then it's Urban, Jeff Bodine, and Earnhardt. I tell you that, just like we were talking about before, that uh, car Gordon closed up right in the center. Here we see Hutt Strickland, Ricky Rudd, Spencer. Rudd Spencer going under Hutt Strickland. That's 15th place right there. Rudd's always run good at this racetrack. And I think in the back of a lot of people's mind, they said, well, he'll come on in the race, but he's kind of caught back in his traffic as if he worked his way up there. September's been a good month for him, almost. Richmond and Dover, two of his 
better racetracks. You see he's a three-time winner here. Let's go back up front. 37 laps complete. Jeff Gordon doing a me and my shadow routine with Rusty Wallace. I tell you, these two cars are just about evenly matched, just in the center of the corner. You see him close up a little bit. Now Rusty will pull a little bit right along here, so they're pretty evenly matched. He'll take an error. Let's get word from the Rusty Wallace pits. Here's Randy. Well, as good as he's running right now, guys, he came over the radio and said uh, the car is a little bit tight. Now, what these crews don't want to do down here right now is uh, is go ahead and over-exaggerate this tightness this early in the race. You're only uh, 38 laps on these set of tires, and uh, that could very well loosen up for him. So he's complaining it's a little bit tight right now. I've seen a lot of guys up and down messing with this air pressure already. We're just going to have to see what these tires look like when they take them off. But the driver's got the, you know, he's got the last say in it. So if he feels tight, he might make them change a few things. This seems to be one track where you chase the setup of the race car all day to, to keep the car up front. I tell you what, Mike, there's been occasions here you could be leading the race, and you, if you're not liberal enough to go ahead and change it, even though you're leading, you might have the best car, you better be willing to change it all day because the track's going to change. The leaders will have to be willing to make changes all day or the other guys behind you make those changes pass right on by you. Front five continuing tight formation here. Rusty Wallace, Jeff Gordon, Ernie Irvin, Jeff Bodine and Dale Earnhardt. Two of those top five drivers in new rides. We asked Ernie Irvin his perspective on all these driver changes. Well, I mean, we all got to put food on our tables, and, uh, you know, what's best for us is what everybody has to do. Whether it's me, whether it's Jimmy Means, or, or whoever, you know, they all got to do what's best for themselves, their families, and, uh, you know, this is something I felt I needed to do for my family. Was it worth five hundred thousand? A full twenty. Really? Bobby Hill in there coming up on. It was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> right. The leaders were getting into traffic, and Buddy Baker watching from the in-car camera. Jeff Gordon just grabbed a gear and downshifted for him. I mean, it, things got stacked up there pretty quick for a minute. There you see that pack of traffic. The leaders are running in. That's clear. It's Bobby Hillen just ahead. The Heilig Myers Ford of Judy Donlevy. We've got a new fourth place car to Earnhardt just moved into fourth. There he is, having passed Jeff Bodine in the Family Channel Ford number seven. Moving underneath Bobby Hillen's teal colored machine. Now, do you see the slower car goes to the outside here because the preferred line is the bottom, and that's a nice move for Hillen to get out of the way on the high side of the racetrack. Boat I moving underneath. And that kind of puts the front four right together. A little bit of traffic stacked it up. 
closed them right back up again. Taking back in the pack of it, there's a battle for 13th position. There's Jimmy Spencer, Michael Waltrip, and Rick Wilson. 13th position here. There was a Morgan Shepard. He really got off to a good start. He's back in this pack here. For some reason, his cars fell back. They've really been running good lately. And on the left of your screen, Michael Waltrip, the Pennzoil Pontiac, has come from 24th starting spot. You see Dale Jarrett in that group right there. His car really works well here. He runs second in the first race this year here. And his car really sticks to the bottom of the racetrack. See him just drive right on by Rick Mass there. 17th place for Jarrett now. In the Interstate Battery Chevy, Joe Gibbs. Shepard's been running a little bit higher. There he goes in that line. He's about at the inside lane, boy. And we're back up front. 51 laps. Still Jeff Gordon. Bumper to butt with Rusty Wallace. Well, Neil, we're getting close to the time they're going to start making pit stops if they're worried about the tires. Because well, I think one thing that might have helped them, buddy, is they ran a little bit. They got the caution. They ran a little bit. They got the caution. And it enabled them to scuff those tires and put some heat in them. Every time you heat these tires up and cool them down, it's just like curing them. It hardens them and makes it even a little bit harder compound. So that probably played in their favor. Somebody's going to have to make that first move to go in and see what they look like. Here's your Napa Field standing update brought to you by Napa because there are no unimportant parts. Well, what happened here? This big gap all of a wow. sudden. Yeah, Rusty stretched it out here just in the last couple of laps. Morgan Shepard has been dropping back in the field. Shepard started this race in seventh position. He's currently posted in 20th. At the front of the pack, Wallace seems to be pulling away just a little bit. And Ernie Irvin is unable to gain on Jeff Gordon at this moment. What happened to Jeff Gordon was they were overlapping the uh, Keystone car of Wally Dallenbach, and he got caught on the outside in just one corner. He was on the outside. That's how far he dropped back. And, hey Buddy, you know, too, if, if Rusty Wallace said earlier he was a little bit tight, right now is when it'll be in his favor. That tightness will leave, and some looseness will come to the car and neutralize. So right now, Rusty's car is probably better than it was 15 or 20 laps ago. We've got a couple of questions on the 800 line about tires. Uh, if they have to have 50 pounds of air, or is that the maximum? And what, what they actually fill the tires with? It, it's not just compressed air. I tell you what, sometimes they'll use compressed air, and most of the time they use nitrogen. They'll use nitrogen simply because the heat doesn't affect the air pressure. It doesn't go up so much. But the tires can withstand. They can, you can put 100 pounds of air pressure if you want yep. to. They're so strong, you can put 100. The trick is to find the right air pressure. You'll see them check the temperature. They want it to read the same on the inside, the outside, and in the middle of the, of the footprint of the tire. And that pressure is what dictates how much, how much air pressure it takes, the heat. Rusty Wallace has led every lap of this race. And the heat's coming back. Yeah. You look at Jeff Gordon, though. He's running back down. That car is failing. For a guy that's just riding, he's doing a pretty hard job of riding. Front five have been pretty constant here the last 40 laps or so. The first thing you got to learn about race car drivers, they don't tell you the truth, and little young ones are worse. <laughs> <They'll> <laughs> like the younger boy. I hate to tell you all this, but we're getting a report that they're seeing a little bit of smoke off the car, too. I saw that one just once or twice, just a little wisp of it. Maybe it's just a fender or something barely touching the tire. That really is not a problem. That's what we hope. I just hope it's not, you know, something tire-wise. We hope we just have to play this out and see what happens. But if he was complaining a little bit of push, he might be smoking that right front side. I've ran the same Ford. I know you have to, but he smells like a tire plant coming off that right front, all that rubber boiling all day long. So it's not the best of feelings. No. Looks like the old Indian burned the blanket thing, you know? <laughs> yeah. Poof, poof. Smoke signal. Let's go back to eighth place here. Seventh, eighth, and ninth this is. Uh, ooh, Todd Bodine. Yesterday a winner, and today he's in trouble in the Butch Mock Factory Stores Ford. Yellow is out. Right front. Caution is out. He's knocking the toe way out of that thing. Yeah, Bill Elliott's coming down pit road. Now, I don't know about that call because I, I wonder if they're going to say he got in before the caution he came out. A, I believe he has a right front this flat. He's going on high, I don't know Neil. what's wrong. Well, 
I they, see something there on the front that don't look right. They may have made a decision to pit, and he was in the pit lane. Caution came out, and he had to roll right through. So he'll be on the tail end of the lead lap. He does not lose a lap. You can see that Todd Bodine smacked the wall pretty good, and the monster has bit another one. Hopefully it's not what we were talking about. We were right at that stage where we'd be concerned with it. When we get Bill Elliott's car back on when he comes down pit road, right front fender on that car has some damage there. Something yeah. they might have made contact. He might have hooked somebody's quarter panel and peeled that out. Todd Bodine has hooked the wall. Woo. Well, you can see the skid marks way back before he got in there. He did lose something on that right front. Looked like got, got it up in the wall. Did a tremendous job yesterday in winning the 200 mile Bush Gray National Race. And he brings out the third caution of the day. Everybody comes to pit lane. Three cars that stay out, four cars were lapped automobiles, and Daryl Waltrip will stay out. Or is that, excuse me, that's Kenny Wallace. Staying out. So everybody on the lead lap is in, and that's almost everybody. 28 cars are on the lead lap right now. Boy, everybody went to school yesterday on have to have four tires every time you have a caution because that won the race for Todd Bodine yesterday. Our director, Gary Clamp, is going to give you a new view of pit road. Here are the three leaders in their pits. Remember, Rusty, as the leader, got to his pit first. He's pitted right near victory lane. And on the right side of your screen, you'll see how they line up as they come down pit lane. And it'll be Wallace ahead of Irvin. Irvin picks up a spot on Jeff Gordon. Boy, that was a great pit stop by Ernie Irvin's crew, but I tell you, Buddy Parrott and those guys on Rusty Wallace's car, they video everything. They really get into this thing. They are good. 62 laps are complete here at Dover Downs. We'll be back after these messages. Those other cars, see if that's playing out. The tires, uh, the tires yeah. Here's a look at the three right. brass coming in. Here. Can uh, can we get a report from the pits on what these tires look like? They're coming off these cars, please. See if there is any concern about where you know, any big concern. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thanks. Is it cut on the Okay. If he hooked a fender, you know, hooked a, I don't know. Hmm. I don't know what's under there. We're back live at Dover Downs on the Nashville Network, bringing you Winston Cup stock car racing on a beautiful Sunday afternoon in September. Let's get out of the pits for an analysis on what happened during those stops. Here's when. Well, Mike, I'm with uh, Steve Mill, a crew chief on uh, Mark Martin's car, and you've had a chance to look the tires over, Steve. What do they look like? Stuff looks good. We're too tight. We were wondering what the weather did to us yesterday. We started them a little bit looser than normal, but we're still showing 10 tight on pressure buildup, so we're, we're working on it. We took a little wedge out, put a little air in the right rear on that stop, so it's only going to get tighter from here. The guy that started a little bit looser than us will be better, but we're working on it. But no problems out of the ordinary? No, Lord, no. Uh -uh. Goodyear's got a good tire here. They had a little trouble here in the spring. People let too much air out, but we started recommended pressure. It'll be fine. Well, that tells that story. Bill Elliott, black flag for going above the line, uh, coming into the pits above the white line. We also had a call in the pits at the, the 75 and the 11 car. Bill Elliott did blow a tire, so I don't know what we got right there with that. The Todd Bodine cut down a tire before he went up into the wall. Yep. That's one of the things. And, the, and also Bill Elliott had tire problems. Could just be a coincidence. Flats. Have to see. Let's check in with Mark Martin here. He weaves the car back and forth. We'll get set to go to restart here shortly. Mark, this is TNN. Can you copy us up here? Yeah, I can hear you. Mark, how's it going? It looks like you got off to a real quick start and then found yourself a place to run back mid-pack there. Doing fine, just uh, biding our time. 
the racetrack's pretty treacherous right now, and we're just trying to, you know, run a few laps here and get, get everything going our way. We'll start moving up gradually as a, as a lap to go forward, I think. Okay, thanks. Good luck. He makes Thank a good you. point. We're only 65 laps into this. There's only 435 laps to go. Too early to start wondering <laughs> if your car's working right or maybe not working too well. Or He thinks it'll come around to him. You sound like Eddie Wood. I used to run seem like half a day. He'd call say, just 230 more to go. <laughs> <laughs> Never did like him when he gave you that call. <laughs> As we get ready to go back to green, here's the way they're running. Wallace, Irvin, Gordon, Earnhardt, and Bodine. Now, for a second, Wallace had a pit stop of 18.2 seconds. Ernie Irvin was 19.7. Jeff Gordon was 21.5. That's why those three, two of those three spots changed hands. Mark Martin, Harry Gant, Kyle Petty, Bobby Labonte, and Kenny Schrader running pretty much where they were when they came onto pit road after that caution flag. In the right lane for the restart, Wally Dollenbach, Kenny Wallace, Dave Marcus, cars that are one lap or more down. Also Bobby Hillen and Jimmy Horton running at his home racetrack. Say we're going racing this lap. There's a record coming down pit road with the car. But I guess he can clear it. That'll be Bob Shacks being hauled back to the garage here. Green flag. And this time Wallace doesn't get away quite so easily. But the car with him is not second place Jeff Gordon. It is Ernie Irvin, rather, who's moved up to second. Then Gordon finally clears the lap car of Wally Donovan in the back straightaway. Wow, did you see Earnhardt then? He got in the side of the Keystone car there and just shot right straight up the racetrack. He's real lucky to catch that car. It's hard to realize watching this on TV just how close these cars are to the edge of control until something like that happens. And suddenly, you're out of control. And Earnhardt lost it and caught it all in the blink of an eye. I shouldn't say that was lucky. He's good. You see him do that a lot. We are looking at the back of Jeff Gordon's car. After Earnhardt got around him, it looks like he's trying to catch Gordon. Gordon's car had a lot of speed early in the race. You know, the trunk lid of that car is the only piece on it that's painted all one color. <laughs> yeah, the guy paints that car earns his money. Yes. And often. And often. Well, people don't realize they'll run one of these races. If you get out of this race without a scratch, they still have to take a back berth totally redo the cars, paint them and everything, because they got to look like a showpiece at every race. That's right. Here's Glenn. Well, Mike, we're down in the garage area. They're working on Todd Lodine's car, trying to get it ready to get it back out there. Todd, what happened? You think you ran over something? Yeah, I definitely could run over something, cut the tire down. Uh, the car was a little tight, but not bad, and I was baby in the right front anyway, and just run over something and went up the wall. I got to slow down pretty good, so it's not too bad, but we're not going to make it back out. But you're okay. You had, you had a really good day yesterday. Kind of, kind of tough to take having this happen so early. Well, you know, it's, it's kind of like a deal like Bristol. We won in Bristol, and the next day we didn't even make the race. So, you know, that's racing. It's up and downs, and you got to take everything in between. Okay, we had a lead change. Let's go back upstairs to Mike. That young fella could turn out to be the best of the Bodine brothers. Well, I tell you what, he's got a lot of talent. He really does. Bernie Irvin has put the Robert Gates Haviland Ford out in front couple of calls on our 800 number about why that number might not be retired in honor of Davey Allison. In all of NASCAR racing, the car number belongs to the car owner, Robert Gates Racing, and they continue. And, you know, okay, it would have been nice to retire the number of Davey's memory, but you keep that number on the car, and the first thing people think of is Davey Allison, and isn't that a more fitting tribute? Absolutely. I don't know. I, I, think, I so. think so. Yeah. In that last shot, you can see Jeff, but, uh, <laughs> Jeff Gordon and, and Earnhardt moving up in here. They're fighting it out right now just behind the leaders. Blake Speed made a pit stop under green in the Buckmore Motorcraft Tour. And he'll go down a lap as Earnhardt pulls up on the back bumper of Jeff Gordon. Third place. There's the interval. First and second, back to third and Here fourth. Here comes Earnhardt. He's able to get around Gordon. Really where it seems like Gordon Strong seems right in the center of the corner. Earnhardt starts working well with the bottom. I tell you, when you get the nose under somebody, it's over with. You go right on by. 
And look who else is coming into the picture, Mark Martin. Yeah, Mark's moved right into this thing. He wasn't kidding when he said he's going to just ease his, on, ease his way on up front. Well, when you're sitting in that car, you know how good it is. If you got one that's mediocre, you can pretty well run it to death all day long. When you got a really good race car, you can pay, pace yourself and use your head a little bit more. One, the guy that's working real hard, he's got one that just won't keep up, and he's running a mile over his head all the time. Look at him gobble up Jeff Gordon. Wow, is he getting off into the corner? That car is really strong. And right on that white line, you see him come out here, the car is really smooth. That's where you loop. If you're loose or anything, you'll see the car twitch around there. Buddy, they just got us call, we just got a call from the pits. They said this set of tires is a little bit tighter than the other set that's hurting him in the middle of the corner. So he must have <laughs> lost some speed there. Let's go back to the battle for eighth where Bobby Labonte in the Maxwell House Ford of Bill Davis trying to hold off Kenny Schrader. Kodiak Chevrolet. Schrader slides on through. Man runs 95 races a year. Man, I don't know how he does it. He's learned to sleep on an airplane, I can tell you yep. that. Yeah, does it because he loves it. You know, you hear criticism about that, but I'm not so sure that's not a good idea. The more you race, the better you get at it. And Schrader really runs a lot of races, and I don't think it hurts him to get on the different stuff. I think the determined factors they get so much invested in these drivers and a Winston Cup team, they just don't want to risk them after some more else. Look at Mark Martin pull up on coming out of the corner there. He's talking about a car that's sailing. We speculate a little at Richmond. Just what are they doing with that team that has made them so tough these last five or six weeks? Somebody who purports to know says, well, they're better on rougher tracks. The rougher, bumpier tracks, it, it, it is something in that that makes them a tick better. Well, they've been together for a while now, and I think Steve Mill knows a lot about what what he likes in the car, and, and uh, you get to see the car. It works so well. 79 laps complete here at Dover Downs. Now it's Ernie Irvin being chased by Rusty Wallace. We'll be right back. Don't even mention that Steve hadn't been here all week. Yeah, yeah. Next time we see Mark, you know, he could have set it up. He could have set it up there, and but there's got to be a lot more knowledge there than just. Wouldn't you think? I would think. What is buddy? You can. Uh oh, you trying to tell me something? <laughs> and you can help. <laughs> Get me one of. No, I thought you said telling me I'll oh. cut that onion sandwich I had. <laughs> <clears throat> Boy, I'm kind of stabilized here. I might get up there and race for one. Yeah, it's not even lap 300 yet. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mark Martin is reeling in. Second, uh, third, and fourth. Jeff's car is not handling on the set of tires like mm -hmm. it was. Nope. No, they just said he had trouble. With oh, time. you were talking about Jeff. Yeah, what did I say? Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about Mark. I think he's saying he's got something wrong with that car. They're in trouble. TNN Motorsports live coverage of the Split Fire Spark Plus 500 brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. Ernie Irvin out in front of Rusty Wallace by a car link. Dale Earnhardt, Jeff Gordon, and Mark Martin closing on the third and fourth place battle. There are the two leaders, and Irvin's beginning to stretch it out a bit. He pulls up on the Cedar Ridge RV Ford of Jimmy Mean. There is Mark Martin. Has come from ninth to fifth in the last 53 laps. You mentioned Steve Emile just coming in here 
this morning. They took the spare Dover car home. More on that in a moment. Lead change? Maybe. Yeah, certainly. Wow. Kind of dramatic left. Just a couple left before that, you know, the 28 car had about five more length lead. Must have should have jumped on that in a hurry. And no traffic, nothing near them. Think about that pass, it was over almost before it started. Urban didn't fight it. Maybe a look in the mirror and said, well, if he wants to go, let him. Let's not let that next pack close up on us. Yeah, just 418 to go. <laughs> I'll keep reminding Don't you. remind me. Don't remind me. You're going to uh, beat him over the head if he keeps talking about that. Uh, good day of racing here at Dover. And one of the reasons why this battle up front. I'll tell you what, the complexion of racing has changed so much. Used to, we would come here, but just maybe run mediocre for 400 laps and worry about running that last 100 miles. But nowadays, if you're going to race, you're going to race from the time they drop this flag. There's so many good cars. Somebody's going to check out. Third place could have changed hands right here. And did. Jeff Gordon and Mark Martin got underneath Dale Earnhardt. They are two seconds behind the leader right now. And the fans come to their feet. For Earnhardt or for anybody but Earnhardt. If he moves up a spot or back a spot, everybody stands up. You can't tell if he's doing good or bad because he get up any way he does. <laughs> now, Steve Mill just got here because they took the backup car from Dover and took it back to the shop and completely reskinned it for Martinsville uh, next week. Turned it into a short track car. Why? Because at Martinsville testing, though, they, they messed up the car. They tore one up and had to redo one. Lost the brakes, went into the wall hard. Mark was not, not injured, but the car was toasted. Now, it used to be, Neil, also, you'd have three or four different intermediate track cars for a place like Dover, and you could just hog out the wheel wells a bit and take that car to Martinsville, but now they change it around completely. Yeah, they, you know, you got to have nose weight, rear weight, side weight, body high, body low, quarters high. There's so many things that you have to do to make the car cater for each racetrack. Boy, I tell you, you just got to dial them in for each place you go. There's Earnhardt right behind him, Jeff Bodine. That number seven car in black this week. Carries the colors of the family channel. Just put a big figure into Bodine's bobsled project for the Winter Olympics. There it comes Terry. Yeah. There. There's Jeff. Oh, oh and Mark Martin is wow. Hard in the wall and a flame. Look, I'll tell you what, that was the right run again. You know, we keep. I, I mean, I, I first want to say, let's don't say it's a problem, but I'm not so sure we're not downplaying a problem because we're seeing too many cars with that right front problem go like that. So hopefully, what. Looks like he cut down the tire and went straight up into the wall, bent the rear end. Apparently a leaking fuel line there is causing that flame, and Mark's waiting for that thing comes to a halt to hop out. He thought he dropped that screen out of there in case the fire would come up in the car. Yeah, that's I'll be moving on myself. That's a fuel fire right there. Yeah. And he doesn't know what he's got behind him, or he would be out. The problem is if he drives it down pit road, there's a lot of gas tanks on pit road, a lot of fuel well, waiting to be put in. I'm sure the spotter's telling him, Neil, he might be trying to get that thing to where there's some, some extinguishers. Now the cockpit's pretty well filling up with smoke. Yeah, that's and the way to go, Mark. Get out of there. Yeah. Yep. I'd be 100 yards away now looking back. I bet he's got no brakes either. Or he might have stopped that thing before. He just pulled the pin on the extinguisher inside. You see him reach back in and pull the pin. Mm. Our camera might get toasty here. Hey, you what? Know, that's a good thing you don't need a fire to reach in there and pull that hand back out. Right. Yeah, they used to ask me if it catch on fire, did you turn it the fire extinguisher on? I always left and thought about it later. Now the fire's getting inside the yeah, car. Yeah, it's inside the car now. Could be tough to put this thing out. But you, whoa, what are we doing in the car? We might give it a little bit more room they got the fire out. Well, it'll bring out the caution here at lap number 95. That's the fourth one of the day. You know, a lot of people say, why did that car catch on fire? But they probably knocked the fuel pump off the front of the motor there. They had to do that, close to the frame anyway. Here's your top five after 95 laps. We're under caution, and we'll be right back to Dover Down. What's that? Randy, I can hear you. Go ahead. 
for Andy. Can you hear me? Can you yes. Hear me? I just went over there and checked with Rob, and I saw Kyle backing up, and you know that that chassis was pretty good here. I said, "What's the deal? He's backing up." He said, "Man, I'm telling you, 50 laps, guys. These things are giving up. You're going to yeah. see a lot of wrecks, and the next lap, boom, one of the best chassis in the business hit the wall. So I don't know. You know, we might have a problem here today. I tell you, we got it. There's not many of them crew chiefs on there going to say just like a while ago yeah. when they talked to Steve yeah, Mill. He's not right. going to say. That's right. But I'm telling you, they have 50 laps, and there's going to be some explosions. Well. They said for I the think race. that's why Earnhardt backed up. Hey, yeah. All right. I don't suppose we have that from suspension cam. Okay. It's over turn one. No, I meant when he smacked the wall. The crash was uh, the right front. <laughs> That's okay. There's the antenna just kind of lying there. Look at the back Why window. Yeah. Well, they weren't kidding. We're back live at Dover Downs and the uh, tip of the TNN hat to broadcast sports technology Peter Larson and his group from building up a camera that would stand up to that kind of punishment. We do not have the view from suspension cam on the right front uh, because with this camera system there are three cameras in the car but only one can transmit at a time and we were on the 360 degree cam. I'll tell you what Mark Martin's given up on winning. He wants to get it back where they get it where and go. Look here. That's the tire. You know, man. Hmm. That's Knocked a hard that angle down. there. There's the fire. The bad problem with one of those is when you're in the bottom, you see you're going to wreck for a long time before you get there. Push is when you hit the wall and see the wreck. Right, buddy? He's That's so as close to seeing a draft as you'll ever see. See the air coming up and oh, turning yeah. that fire into the back of the car? That's what right. you exactly see what another car come up behind one. That's what you're in. Let's show you another angle. Real time, full speed. Watch and listen. And hang on. Oh. That's when Mark was peeling around in to see if everything was still intact. Mark's sticking with the car. He wants to get it down to the garage area. Well, when you see if there's any chance to get that thing out again for some points. Yeah. Boy, that's good to see him outside that car and, and good help because he hit that wall at Martinsville really hard. And he hit hard today, too. Hey, Mark's physical shape is unbelievable. He works out all the time. He's a small guy, but strong build. And I think that pays off when you have something like this happen. Yeah, his stomach's about as flat as the side of that car. Kind of like uh, mine, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he is a quite a physical fitness advocate. Keeps himself in super, super shape. Yeah, that's a good thing if you're going to take a whack like that. Now, they are third in the Winston Cup point standing, 317 points behind Dale Earnhardt, so it's imperative that they do anything they can to get this car back in the race today. They're going to have to be pretty smart to get that one back in. Everything on is turned to the right. Mark says, I think I'll go set down while they fix this thing, because I guarantee that thing rung his bell a little bit. We've got Glenn Jarrett down there with him. Glenn? Well, first of all, Mark has climbed out of the car. Mark, are you OK? Yeah, I'm OK. What happened, do you know? We lost a right front tire. Uh, air, I heard it pop. I don't know what happened. I heard it pop. And going into one so uh sorry peeled the wall pretty good yeah you did what about the flames you didn't get any of that on you did you nah got a little warm but uh it's okay everything's all right glad to see you out of the car and okay this car is really badly damaged guys up close it's completely flattened on the right side i don't see any way in the world to get that thing back out there today thanks glenn there you see the tumbling of air on the coming up from underneath the car because the spoiler directs most of the airflow up and over that's a mess. The right front tire lasted but 27 laps uh, since it had been changed on that right front. We don't know if Mark ran over something or if the tire just let go or if there was something rubbing on it. But all the leaders are now pitting. See Rusty Waltz's crew. One of the quickest bunches around. Look at the right front of that when it came off. Take a look at it. And Ernie Irvin's team. 
you know what we got to keep in mind is you're not going to get many of these guys on pit road to say hey there's you know the tires doing this or it's doing that and uh, we are getting some behind the scenes talk that the tires are going to be questioned boy look at this race down to the Rusty just barely beat him down there. Do you think they don't honor the speed limit though? They look like they took off and just stopped all of a sudden, you know. That's right. Like they had the brakes on. Now, allow me a silly question. Did you ever, after you changed rides, did you ever see the pit board and come in and not stop at the right pit? Oh, yeah, I did that. And Talladega leading the race stopped three different pits. They had the same color on. I didn't go down the pits before the race. And I started in. I didn't know where they were at. Oh, no. There's the tires that come off the five car, Ricky Rudd. No, so I'm sorry, that's off of uh, right front two, that's set five. So that's off Rusty Wallace right there. They're checking them right now. They're looking at air pressure to see how much buildup they have. What concerns them is if the thing's getting a lot of buildup, you start with a lot of air pressure, air pressure goes up and it just explodes the tire. So that's what they're checking. Some of these sponsors don't miss a trick. You saw a little Miller decal right there on the wheel. Even. You can't read that when he's going by at 140 miles an hour. Morgan Shepard in trouble here, Wood Brothers team. Pushing the Citgo Ford along, trying to get him refired. 100 laps on the board. We asked Dale Earnhardt if he looks at Ernie Irvin any differently now. We did work now. together with a Chevrolet drivers, probably at Talladega, places like that in the draft. And uh, it's not really been a thing where you just, you know, all out and out teammates. Uh, it, it'll pretty much be about the same way now. If, if we could hook up and drag by another car to, to pass them or do better, I'm sure we'll still do that. Okay, I'll, I'll tell them when we come back. Ignition on 21, I'll just okay. mention that when we come back. Thank you. Okay. What's that say, Mike? You can. I think it says you can GED it, but I have no idea what that means. For what? Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, let's. Okay. All right, John. Thank I want to explain that thing between the Valvoline signs. That's a. It's 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 kind of a. It's a public service thing they're doing. Okay. We can get Earnhardt on that program. Yeah, I'm afraid so. No, it's GED. It's high school of the equivalency diploma. Hi. Can we get it? Welcome back to Dover. From our in-car on Mark Martin's uh, machine, we had helped to tell you a little bit about this public service program Valvoline's doing. You can GED it, encouraging people who have dropped out of high school to work on getting their graduate equivalency degree, equivalent to a high school diploma. You get that diploma, and then you can go out and uh, do things like this. We're about to show you one more angle on what happened here. See him going right in the bottom of the racetrack, and then the car just makes that right. He, Mark said he heard the tire blow, and when it does, I'm telling you, on four of them sticking as good as they can, it's hard to make that curve. You lose that right front, you're going. He noticed something, though. He did not lock the brakes up, so he didn't hit on a straight angle. He angled it in there. That's why he's walking around right now. Good point. Nice thing the Valvoline folks are doing, being involved in that. And, folks, there's no substitute for a good education, no matter what field of work you're in. We'll go down to Randy Pemberton. We got 28 crew over here talking to the crew to uh, Raymond Fox and Todd Parrott. Uh, Earnhardt just came over the radio and said uh, 
you know, let's face it, Goodyear is the tire maker here so far in the Winston Cup Circuit. They're the best tire maker in the world, but the fact is they got to build them to go 500 miles here, or at least 50 miles, and if they're having a tough time with this one. The problem is Earnhardt said, I don't care if you raise the pressure up, drop it down. We're looking at about a 50-lap run for these tires. So uh, what happened is we've got Hoosier possibly coming into play next year, and uh, it's, it's causing maybe Goodyear to alter this tire. And I mean, it's, a, it's a very political uh, th statement to make, but uh, we've got to watch the tires the rest of this day. Uh, we're going to have two tire companies next year, and uh, maybe this is the result of it already. Thanks, Randy. 103 laps are complete. We'll go racing next time. Jeff Purvis led two laps in the Morgan McClure Kodak Chevrolet. Then he pitted, and Rusty Wallace is back up front. I guess the end result of that tire deal for $1,200, you want to go more than 26 laps. $1,200 a set or somewhere around that number. So it's just something where they have to just continuously work on it. And Goodyear puts out a good effort. Goodyear does, too. It's just a matter of catering to these cars and these tracks. A lot of speedy dry there in the back straightaway. Down low out of the groove as the field to come around this time and look for the green lap 104 of 500. Wallace the leader, Irvin second, Earnhardt third, Gordon fourth, Kyle Petty now up to fifth, Jeff Bodine sixth, Jimmy Spencer, Ricky Rudd, Kenny Schrader, Harry Gant are the top ten as we go back to green. Shepard's car was an ignition problem, but he got restarted out there, lost a lap. He lined up alongside Rusty Wallace. We saw Rusty make the break, and Irvin got caught behind the 21 car. We restarted lap 104, and the question now is, will we see pit stops at lap 154 if we stay green? I think you'll see some of the guys make that call instead of waiting for something to happen because that something or someone could be you. Boy, oh boy, you know, right now they have to ride. They cannot race really hard, but you see Ernie Irvin coming up under uh, the 21 car there and Earnhardt right behind him. I'm sure they're paying, playing a little bit of a chess game right now. Boy, Irvin was right down with his left side wheels on the flat going into the corner. Now he and Earnhardt past Morgan Shepard. Good ways back. The run at fifth, sixth, and seventh. There they are. Jeff Bodine, Jimmy Spencer, Kyle Petty. Lake Speed is in that pack in the Bud Moore car, but he made a green flag pit stop early, and he is two laps down. Spencer and Petty. Here we see Irvin trying to reel in Rusty Wallace. And it's going to turn into how hard do I want to go? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I think they're going to have to hit their car. If these drivers are good enough, they can feel if they're skating that road by right front tire. If they run it too hard in the corner and slips the wheel a little bit. Well, they're going to probably run their car as good as it feels when it's stuck totally and not slip the tire. See him waving his hand right there, clear the lap car. Got around uh, the 21 car. Thank you for letting him by without holding up a lot. How hard can you run it for how long? We'll find out here at Dover Downs. 109 laps complete. There's the top five back through Jeff Bodine. The rest of your top ten will be back to Dover after this. Blow the tires. One's yeah. running hard. The one's running hard. Yeah. You know, Mark was making that move coming up there. You know, right now, that 17 car, Darrell Walter, looks better yeah. all the time. Okay, John, thanks. I can't believe they're racing the car today. <laughs> you know? I, I guess. Oh. You remember that time in Charlotte when we pass each other and somebody sail off in the wall? You could about tell who it was going to be. I told mm -hmm. everybody, my crew, you know, I kept telling my crew, well, Neil just went by and bang in the wall you went. And Harry Gant come by, I said, Harry just passed it won't be long before he goes bang. We had that deal up here one time. And then I went ahead on myself because I thought I was real cagey. I'm not going home, so. Where'd you finish? In the wall. The hospital. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we were telling it. It's, it's a good story. We'll talk about it.
I didn't hear Curly win. We're back live at Dover Down. Rusty Wallace leading Ernie Irvin, Dale Earnhardt, Jeff Gordon, and Jeff Bodine. Work from the garage as they are going to try to repair Mark Martin's car and get him back into the race. He's third in the point standings behind Earnhardt and Wallace. I don't think Dale Jarrett can overtake him today, but he needs to stay within sight of the two leaders. Here's your Napa Field standing update after 112 laps. That's one lap ago. That deal, Mike, with him repairing that car. There's no guarantee these guys in front of him are going to finish this race. If he can get that thing repaired, even if he loses 100 laps or 150, and some of these leaders fall out, he goes back out and just rides around. That's right. He'll outdo him. So, I mean, there's no guarantee at this place you're going to finish. Best way to repair that car would be to turn the NASCAR inspector around and say, look at that, and roll another one off the truck. Yeah, it would, but you know what? They have the whole car down there on the board. They have replacement parts for every component under the chassis there and the new housing and everything. So everything under there will be new when they put it back together. Let's go back to eighth spot, buddy, and pick up this battle. Dale Jarrett, Sterling Marlin in the Ray Bestis car, the number eight Ford of the Stavola brothers. And Harry Gant in with them. Dale Jarrett, he's running a good, consistent run here. I imagine he'll be right up front when it's all over with. I'll tell you somebody that, that could be interesting. We see Harry Gant right there, right behind the eight car. Gant is really conservative on tires. That's why he, in the long runs, when it pays off for him, if they've got a little bit of a problem here, Gant could be a guy that really, really figures in this thing before the day's over. It's breakfast, Neil. It's a battle for 10. 10, Gant, 11, 12. Gant, Gant might have to get up in his own place up top, be a little bit closer to that wall. Well. It would hurt a lot less if you hit it from up there. Yeah, they were right about that. There's just too much oil dry up there right now. Yeah. All the wrecks. Speaking of oil dry, look at the back straightaway. It's covered up. Oh, oh, Rick Wilson. And I don't think that was a tire. It looked like he and I think that was Ted Musgrave got a, a little close together there. Yeah. Wow. Looks like they hit. A lot of oil on the track when he came across. Safety crews there very quickly. Fifth caution of the day. Elmo is going to lead the most laps today. You're right. I think so. And just as we were talking about, if Mark Martin can get his car running, he'll definitely finish ahead of this car. So that's why that's these right. guys try to get them back in shape if this car can't keep going. All right. Rick Wilson is 26th in the point standings. Driving for Richard Petty. Let's see what happened here. This is going down in turn three. Boy, is he loose right there? Yep. Yeah. They didn't make contact. He lost, right. just lost control right there. Yeah, he lost to get down in that corner. He knows he's gone now, but there's not enough brakes in the world to stop him before he hits this piece of concrete. Once you start up this bank and you're going for a ride. Now, when you hit the left rear that hard, what's the chance you've zed the frame and bent the right front? Well, real good there's your favor that you're going to bend it. I tell you, <laughs> that car is going it. somewhere and have the chassis fix next week. When you hit it on an angle, like, like you're talking about, Mike, you see backing in on an angle, it causes what they say diamond. It puts the two frame rails out of alignment, and the only way to repair it is to cut the nose and the rear clip off the cars. Usually, the only thing they leave is the driver's compartment and weld the front and rear clips on them. So we're under the fifth caution of the day. 119 laps have been complete. Here's a look at your top 10 as we go to break. We'll be back after this. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you what. Earnhardt just come in. Why? I'll tell you what they're doing. That's smart. They don't have any scuffs, and they put eight laps on that set right there. I take now them off, put them in the bank. Now, now they're scuffs. Talk about that. You're right. And yeah. He, he and Patty both. Go ahead. So I'm up and running. Glenn, you're back. Okay, good, because I can hear myself. By popular demand. They opened me up. Can you hear us? Mike. Yeah, Glenn. Uh, I talked to one of the major corners. I can't say who it was. He said that, he had, that there is a big time problem with these tires, and he instructed his driver to take it easy, to slow down. I mean, this is a major player. I can't say who it is. I promise you. I, I got a hunch. <laughs> I think I know who you're I mean, talking why don't about. We, why don't we tell it that way? Yeah. Well, they say it's major. Well, we can tell that I for sure. I think I know who's been sitting way back there doing little or nothing for a while. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Might be right. Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter who. No, it's a good story. <clears throat> 
Hey, Glenn. Does yeah, it have two no, ones on the door? Uh, you know, no, no, no. <laughs> hey, Glenn. No, yeah. We were just questioning, you know, Earnhardt and some of them turned in. I, I know before the race they were complaining nobody had scuffs. Yeah. And see, you know, they made a short run there. They might want to see if those guys are using that or something like that to come in and pull those off and have them for later. You know, that they, they didn't have a chance to scuff tires, and I think some of them are pulling them off to use them as scuffs later. Okay. The Nashville Network's exclusive coverage of the Split Fire Spark Plug 500 he is brought to you by Goodyear, number one in tires. Okay. We're back live at Dover Downs. 120 l one laps are on the board. Rusty Wallace, Ernie Irvin, Jeff Gordon, Jeff Bodine, and Jimmy Spencer moves up into the fifth position. Let's go to Randy Pemberton. Randy? Well, Rob Pemberton here. Uh... Earnhardt came in. He changed some tires. Uh, you brought Kyle back in. Uh, precautionary measure? Maybe debris on the track? What is it? Yeah, there's, uh, you know, as many cars that's been spinning out or hitting or whatever, I mean, there's debris on there. And that's an awful long race. You can get a lap or two down and come back and win this thing. And, uh, you know, we're just being cautious right now. Lots happen. We just want to, you can't win or run in the front at the end if you're not out there. The question was, can you put those tires back on the car later? Are they now scuffs? Can you use them again? No, nah, they saw their best life when they went out across the wall. Go ahead, Jarrett. Well, Randy, I'm in Dale Earnhardt's pits, and I talked to Andy Petrie, and I asked him if they took those tires off to use them as scuffs, because a lot of times, it's, you know, we talked on break there, Neil said they might uh, try to run scuffs. They said that won't work either. The tires seem to only run 50 laps. That's all they're good for right now. So uh, they're just telling their drivers to back off, take it easy, try to make them last as long as they can. Thanks, Glenn. With all these driver changes, there have been a number of questions on our 800 number about if the points go with the driver when he changes cars or does the car have points. And actually, both the driver and the car owner have separate point systems and separate point funds. There's the Richard Petty owned STP Pontiac, Rick Wilson's car being dragged back. So Ernie Irvin keeps his points that he's earned with Morgan McClure this season. But Robert Yates Racing keeps all the points that they earned, the car owner points they earned with Davey Allison and Lake Speed and for the rest of the year. You know, we touched on top of the show also, there's manufacturer's points. So there's three battles going on at the same time. What's the record for cautions here at Dover, Greg? Oh, I Greg Fielden, our, uh, our statistician, is going to look that one up. I'll let you know about 400 up. laps. I'll let you know. I think once Richard Petty came from about, it was either 6 or 12 laps down or something here to win. He I did. think you were in that race. I was in it. I was some of the caution. You're talking <laughs> yeah. about. You folks were talking during one of the breaks about a, a, an incident at Charlotte that happened, a race at Charlotte where we had these, these kind of difficulties. Well, that's back when we had two uh, tire companies in there, and Neil went by me, and I called my crew, and I said, I think he's running a little too hard, and I passed him. He's in the wall. In a few minutes, Harry Gant went by me, and I said, hey, he's running too fast. He's going to smack the wall, and sure enough, he got in the wall, and I said, I got a good pace. Boom. Into the wall I went, <laughs> so I, I didn't guess right either. Richard Petty made up six laps here in 1975 to win at Dover, so you can get down and come back. Could happen today. We're under caution at Dover Downs. 125 laps coming up. We'll be right back. It. Anybody falls out. Oh, be, yeah. You know, one to go. I want your tires. Oh, yeah. That's funny. They can't put them back, that they wouldn't put them back on a scuff. Well, I guess as quick as they're wearing. Well, it must chew them up pretty bad right off the yep. bat. I think it just generates so much heat that, it, mm. you know, well, either way. They told me what was happening. You know, I heard Glenn say had a cut. Yeah. They said split the side. Separate. separate. And it looks like a cut. Separate. Yep. And then you think that's a build-up of pressure or what? Oh, just in the construction, I would say. Hmm. Construction was constructed. Well, sidewalls are hard on the radio. I told Buddy up here that deal at Charlotte. 
Okay. It's about like knowing there's a minefield out there and see somebody step on one and you got to go on across it. You yeah. know there's more. Tell that. Tell that. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's true. May pops. They just wave the green flag to restart this race as they come down the front straightaway at Dover Downs. Rusty Wallace leads Ernie Irvin off into the corner. Morgan Shepard, a lap car. That white car separates them. Jeff Gordon in third. Jeff Bodine, Jimmy Spencer. Then Ricky Rudd in sixth. Bodine and Spencer side by side. Trying to get those like Jimmy Horton in front of there. Yeah, that's Air Horton. Oh, buddy. <laughs> uh, let me tell you what. No, I think Michael Jordan's got a patent on that. Yeah, but let me tell you what. Jimmy Horton is glad to be able to joke about it. You're not kidding. The ride he took. <laughs> I'm somebody to be talking. Yeah. Hamilton, New Jersey driver. He is the number 32. Active trucking Chevrolet. Gone a lap down. Had the flyer at Talladega, but back here at his home track, it's running well. That could have been active suspension, you know. Could have been. And Ricky Rudd moving up. Ricky's got three victories here at Dover. Here's a look at Jimmy Spencer. Let's track his progress through this race. In the last 56 laps, he's gained five spots. You know, when you race under situations, like Buddy was talking about Charlotte, I remember being that, that day at Charlotte, and it's kind of like seeing a guy walk across a minefield and step on one and say hey there's more mines but I got to go across there too. <laughs> but you got to get a, there. It's a bad feeling and these guys are going to have to really pace themselves. One of those mines hit this car. Mark Martin. Steve Mill down there with a the welding machine. Uh, these cars are put in big fancy nice jigs but right now they're down to uh, it's probably a measured tape and a square and some welding rods trying to put it back together. And it's not just a matter of, of getting some kind of suspension and putting a wheel on it. They have to run a minimum speed or NASCAR won't let them stay out there. What used to kill me about that, you'd be in Daytona Tally and you wreck, they say, go out there and ride slow. Well, slow is 150. <laughs> and you're, you know, you just take an average car and go out there with a front end jumping and bouncing and hopping and try to ride around 150 miles an hour. It's not easy. Record for most caution flags here, 14. We've had five already in the first 100 miles. Record for caution laps, 88, set in 1986. You see Dale Earnhardt with, working up through the traffic there. He's being really careful. You know, normally he would go off in that corner and look like he's going to wreck in every corner. He's real smooth on his tires right now. Pulling up on Dick Trickle. If you joined us late, Brett Bodine crashed Friday, broke his wrist. Say hi to Brett, who's up in Allentown, Pennsylvania, awaiting Dr. Terry Trammell's to the surgeons to set that wrist, put it in a cast, so he could drive next week at Martinsville. Boy, thank goodness it's just the wrist that's giving him a problem. Because yes. the lick he took, it going to a lot worse. What did race car driver do before travel? Hurt? Drive hurt, I guess. I guess. So, I mean, they do some wonderful work. Yep, fellas like uh, Dr. Terry Trammell, like Dr. Steve Olney, Dr. Jerry Petty down in Charlotte. Right. Yeah. Back at 17th position. Kyle Petty moving around Jimmy Horton. You could get the feel talking to their crew that they want to use their head, pace themselves, try to work there and stay all day long, then run at the end of the race. I'm sure they're clocking every lap just like with Kyle were watching the rest of the drivers. They're giving them a call on what they're running. So 20, they're, 24 cars on the lead lap, Neil, and I think that looks like the mission right now. Just stay on the lead lap. How do you tell a race driver that though? Just, well, just ride. Just that ride. was, you know, I know that was one of my problems. It's like the times I've known there's a problem on the racetrack. What is easy? You know, how, how much do you back up? What you have to do is there's cars that have run, you know, 40 laps without any problems, and you get the times that you run that 40 laps, and you try to run within that area. You know, they'll call them out 2480, 2490. All of a sudden, you're on 2390, and they say, that's a little quick. You better back her down. Yeah, but one thing that always concerned me about that, too, is that you enter into it, but you know yourself, too, is Mark Martin said his car was just a little bit tight, but not bad. The guy that's got a tight car is going to eat that right front up a little quicker than the guy that's got a loose car that we're in trying to get out from under. And I think we're going to see if there is something to be more right front. So a guy might have a perfect chassis. Rusty Wallace's car might be good to sit here all day long at a good pace, 
because he's got the chassis perfect. If you're off some, you're going to abuse the tires even more. Front three are tightening up. Jeff Gordon moving back up on the leaders. Jeff Gordon working his way right back in there. You're riding with him. See, there is easing along. That's yeah. amazing, buddy. <laughs> Look at that. Look how good that car is handling now. Look how still his hand is until right here, coming out of the corner. He ain't get busy up there. Yeah, that thing that banking goes up and in. It goes almost reverse angle. That flatness jumps off so quick that, boy, it really makes you go to work right on top of that corner. Look at here, talking about going to work. 28 cars thinking about Irving, thinking about taking a lead a little bit. Good stop for Greg Sachs in the country time for back out on the racetrack. And watch him get busy right here. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know what it reminds me of? Kale. Kale, Kale Yarbrough would go off in the corner and he would just. His hand, the wheel would never be still. He'd always be working it somewhere. I just think to say, ain't nobody ever whipped a wheel like he did. <laughs> <laughs> then he whipped them in the right direction. I probably he did. Sure did. He, was tough. he sure did. Well, you'd be riding along with the caution. You'd see him grab him gloves, pull the slack out of him. He'd fix to go to work. Yeah, when he pulled them up where he could put them under his armpits, he was in trouble. <laughs> okay. Let's get out of the pits here, Glenn. Well, we're outside the hospital. Richard Petty has just come up and talked to his driver, Rick Wilson, to see if he's okay. That's what we're wanting to find out. Rick, that was an awfully hard hit. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. You know, I messed my side up a little bit, a little sore. But, you know, we were running pretty decent. The car just jumped out from under me. I don't know if we had a flat tire or what. You know, we've been struggling, but, you know, I'm okay. I just want to tell my family I'm okay. Be home tomorrow. And everything will be okay. Thanks, Rick. Bill from Illinois wanted to know how the drivers are protected from the acid from the battery mounted so right behind them in the car for weight distribution. That thing is concealed. The, the access to it is through the left rear wheel opening. You can't even get through it to it from the inside of the race car. It's sealed off totally. The only access is through that wheel opening. All right, NASCAR's first priority is protecting the drivers. You can build more race cars. As Richard Childress told us on pit lane at Talladega after you had your wreck. He says, as long as Neil's okay, we can build another car. You also have a rubber casing that sits down in, so there's a lot of protection for the battery there. First, second, third, Wallace, Irvin, Gordon, 142 laps have been completed. Looks like Gordon gets pretty aggressive here. Yeah. Ed Everham's telling him, you're in a good spot. Sit there. Don't get too aggressive. Okay. Watching Ted Musgrave, who we asked if it looks like the manufacturers have stepped up their attempts to secure drivers to run for one make of car. Ted? Boy, I'll say, isn't it? You know, here we got uh, Ernie Irvin on our side now, and I hear rumors that maybe the two car will come back with a Ford next year. So uh, that's rumor so far. Let's just see what happens. But manufacturers are trying to do the best they can, and whatever it's going to take is what they're going to do. Mark hit the wall when you said, look at how hard he takes that thing into the corner. See how hard Jeff's getting in yep. there? Yeah, he's good. Yep, yep. How many laps did you run? How many? 147. Oh, from the last year? 27, 25, 27 laps. You're not going to mention maybe a mandatory. Nothing. We're not going to mention anything until okay. if they the make that decision, we'll mention it. That's why I asked. <laughs> Old leader of all. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> <clears throat> you 
Uh-oh, Jeff just went by. You're watching from Jeff Gordon's car and you don't see Ernie Irvin because he just went by, gave him a wave, clean pass, and now Jeff's back up in second place behind Rusty Wallace. Yeah, that's just a gesture. People talk all day long, what do the drivers do? How do they use the hand signals? I think Irvin pretty well let, saw he got the heat from Gordon. He let him on by and Jeff kind of thanked him. But boy, now Jeff has run his car pretty hard here, buddy. Yeah, he is running hard. Let's show you what happened as we were coming back from break here. Looks like Ernie pushed just a little bit right there. He's coming back in the low part. They're coming off the corner. Might have loosened him up just a little bit there. He's driving right up beside him, and they're not going to contest him going in the corner once you get on that inside. You know, too, it looked like it looked like Jeff Gordon went into that corner up high, and then as the road racers would say, late apex the corner, shot down low to come out on the bottom. Oh, is that what you guys say? It's what I learned at Buck Baker Driving School, right? <laughs> <laughs> we don't teach late apex, I can tell you that. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Gordon's saying, hey, the heck with this tire questionable stuff. Well, I'm see if I can get to take the lead. Kenny Wallace just ahead, the dirt devil. Pontiac of Felix Sabati. The question right here is if Gordon is going to be this aggressive, is Rusty going to you know, fight him really hard or kind of give him his range and let him go right here? Boy, did you hear how nice and easy he got back on the throttle when he got the corner there? Smooth. That's something that's hard to teach. A lot of people just want to just jump right back in it. That really abuses the tire when you slam it back to the floor. Here he goes. You know, we saw Gordon's car in the middle of the corner be strong. There he goes, closing it up again. And earlier we saw Rusty be able to jump up off that corner, snatch away from him, but Gordon stayed with him this time. He must be showing beautiful wear on that tire because he's running awfully hard getting in the corner. He's either showing beautiful wear or throwing caution to the wind. Won. Wally Dollar back in the Keystone Four to Jack Roush. Moves aside as the leaders come past. 154 laps complete. Ernie Irvin back in third. Jimmy Spencer fourth. Jeff Bodine fifth. take you all the way back to the field here. You see how fast go. Jeff Gordon run back up on Rusty in that one corner. He's right back up on the back of the bumper. He's with 10 car lengths back. He's really driving hard in the corner. Bill Elliott, last car on the lead lap, just ahead of the leaders. He is in 23rd position. Here's your fifth place battle. Now Dale Jarrett started deep in the field in 26th spot. There. That group. Let's uh, let's check with Randy Pember. Well, Jimmy just leaned down. I want to make sure he can hear me. We've just had a great run, Jimmy. Uh, is he being careful out there? Well, yeah, it's, it's still real early, you know. Uh, this place come up and bite you in a hurry, so you got to take it easy a little bit. But uh, we don't want to let leaders get away either. A little concerned, you know, with tire problems some people have been having. We haven't had any ourselves, but uh, you know, there's a few things that are in the back of our minds. But car's working pretty good. We have to make a few more adjustments before the end of the race, but I think we'll be okay. Hey, my joy. Thanks, Jimmy Make, our crew chief for Dale Jarrett, currently the sixth place car. Almost had a lead change there. Yeah, he got all the way up beside him, but Rusty pulled, you know, he had the preferred line. He pulled right back down on him. He couldn't make the pass. We'll look on the bottom again, and then Wallace comes right back down to the white line. Rusty's doing that late eight things you were talking about. He's cut, Rusty gets the <laughs> car around, really cuts the car down right up off the corner. Ooh. Looks like Gordon makes a run in the center corner at him. Yeah. This is about as close a run as he had it. Get down the corner. Let's see if he can do anything with it. Traffic ahead. He's going to pass. It's going to have to be on that flat part. This is probably working good right on the inside also. We talked about Cale Yarbrough. That's his car just ahead of the race leader. Derek Cope aboard the Bojangles Ford. Yeah, That's now the tail end of the lead lap. Yeah, and just a few seconds ago, they overlapped uh, Bill Aggie. So he's the lap down now. 22nd place car of Derek up, Hope. Here goes Gordon. Side. He's got the opening. He's got the lead. Did you see Rusty just back off and let him go? They use that lap traffic. Rusty was going to go around the lap traffic. Gordon followed it. And once Rusty saw him there, he opened the door and let him go through. 
11th race that the rookie has led this year. I said top the show that this might be his day. He said told me in the garage it was the best car he's had all year long. Here's the race for fifth, Neil. Jeff Bodine and Dale Jarrett. Jarrett in sixth place. And after Jeff Bodine just took over driving his own race car, the car that he bought from Alan Quickly. Uh, Alan Quickly team could be a great run for him here if he could finish up front. Jeff did a lot in the modifies driving his own car and essentially crew chief in the car he drove for Billy Taylor and for Dick Armstrong. You know, I talked Barrington. I talked to Dale Jarrett one time. I said, why do you qualify so bad and race so well? And he said, we come here with the idea of setting the car up to race. Car owner Joe Gibbs, former Super Bowl winning coach, now Daytona 500 winning car owner. A heck of a nice guy, I'll tell you. Great he is that. This Caution is out. out at lap 163. And NASCAR vice president of competition Les Richter has called for the caution with the tire situation. They've been consultation with the teams and with their officials down on pit road. And the coach former all pro with the Rams himself ex footballer he's made the decision that at intervals NASCAR will mandate the caution so that the teams do not have to be concerned about running through a set of tires and into the wall. Let's go to Glenn. Well, guys, I'm standing by with the Goodyear representative, Wayne Torrance. And, Wayne, a lot of questions about these tires. We've heard what the teams have said. Tell us, is there a problem with these tires? Well, we are having some uh, belt age separation, which we feel is due to lower air pressure that we recommend. We are recommending 50 pounds in the right front, and the fares that we've seen they admittedly have told us that they're running on five pounds or so below that. Okay, but you don't think then that they're, if they follow recommended pressures in that the tires will be safe. That, that's how you feel. We feel that way, yes. Okay, that's straight from Goodyear. Thanks, Glenn. I tell you what I'm glad to see straight from NASCAR is this call. Yep. We can't jeopardize these drivers, even if it's questionable, is there a problem? You know, again, a lot said about the competition, a lot said about the quality of the entertainment and the show. But give these folks credit to run this sport. Their first concern is the safety of the driver. Amen. Keystone Light pit clock is in for Jeff Gordon, Ray Everham, and Rick Hendrick team. Going to put four tires on and around in the right rear. Hey, that might have been going his way. If he needed bike, he, he had a loose condition. So that's one reason what hurt his tires. So Jim running hard. Ah, what a good stop, too. Out first. 17.7 seconds and first out. Don from Illinois called in. He says if the lead car falls out of the race on the last lap and the second car is two laps down, how many laps are left in the race? I can answer that real well for you. I had a five lap lead here one time. I fell out of the race, stood in the garage to watch him catch up. That's so right. You got to run the whole distance. That's right. Somebody has to run the whole 500 miles. We'll be right back. Pushing. You see the wreck. Yeah. <laughs> I tell all my students that. <laughs> oh, yes, I will. Do you realize? Oh, I'd be happy to. Do you realize where we're at? 166. I didn't until you had to remind me. We are one third distance. Thanks a lot. The kidney. Who's this hurt here? Uh oh. Who's that? Why are they carrying her? We're back live at Dover Downs. 166 laps complete. We are one third distance in the 500 miles here. High above the racetrack are Ray Vestas. 
aerial platform, the best in brakes, bringing you these views of Dover Down International Speedway. Here's the top ten as they came off pit road. Jeff Gordon picked up the lead. And as you look through the standings, Neil, we saw them put a round of wedge in the right rear of that car. Matt from Wisconsin called in and asked about that. You want to know what really happened inside the car when you put that round of wedge. There's a big ratchet sticking through that back windshield, and there's a plate that sits on top of the coil spring on the rear of the car. And if you put pressure down on it, it tries to shove that wheel further in the ground, which is putting bite in. If you take pressure off of that big plate on top of that spring, it takes weight off and loosens it up. So that's just simply a device to add more weight to each individual wheel, whichever you prefer to do it to. And you'll see a lot of teams make those changes. They can change either rear wheel, but they can't change the pressure on the front wheels during the race. Change the, change the free height, change the spring height there. Let's get a word to Buddy. Have a word with Jeff Gordon here. And now that he's picked up the lead, we can talk to him during the caution. Jeff, that's the Buddy Baker again with TNN. Can you hear me? Come forward, Buddy. I got you. Boy, I tell you, looking good. Everything going well on the tires for you? Yeah, you know, everything's really going well. The car is just, uh, I mean, I can't ask for a better car today. It just takes a little while for it to get going. So, you know, when uh, we've got new tires and we take off, it just takes a little while, about 20 or 30 laps before we really get good. Okay, you got one to go. We're going to let you go back to work. Thank you. Thank you. One to go, and we'll go racing here. One viewer called and asked us to update Stanley Smith, the Alabama driver who crashed hard at Talladega, went to the hospital, was temporarily paralyzed, but now he is recuperating. He's in the same facility in Birmingham that, that did such a great job for Bobby Allison. There is no more paralysis, but he's going to be undergoing therapy for quite some time. And uh, according to a story in one of the racing papers this week, hopes to return to the sport as a car owner and uh, will continue to be involved. Boy, that's good news. I tell you what, he's a fine guy. Tell you Stanley, his whole family was involved with his racing team, and it's great to see him be able to get over this injury for a while. There, it really looked bad. You know, Mike, I noticed that Jeff's got a little ding on the left front corner of that car, and it's right where the oil cooler hole is. So, but it don't look like it's any obstruction to the air that will keep it from going through there. Looks like he shoved a tire out of the way or something on that air dam. It's hard to tell where it's been. We'll get a restart this time. Morgan Shepard is one lap down in 22nd position right alongside Jeff Gordon pace car Elmo Langley former race driver himself now drives the pace car for NASCAR stretches out the field and brings his Trans Am to pit road Chevy Pontiac Ford the front three here they come just told us that when his tires were brand new he couldn't go like he wanted to. We'll see if he can hold Rusty Wallace off here. On most of the restarts, Rusty got a good jump and it would take Jeff 10 or 12 laps to gather him back up. And here we see Rusty coming right up on him. You know, I really like the race that the 28 car is running right now. I tell you, it's just what it's going to take us. He's just sitting there biding his time in third place. And Ernie Irvin is very aggressive driver. I'm sure he could run faster if he wanted to. Okay, who else, buddy, whose fortunes I like at this point is Ricky Rudd. He is not a driver after much abuse the car. He's running fifth. Change of lead. Put Wallace right back in front. Maybe Gordon told us just the way things go. If it, if it plays out like he said, eight or ten or maybe 12 laps from now, maybe Gordon can work on Rusty again. But he said it took him a while for his car to come around. Ernie Irvin in third has dispensed with lap traffic. Now two. Ricky Rudd has got by the lap cars. He's up to fourth. Dale Jarrett is now fifth. Two leaders. And here's Rudd diving under Jimmy Horton. A lap car. And then Dale Jarrett now in fifth position, just ahead of Jeff Bodine. But Rudd up to fourth in that tide Chevrolet and on the move. Here's where Dale Jarrett has progressed up through the field in the last 50 laps. Well, and you said a while ago on the break that you felt Ricky Rudd was the man to beat, and he is very easy on tires. Then Jarrett, Jeff Bodine. Fifth and sixth. Jimmy Spencer in seventh. Sterling Marlins up to eighth. Bobby Labonte is ninth, and Dale Earnhardt running in tenth. The rest of the cars on the lead lap. Dick Trickle in 11th. Kyle Petty is 12th. Terry Labonte, Ted Musgrave, Darrell Walter. 
Jeff Purvis, Hunt Strickland, Rick Mast, Michael Waltrip, and Kenny Schrader are all on the lead lap here. All good cars, too. Now, Ricky Rudd has been storming up through the field in these last 50, 60 laps or so. Back up front. Jeff Gordon all over Rusty Wallace now. Yeah, his car is coming back in again. I think he, you know, a real good race car normally does not run well on restarts because the car that's a little bit looser will take off and leave you when you have fresh tires on. There we there go. He goes. You know, just like he called it. You know, he said it won't go on the starts, but it's good after a run few laps. Boy, look at this crowd. You think he don't have some fans already? Got a pretty good feel for what his car does. You got to have a feel for chassis. He's got a pretty good feel for what his car is capable of doing. He called this pretty well, exactly the way it played out. And he took off. Yeah. He didn't just take the lead. He took off. There's the old Tomahawk. Yeah, every time he takes the lead, the Tomahawk come up, comes out. And they got her in the air now. <laughs> and he's got it in the wind. We joked at the Daytona 500. They put that up there because in case he goofs up, they can drop it on his head when he comes in the pits and wake him up. But you know what's that's phenomenal? Not the case. You know what's phenomenal about this crew? I think the oldest guy there is about 25 or 26 years old. They're a very young team, and they've got the world by the string right now. No wonder they play with Tommy Hawks, a bunch of kids. <laughs> Man-sized job, I tell you that. They ran good all year long. And here's Rudd up to fourth place. Here's where he's come from. And just to the left, this, this car right there, this Ernie Irvin, right in front of the 24 car, he's a few laps down, so Rudd's on the move to the front. The impressive part of that, no back step, always forward. That's right. Takes a big step next year in the formation of his own team, Rudd Performance Motorsport, RPM, if you will. Number 10. I know that already. Car number 10? Car number 10. I didn't know that. And he keeps tied on the side of that car. 180 laps complete here at Dover. Jeff Gordon back out in front over Rusty Wallace, Ernie Irvin, Ricky Rudd, and Dale Jarrett. We'll be right back. He didn't say. What was it then? About 50. Was it 40 or 50? Uh, 40, 35, 30, 35 laps. 30 laps it was that time. Boy, I mean. Okay. <laughs> what is Eric from Florida, don't announce the winner of the IndyCar race today. Okay, Eric, we won't. We understand somebody else is showing that tape delayed. I got to do this. I got to do We got to jab That's the needle just funny. a bit. <laughs> got to what? Got to jab the needle at him just a bit. Just a bit. Here we go. Julia from Texas. Is Neil okay after the wreck compared to what? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll save you that one. Yeah. If I am, it helped me. Yeah. <laughs> this could end up being the 500 slow up and wait. <laughs> Elmo, Elmo, I'll tell you, Elmo. What do you get? What's he? Has a good. 19. Elmo? Yeah. yeah, he's three laps down. He's 19. Is he shaking his fist at him? No. At Horton. Oh, yeah. For not oh. moving over? Pull the beside him and just shaking his That won't get him anything. That race right here. TNN Motorsports exclusive coverage of the Split Fire Spark Plug 500 is brought to you by Napa because there are no unimportant parts. 186 laps complete. 
Jeff Gordon out in front. Jimmy Spencer just got together there with Sterling Marlin. That brought the fans to their feet as they were battling for seventh place. There's Marlin in the Ray Bestas car. Just ahead of Bobby Labonte now. Sterling's caught in an outside lane. You see several cars going by him. And Dick Trickle moves up a, a notch. In the Quaker State Four. Is Terry Labonte trying to get by him? You know who else we haven't mentioned? Old DW. This is the right side of the street. This is Daryl's kind of race, too. This, uh, this kind of hurry up and wait and roll along and see what happens. Oh, I guarantee you. He's a thinking driver. Dick Trickle up into the top ten right there. He's driven for four different teams this year. Butch Mock, Savco Racing and Relief of Kenny Wallace, the Rulo brothers, and now Kenny Bernstein. There's Sterling Marlin, Terry Labonte, and Daryl Walton. That race is for 12. Yo, know, Darrell had one of the quickest cars in practice every time we clocked them. And uh, he's probably just using his head. He's seeing some problems out there. He's going to take his time. He stays in that lead lap. He be something to handle at the end. Harry Gant and Kenny Schrader right with them. <laughs> I don't make these up, folks. Eric from Florida <laughs> calls in and says, don't announce the winner of the IndyCar race. I okay, promise. Eric. We won't. <laughs> you talked us into it. Well, that's because some other network carries that tape delayed later on, and he doesn't want to spoil it. Of course, on TNN, you see your NASCAR racing live. Woo! <laughs> 190 laps. Walter drops to the inside on Harry Gant. Just breathe the car a little. See Frader sitting right behind DW there. Right, DW? I know you've seen that commercial. Yep. Not but 40 times. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's right so far. There goes Darryl. Harry Gant. Down yep. under Labonte. Darrell's in 13th place. Oop, make that 14th. Here comes Schrader underneath him. Okay, 14th place. The car that Darrell, I, I feel like, is concerned with being in front of is the one that's leading the race. He's going to want to try to stay on that lead lap. Man, I like that shot right there. You can see the car is working. Harry Gant just went right under Terry Labonte and drove on. Yeah. <laughs> Craig Sachs on pit road again in the country time for it. Back out. That was from our tall cameraman on the fourth turn up there. We we'll see Kyle Petty right there. Just a few laps ago, Kyle Petty was right up several positions further ahead. He just dropped off the pace, pulled back, got him to settle in here, been riding back in this area here. Thought something happened for a while. Speaking of things happened, the 68 car going down the back straightaway close to him, like. And he's back up to speed. Now he had just come out of the pit after making a long stop there on the green. And yeah. puts right back in So I caught him shifting gears. What the heck? I That's thought okay. he was slowing down. Mark Martin has spent the last 100 laps in the garage area. They're still trying to get the Valvoline Ford back out here. But there are still 300 laps to go. Sterling Marlin in the Ray Bestas car, the Kodiak Chevrolet of Kenny Schrader. Up. I mean, Harry Gant underneath. And then Schrader. That camera angle looked like it might have got a little close there, but it wasn't, it wasn't anything there. He had just passed him a couple of three at the same time when he, once he got under him. by that whole group of cars. Teddy, who had backed off the pace a little bit ago, now caught up to that group. There he is, Mellow Yellow Pontiac. You know, I've raced for a long, long time, and Harry Gant is probably the only driver out of all the people I've ever run against that never complained about getting tired in the race. Never. Have you ever heard him say that, Neil? No, I don't guess he ever gets tired. <laughs> he's, uh, you know, they probably talk about he's 53 years old or whatever. I'm telling you, there's a lot of those young guys out there wish they were in good shape as Harry Gant is right now. Oh, yeah. There's one reason to go to these killer racetracks like this. How many times we see Gant just wear everybody out at this place? He never gets tired. He, he just sets there plugs away, plugs away. If that car's good enough, he's going to be there. That's right. Mike, I used to go in the shower room after 500 miles here. 
And the 23, 24, 25 year old guys will be laying everywhere and Harry Gant will be in there taking a the shower, combing his hair, going, what's wrong with all these boys? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's getting used to doing it. Maybe. 13th place at stake here. Marlon, Waltrip, and Petty. And with them, Terry Labonte. Jimmy Horton underneath Labonte there. It's Walter trying here to get around Sterling. Well, Sterling's car is just a little bit off in the corner. He's getting past pretty easily on the inside. Of you know, we saw Kyle Payne drop back several positions yeah. a while ago. And then he's coming back up through the field. Still on the lead lap, running in 15. He might have that home cam on. Home cam? Home cam. When he got out, when he won Pocono, he had his own camera. Oh, with that's him. right. Started taking the people in the grandstand. I thought you meant home shopping cam. 6.8 seconds away from being lapped, this group here. No wonder they're picking the pace up. Well, there's Kyle pulling over the inside. Jimmy Horton must have bolted on some tires because he's just sliced through this pack of cars. Yeah, he's gone. He's two laps down. Darrell Walton's day lately has gone like this. These last 50 or so laps has picked up five positions. Does that look like the face of a guy that cares? He's <laughs> in good shape. I guarantee you he's looking in the mirror. He says, well, old DW better pick it up a little. Yep. Or he might be doing the car owner thing. Yeah, got to keep the car owner happy. There's Jeff Gordon, and he has a lead now of 2.8 seconds on Rusty Wallace as he puts a lap on Michael Walter Pennzoil Pontiac. Ernie Irvin is third, Ricky Russ fourth, and Dale Jarrett fifth. We'll be right back. Tell you something. I'm concerned about Jeff Gordon. Oh yeah. Yep. I've been sitting here sweating. Well, <laughs> I'm beginning to pick up a little heat from watching him. All right. Good. What's that? All right. Can we ask a crew chief or somebody if they've gotten any word on whether the caution will keep coming out every 30 laps or, or just what's NAS what's going to happen? It's even if NASCAR's told them or they haven't told them. Okay. Because they should know if the caution's going to. Yeah, Kyle, he, Kyle might have, way off. he might have been running hot or something. He'd take off, he slowed yeah. down. Yeah. He's coming in. 206 laps complete. A moment ago, we mentioned Kyle Petty racing for 17th spot. He now brings his Pontiac to pit road. And Dick Trickle looks like he also will be coming to pit smoke from the right side of that car. Looks like he might be down on the right front. Kyle Petty slides to a stop. Right side tires. A lot of teams will be looking off the right front if it comes off of Kyle's car. And there's Dick Trickle. He's been up against the wall. The whole right side of that car is flat. And a report from the radio, he cut down a tire and got into the wall. Right front. Mm. Oop, no break. Slid on through. After rolling back to his pit stall, if they can, because that car is down on the rim on the right front. Yeah, that's going to be hard to move. Here's Randy. Well, they, they just broke around. They think they broke the right side suspension on the 26 car, and then, frankly, I think that's what happened on the 42 car as well. That's what I got over the radio. It's possibly he broke the right front suspension. I can't quite see up there now. It's pushed up. Uh, the 26 car is coming behind the wall, guys. They couldn't push it back to its pit stall. He was still only one pit away from his own, so they could have rolled him back that distance if the car had been unable to stop. But with it down on the rim like that, they couldn't move it. Donnie Richardson is going to pull the hood and see how bad that is at the right front. Is that, what, four or five cars that have smacked the wall with the right front? Bill Parsons, Bob Shack, Todd Bodine, Rick Wilson caught it with the left rear. And now Dick Trickle. Kyle Petty is back out. After a tire change, he is two laps down to leader Jeff Gordon, Bill Elliott. He put a 
second lap behind. And the Budweiser Ford. They said they thought they had a chassis problem with something broke with Kyle Petty's car, but here he is after he changed tires. He's checking out on them. Yeah, that's not the problem with the chassis on that car. I promise you. And Dave Marcus. The STG Chevrolet. There's a lot on CompuServe about Marcus's car and what that sponsor was after last week's race in the CompuServe race forum. Stephen Shelton's business is a manufacturer's rep for computer chips down in Huntsville, Alabama. That's what they do. I'm not sure that car is going to make it back to pit road there. He's running awfully slow there. I'm not so sure there would be a lot of heavy drivers out there to get this other get one more stop, take a look at things where, where things are going too. Might be a good reason to put that caution out. Well, green stays out. 213 laps here. He's just barely rolling along. Well, he's, he's got to the part now where I don't know if he's going to make it there or not. No, I don't think he can possibly roll. It becomes just a little bit more and starts getting downhill. If he's idling along and not coasting, I think he'd be all right. We'll see. That's not even fun riding along at that speed. No. They're going to have to put the caution out. He's on there the it top is. Now. Yellow yeah. flag. Comes out of lap 215 for Dave Marcus, whose car has stopped down on the apron between turns three and four. Here's Randy. Nick, what happened? What a perfect Sunday afternoon. Uh, we the Blue Lights on tire, but the boys are telling me we uh, broke a rotor up on the right front. I uh, just exploded everything. Uh, the, we're a little tight off the start, but each pit stop we're getting better. You know, this is really a good team, really a good car. And I was hoping for Brett that we'd keep the car in the points and all that, but uh, you know, we just broke a rotor or something. Just, you know, I was catching the leaders there and just going to pass Earnhardt there and make probably another 10 laps. But uh, this car really runs. Thanks, Dick. Tough break for Dick Trickle. Behind the wall, though they are trying to make repairs on the Quaker State floor. Caution is out once again. It's the seventh one of the day. We'll be right back. It's not going to be in cars left. Elmo. Elmo. <laughs> You've been telling me that all day. I'm beginning to you believe you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now, you were the one that told me there was a big-ass wreck at Talladega. There was about 20 cars in it. You were leading the race or running first or second. Crash, you come back to the garage, you go over and said, well, Neil, you know, now you're out of the old question. You're out of the race. Who you think's, who you think's going to win it? Who looks tough out there? He said, pace car's got a good shot at it, was yeah, what you said. That's exactly what I said. Yeah. So, well, I know everybody down there is happy to see this. Yep, because I just, Curly called me. I think he said there wouldn't be any more mandatory stops. Caution. Until, okay. until we need one. Just like that right there, they say it looked like he blew a rotor up. If he blew a tire and hit the fence, then he blew a rotor up. That's exactly Who's what that? happened. Huh? You know what happened. Okay. You heard Trickle say he blew a tire. Yeah. And then they said he, he broke said he, a rotor. He said he thought he blew a tire, but then they said he broke a rotor. But did he blow the tire? He blew the tire. Yeah. yeah. Really? Because he went to the garage. Man. Blue. Scramble there. Yep. Mm -hmm. right, I'll tell the sack story real quick. We'll get that out of the way. <coughs> Whoa. <laughs> Coming up on halfway here at Dover Down. The lead cars have all been on the pit road. Cars on the lead lap. The group you see here behind Elmo Langley's pace car are cars that are one or more laps down that cannot pit under the first lap of caution. That is reserved for the leaders. Jeff Gordon is out, and Dale Earnhardt moves up to second, or third, rather, behind Rusty Wallace and Jeff Gordon because Earnhardt had a 17.2 second pit stop. Ricky Rudd is fourth, Jimmy Spencer is fifth and we're told that Greg Sachs whose country time Ford is now in the garage area also broke a brake rotor. It's unusual for something like that to go wrong. Lake Speed in his first drive for Bud Moore in the Motorcraft Ford had an early stop under green and went a lap or two down. And right behind him Michael Waltrip. Lake Speed presently in 26th position two laps down. 
Neil, have you ever broke a rotor? After I hit the fence, I've never broken it while I was running. I've never had one just fly apart. It does happen to a lot of people. Though. I had one at Pocono at the far end of that long straightaway on the front straightaway there. Just going off in the corner, I went by the caution light, slamming the brake on, and it sounded like a gun went off on the right mm -hmm. front. Didn't feel real good when it didn't stop either, did it? Oh, the wall stopped that one. <laughs> they will stop. Yeah. Seventh caution of the day, they have pushed Dave Marcus's car back to pit road where they're working on it with the hood up, trying to get Marcus back into the race. Out of the race, Phil Parsons, Bob Schacht, Todd Bodine, and Rick Wilson are officially out of the race. We'll go to Glenn Jarrett. Well, Mike, one of the reasons that uh, Rusty Wallace beat Jeff Gordon out of the pitch was that Jeff had, his crew had to make a chassis adjustment. They put around the bike in the right rear. This car was getting a little loose. Same thing with Bobby Labonte. His was so loose, he got into the wall earlier on. No real damage, but uh, Gordon's still looking strong. Thanks, Glenn. Thus far, Rusty Wallace has led 146 laps of this race. Jeff Gordon has led 51 laps, and Elmo Langley has led 43 laps Elmo. in the pace car. <laughs> Well, I give him the money for the most, <laughs> lead the most laps if he does. I wonder if we get the five points. He'll get the five points for sure. <laughs> See that little bit of damage to throw that 24 car, like you're talking about, buddy, where like he hit a tire or something going out. That hurt it a bit. Even new tires, you see them shaking them there. They pick up a lot of debris just rolling around there uh, when they're not running race speed. Let's stay with Jeff Gordon and listen to this restart. Just touching the sidewall, just a little bit. The minute that tire gets worn down just a little bit where it's rubbing, you won't see it anymore. Okay. Dale Jarrett on the move. Seventh place after the round of pit stops. Running there behind Bobby Hillen and Derek Cope. Ooh, Ooh and the Cope and Hillen almost get together. Casual contact. At 140 miles an hour, what could be casual about it? <laughs> well, they didn't wreck. <laughs> right. Well, look here. Well, there's one. Ernie Irvin. Ernie Irvin up at the wall. With the right rear. Now, that car just got out of the groove just a little bit, and away it took off. Look at know? fuel coming out of the back of the car. Yeah. Fuel cells ripped wide open. Well, he's got to be careful here. Mm, don't try to recrank it. Boy. And Irvin, 10th in the points, brings out the eighth caution of the day. At lap 222. We're going to ease his pass. Nobody's going to get a lap back from Rusty Wallace. And they come back around to the caution flag. Boy, that's fuel running across the track. I'm hoping one of these other cars doesn't light it off coming by. You know, we're we're having a little laugh about Elmo Langley, but um, he just he just might be in line for first place money. Oh, he's a major player, I'll tell you that. Ernie is okay. Oh, that's good to see. Didn't really hit the wall that hard. It slid up and caught up first with the right rear and then the right front. I say that hard compared to some we've seen today. You're right. Yes. yes. We're under caution. Imagine that. We'll be right back to Dover Downs. Rusty Wallace leading Dale Earnhardt and Jeff Gordon. I don't think there's no reason to analyze that one. That would you no reason just, what you you don't have to even go on a replay on that. You could see him get out wide mm. there, and it looked like a lot of tire. Oh, let's do, please. Could I have please, like a please, please, Daddy. Diet soda or something. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Oh boy. Ooh. What do you say? I'll never be a Walter Cronkite. <laughs> That's a good thing. And that's the way it is. You got it. Jesus, 223, folks. Well, he mounted He mounted 40. I counted. Two kids. Nope, 40 tires. Down. What? Two. What you doing? 23. Oh, yeah. And counting. <laughs> I told him for the race, just keep a count. See basically how many of the guy wins ends up using whoever of the front guys.
bit on Elmo. You got some Elmo stats for us? Won the legend race. Welcome back to Dover Downs. I'm Mike Joy with Neil Bonnet and Buddy Baker, Len Jarrett, and Randy Pemberton on pit road today for TNN. Let's look at your top 10. There are 16 cars on the lead lap. In addition to the ones you just saw. First, let's go down to Randy Pemberton. Robert, Robert, what happened? Did he say? No, he just said he spun, but I don't know why or you know what happened. Did he say how bad the car was? Uh, Spotter said he hit hard. I'm not thrilled, Robert Yates, mm. owner of that Texaco Thunderbird. To answer, uh, here's a look at it. Okay, he's loose way back here getting in. I don't know exactly what happened. That looked like a right rear might have been. It's hard to tell. He got loose so far back, and the car just never came back. Yeah, he did get into it pretty hard. Yep. I'll say. What thing? And there you see it knock something into the fuel cell. You see. Yeah, because it did rupture the fuel cell while it's going along. That doesn't happen very often. Just it is going in on the outside. Looks like he's going to try to pass some of those guys right, outside. Right Boy, here it breaks loose. Boy, it almost looked like some kind of liquid out there as he went in. Could see on the right side of his car, but maybe not. It's hard to tell. You know, they say hold it against the wall. When you hit this place, it's going to hold itself for a little while. It's a bit stuck on that thing and it just grinds the car away. You know that shot going into the corner. Look kind at the right side of your screen this time. Okay. Okay, he's on the outside here. And the car just he goes up a little bit right here. He loses control. I don't see anything on the racetrack now. No, it just made a that initial move just didn't look right. You know, it's going along and all of a sudden it kind of made a little move to the right, but just probably got out from under him. Maybe we'll get somebody to talk to Ernie a little bit and see if we figure out what happened. The car being hauled down off the banking. Urban was 10th in Winston Cup points. Look back from the pace car. Here's Glenn. Well, guys, I'm standing by with what might be one of the smartest businessmen in America. This is Rick Hendrick, the owner of Jeff Gordon's car, the guy who signed that young phenomenal away from Ford Motor Company, and uh, obviously no regrets at all. Oh, no. it's uh, We've been real proud of what these guys have been able to do this year, and the whole team, you know, they've worked together and uh, you know, Jeff's done a heck of a job. He's going to have a real bright future, and we're real excited about having him. Well, you've been race in racing a long time. I've owned a lot of teams, but did you in your wildest dreams imagine this team being so young, Jeff being a rookie, would come together and do so well so fast? Well, no, you know, you, you hope that that'll happen, but realistically, you don't come into this sport and do this well as quick. And these guys have worked hard with the other three teams, and they work together, and, uh, you know, it, it, Ray Everham's just done an unbelievable job, and and Jeff and they worked together before and you know you the guys just got a lot of talent these guys have rallied around them and you know we're just we're looking forward to a good finish here and on a, and a good a lot of years to come. Well he's certainly showing that talent today Mike. Thanks Glenn. Here's your pace car. Each track decides what type of car to use for the pace car. Dover uses the Pontiac Trans Am and it's a it's a, essentially it's a stock car. They used to use a beefed up model but now the cars from Detroit are so good. That's a stock car. The exhaust seems to be opened up just a little bit. And the driver Elmo Langley to answer another of our 800 line questions won the Legends NASCAR Winston Cup Legends race in 1991 at Charlotte and in his driving career had two Winston Cup wins when it was then called Grand National June 66 Spartanburg South Carolina. And the next month, he won up at Manassas, Virginia. And to give it just a little more credit, he passed Kale Yarbrough on the last lap to win that legend race. <laughs> Roger Caution here at Dover for the eighth time, but we'll be right back. Yeah, where? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Met MetroCal, anything. No, I'd interview him. Well, I was going to buy one. Oh. Yeah, you can get hungry here. Uh, watch ice cream at lap 320. Hmm. Hurry up, 320. Sell it. Oh heck! Uh, if sure. Oh, okay. He won't tone, huh? Yeah. Usually it's just the opposite. All right. Thanks, oh, T. Okay. 
Lake Speed is not having a trophy day yet. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. But he's still in there. In the fray. 320 ice cream. Did you hear that a while ago? Does that mean green or caution? Don't matter. What's your guess? This thing right here, I'm going to tell you, this back would float well. your boat. Ooh. Look at this. Mm -hmm. I saw it through. I wrapped it back yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> wrapped it back up. Hell, if I'd had that for lunch, it would have come back and spoke to me several times. Jesus, I ain't even going to guess what that is. <laughs> we used to get that in school. We call it mystery meat. Yeah. You, didn't have, you had it every day. Mystery meat. <laughs> <laughs> Let me do some of this. <clears throat> no, throw okay. away stuff. Yeah, I want to. I, I want to. Mm -hmm. We're getting nice. the green. Yeah. We're racing. Ooh. Ooh. Look at that. Um, Ooh, look at that. Look at this. Exclusive coverage of the Spitfire Spark Plus 500 on the Nashville Network is brought to you by Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? They've just thrown the green flag for the restart. Rusty Wallace out in front of Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt, Ricky Rudd, Jimmy Spencer. The top five. Spencer now in front of Rudd. working on Spencer pretty hard trying to get around him. Good battle for fourth place. You know, the more rubber they put on this track, the better chance they got of the tires lasting longer. So maybe it will help for the uh, this continuous runs we're having. Yeah, I'm right behind them, Jeff. Yellow Dines right in there, too. I want to make sure on that. They got some of these cars that are black on the front. And with so many cars with new paint jobs. Yeah. And so many old paint jobs with new drivers. It's hard to remember who climbed in the window before the race started. Dick May was a journeyman driver about the time Elmo Langley was winning his races. NASCAR super sub. Had a different ride almost every week. And I'd ask him, you know, you drive so many cars, how do you know which one to climb into? He says, that's easy. He says, I wait until they're playing the national anthem, and I walk down the grid, and whatever car doesn't have a driver must be mine. <laughs> And he wasn't kidding. Well, you'd have to know Dick May to understand. Yeah, right. Dick May, once at this racetrack, drove seven different cars in one day. And each one fell out from under him. He came within four laps of finishing the race. Boy, look at you. You talk about getting in the corner. Mm -hmm. Jeff Gordon is flying down in the corner now. You know, this is the same scenario we saw earlier. Rusty able to take the lead on the restart. Gordon car come around. We'll have to see if it happens again. Gordon's characteristics with his car has been to get better and better. And you saw the Greg Sachs is back in the race. He's been off the road and extended stay and in the garage area. But he's back out 50 laps in arrears. rear. You know, I've never been to Salem, but Jeff Gordon was a tremendous talent on, on that racetrack. And I think it simulates pretty much Salem in this racetrack as far as the high banks and all. He won a lot of sprint car races and stuff there. Trouble in the back stretch, spinning. I think that's Derek Cope. It is. Spanaway Washington driver and Kale Yarborough's Bojangles Ford. Gets into the wall. Yeah, it looked like off turn two. He got out of the wall. Cope was running in 22nd position, two laps down. Former Daytona 500 winner. As this group came by down the front straightaway, they were in a big pack, and everybody in the grandstands was standing up looking. There was a lot of shuffling going on. Well, let's see right here. He's pretty well. There's a group of cars coming up off the corner right here. There he is. Ooh. Ooh. Looks like he got Looks loose. Like right? he, Schrader. Schrader might have just. He really can't Look tell. Look at I'd rather say nothing than the guess wrong, but it looked like Schrader might have got in the left rear corner. Can't do There's it. the trouble. Yeah, Gant did a good job of this on that deal. Boy, he hit the inside wall hard on the left front there. Almost the same play that we saw with uh, Darrell Walter at the first of the race. This is later after he's already got turned around. Dover has not been kind to Derek Cope. He won a second Winston Cup race here, but this is the fifth time in the last six Dover races. 
that he's been in the past. Mm. Hard look for Derek Cole. Pit road is open. Bobby Labonte, Rick Mast, and Sterling Marlin, along with Lake Speed on pit road, and the hood up on Rick Mast and Lake Speed's cars. Jeff Purvis on pit road. Yep. Jeff Purvis as he comes off pit lane in the Morgan McClure Chevrolet. We'll get him, let him get up and in the line here as he follows Bobby Labonte off pit road at lap 236. Jeff, this is TNN. How's, how's the day going for you? Yeah, I tell you what, the Kodak cars are really running good. Uh, we stay in the lead lap all day and trying to, get, trying to get running a little bit better as we go here. I tell you what, I'd like to say hi to my wife Susan and my kids Thomas and Clay. You're new to this race car, but many folks don't know that you've been working with the Morgan McClure folks and with engine builder Run Pittman for some time now. I'll tell you, they've, uh, they've been working with me for about the last year and gave me the opportunity to drive this car and I'm trying to take full advantage of it. This is really a good race car right here. Okay, good luck to you. Jeff Purvis is on the lead lap. He's in 15th place right now. Looks like the trick today is to stay out of trouble. Here's another look at. Uh, oh, they touch way back oh, in the corner yeah. there. Yeah, boy. Oh, no, this is that Bill Elliott and the four car touch. That up was almost a trigger wreck there. Yeah. Well, I'll be darned. Who, who said it wouldn't roll again? I did. You know, there he goes. I think we take the Miller Genuine Draft Pick through the race award and let's just give it to Steve Meal now to yeah. get that car back into the race at all. And it looks like a car. One hour, 23 minutes. Look at that patch job on the right front there. That kind of like your pipe fit and kneel. Yeah, the tape doesn't fall <laughs> up there in business. <laughs> Folks, in a few seconds, we're going to show you a photo and watch you to spot the error in the Polaroid Captiva photo fake out game. The winner from each game wins a trip for two to Captiva Island, Florida, including airfare, a hotel, and 500 bucks spending money. So watch carefully. Maybe. Did you, you hear, hear that? that? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ooh. No thanks. Do do. Mm -hmm. What is it? Yes, anything. Anything that's mm -hmm. not mayonnaise based. I want it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Thank you. What a cute little stewardess. Cute little stewardess coming through. I tell you, these girls like Neil, don't they? Oh yeah. <laughs> You ain't got old and ugly yet. Wait. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. <laughs> mm, good brownie. Mm. Okay. Uh, let's see. I don't see that. Uh huh? Very glad I didn't see that. How old? How old is too old to enter Winston Cup racing? Somebody wants to know. Evidently, 54. 54? <laughs> <laughs> One to go, huh? What would you say that name is? Yeah, thank you. I couldn't get Judy or anything out. I couldn't get anything out of that. Tell him 52 Jerry. and three quarter years old. <clears throat> we'll go racing next time by here at Dover Downs. 239 laps complete. Jerry from Oregon called into our 800 number, toll free 800-451-7331 with a question about Jeff Purvis. If a rookie starts in mid-season, does he get to run for rookie points next season? No, if he runs over five races, he, he does not get to run for rookie of the year. You lose your rookie standing. These pictures from our Ray Bestus Brakes aerial camera platform. Ray Bestus, Best in Brakes, giving you these views. Set for the restart. Wallace, Gordon, Earnhardt.
Spencer and Rudd are the front five. As we, as we went away, we saw the 15 car hit into the garage. Last week, so. Wallace with the lead. Gordon moves around the outside of Morgan Shepard, and Dale Earnhardt is right there in third. I'll tell you, that car is strong. Look at Earnhardt now. He's starting to flex his muscles a little bit. Right behind him, Jimmy Spencer. Jimmy's drove the wheels off that car all day today. And we're almost halfway. Yeah. yeah they just gave <laughs> us a call. We just got a call back. They said the 15 has lost the cylinder. He's in the garage and they're working on it. Tough debut for Lake Speed with Bud Morris' team. There's your front three now clear of race traffic. Still pretty jumbled up behind them. Jimmy Spencer breaks out of traffic, and Ricky Rudd did not come up that quickly on the restart. So Rudd is back there leading that second pack. Rudd. Leading Jeff Bodine, Kyle Petty, Daryl Waltrip, and Hut Strickland. And Kenny Schrader up the outside of Strickland. In the 25 car, Kyle Petty underneath Bobby Hillen, just behind him. Boy, that's a hard pass on the outside. That's another place to be right now. There's Schrader, right side of your screen, completes the pass on Hut Strickland. And Kyle Petty moves up underneath the McDonald's Ford. And they are free of race traffic. Derek Cope is still in this race after that bout with the wall. And here's Kyle. Boy, Kyle's car is fast, too. Did you see him just pull out and pass and pull back in line before he ever got to the corner? Of course you see him. <laughs> what am I saying? I, I think we're seeing a little game of hide and seek here. I think everybody's kind of trying to hide from trouble and from how well maybe they could really run for several laps at a time. And then go seek out the leader. Wow. Dale Jarrett to the outside, Kenny Schrader to the inside, and Jeff Bodine underneath Jimmy Horton there. So that just kind of grew a little bit how high he went. Harry Gantz looks underneath Horton and Terry Labonte and Ted Musgrave. They just had a call from Rusty Wallace's crew up to Jeff Gordon and said, we've got everybody covered. We need to hook up and get away from everybody. I wonder. It's all more early in this race to make those claims. I don't know why they made the call. They've been doing it anyway. <laughs> Except for Jeff Gordon, you're right. Those two have been the quickest cars most all afternoon. Another Napa Field standing update as we come up on halfway. And as you watch this, we'll tell you the first 16 cars are on the lead lap. Nine caution flags thus far. We did hear a little bit of rumbling. They might make a call again for one of these cautions later after they make a long run look at the tires. We'll just have to see how that plays out also. Darrell Waltrip. Up in seventh place right now. Dale Jarrett having a look down low and Schrader looking even lower. Dale Jarrett's got to be pleased with the way that car is handling. He's right on that white line all the way through the corner. Now Kyle Petty is part of this pack, but he is not part of this battle. Kyle is two laps down. Made a green flag pit stop for a tire not too long ago. Yeah, that's going to be hard to make up today, don't you think, Jim? Yeah, you'd have to run so hard to do it. You'd be flirting with some problems. So looks like uh, Kyle's just going to have to ride this thing out. Hope some of the guys run the ball out. We are halfway at Dover Downs. Rusty Wallace leading Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt, Jimmy Spencer, and Ricky Rudd. You know, Kyle must be having some kind of problem because he was ahead of this whole group and pulling away, and now he's falling back again. I'm not sure whether he might be having ignition trouble or maybe something's wrong with the carburetor or something. He, he, dropped, he drops back, and then he runs up and drops back. Hard to figure. Darrell Walter just ran up the racetrack and lost two spots in the process. I, you know, it wasn't that long ago, Harry Gant would ride around the outside wall all day up in that Harry Gant and win a bunch of races here. But now, if you get two feet off the bottom of the racetrack, you're going to lose a ton of spots. 
Well, you couldn't run up here. That's all there's to it. No. What okay. would happen? He would go up, and eight or eight or nine other cars would go up there with him, and they would keep it clean up there. But right now, you're wrecked if you get up there. I've already told you that area is just for wrecking only. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like Buddy says, if you get a, yep. if you get some cars to go up there with you and kind of cut it in, cut the groove in, clean it off, you might get up there and race again. But if you pay such a price, you'd have to run so slow for so long to do it that you know you just can't get up there. You got to work this bottom stuff. FWO for wrecking on. Yep. There it is. I'm telling you, they <laughs> put grandstands up in that section, just move the wall on down. And the way people keep coming to these tracks, they keep adding grandstands and selling them out. They're going to be grandstands all the way around before it's over. Where it is, they're going to add 7,000 more seats here next year. And it's probably, down. probably sold out now. Speaking of Harry Gant, there he goes. In 14th position. On the lead lap, Mark Martin Mark coming Mark. into the pits. Yeah. And up front, Jeff Gordon has reeled. Rusty Wallace back in again. We were talking about Mark Martin. He did not come in the pit. What he's doing is running the flat through the corner and then moving out on the straightaway and staying out of everybody's way because he can't run fast enough to stay up in the groove. He is right now in 34th place. And if he runs the rest of the distance, we'll probably pick up three or four positions at least. Well, if he just runs just a few more laps, he'll be up in the, you know, pick up one position because one car fell out and ran 117 laps. Rick Wilson. So just a few more laps and he'll be around Rick Wilson. That'd be some points for him. This is not a replay. They are racing again. And if you'll hang on just a minute, things usually play out. The 24 will go around the two as the tire situation goes along. Unless Rusty has made some adjustments on his car. We'll see. Wallace has had a lot of success with Pontiac, but the rumor persists about him leaving Pontiac and going to Ford next season. We asked Rusty about that, and then we'll be right back. Hopefully, General Motors can get their self straightened back out and get their, their finances worked out. And if they do that, then I'm sure Mr. Penske will continue his talks and stuff like that, but he's the guy. Jeff Gordon hit Rusty just before the caution. That's what's wrong with the front of the car. Okay. Who's one saying that? One of the viewers said that. <laughs> Ask him if they'd like a job spotting for me. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Welcome back to Dover Downs. There is the lead battle. Rusty Wallace and Jeff Gordon are trying to settle this one among themselves. It's a long way back to the third place car of Jimmy Spencer. Five seconds is the gap. And Dale Earnhardt appears to be dropping back. You see him just in front of Jeff Bodine. Earnhardt has dropped back to fifth. Ricky Rudd went past him a lap ago. One here in 1989. 
And up front, they split Jimmy Means and Wallace hangs on to the lead. For these two guys, this has got to be fun racing. Oh, yeah, they're having a ball right now. Both cars are working well. Two very competitive race car drivers. There's not money that'll pay for that. No Pontiac has ever won this race. A lot of questions on our 800 number about Rusty Wallace and the comments about Pontiac. The car manufacturers support the teams in various ways. They provide sheet metal, they may provide loaner vehicles for the teams to use and give other support. So each car owner makes a decision what type of car to run. Chevrolet going for Pontiac here. Put Gordon out front. Flash Gordon goes back up front. Yeah, but just before that happened, I could see the hand signals inside Rusty's car. He just motioned him by. I don't know what the deal was. Before the pass, all There's of a sudden, the tomahawk. Up. Yeah, back up again. <laughs> Lap past Kenny Wallace in Pontiac. But to finish that story, it appears to be just a question of negotiation between the manufacturer of Pontiac and the, the managing partner of that team, who is Roger Penske, whether or not they'll run Pontiac next season or whether they will switch to Ford. Let's go to Randy. Well, uh, guys, Rusty Wallace and uh, their crew has been talking to Jeff Gordon's crew. Rusty came on the radio and said, how many laps do I have to lead until I have that extra five points locked up for leading the most laps? And quite frankly, I think they miscommunicated and Rusty uh, uh, got bad information or, or the wrong information and he pulled over and let Jeff by, but he needs about another 30 laps to lock it up. So we might see him try to take uh, Jeff on again here. Here are the numbers. Rusty Wallace has led 195 laps today. Jeff Gordon has led 51. So Gordon could end up with a five extra bonus points. Remember, Wallace is locked in that battle with Earnhardt and Mark Martin for the Winston Cup championship, and those five points could mean a lot. Watch right here. Watch Rusty inside the car, the hand signals. He just waved him, see him waving his hand, motioned him over to the inside. Rusty just motioned him over, took to the outside, and gave him that inside lane. So it must have been some miscommunications on how many laps he needed to lead, because he definitely pulled over and motioned him in. Also, you notice that pass while the one car was smoking Rick Mass when they went around him. If Wallace fails to lead again and Gordon leads another 150 laps, he would get the five bonus points. In the NASCAR point system, every driver who leads the race at least one lap gets five bonus points. The one driver who leads the most laps in the race gets five more bonus points. Somebody said, what's five points? Well, five uh -huh. points is the difference of winning or losing the championship. We've seen that kind of late. Tell you what it is. A few years ago, Dave Marcus, everybody would pit on the lead lap. Everybody would come in the pits. He would stay out under caution just so he'd lead a lap, just so he'd get those five points. At the end of the season, it would make 40, 50 points difference, and it might make ten or $20,000 difference come the banquet when you get your point money. Yeah, the, someone like Marcus, where he needs that financial support, is really worth doing. And for these guys winning for the championship, they have to do it. Well, once Gordon got around, he really stretched it out. The longer that car runs, the better it runs, much like Todd Bodine's yesterday in the Bush Series 200 lap race. He's been right at the front most all day, as you can see. 200. 27 laps to go here at Dover Downs. And Jeff Gordon out in front by 1.2 seconds. Here's a look at your top 10 as we go to break. We'll be back to Dover Downs after this. Dollar back now, look. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to know how far it was from uh, first to third now, if I could. I'm not kidding you. Mark Martin running faster than Dollar back now. Is that right? Well, he's running him down. Look, he was straight away back. He's catching him right now. <laughs> Man, that's awful. <laughs> I guess Mark said, "Well, nothing's going to rub in two now, and uh, go on back to running." So they're telling him. All right, they're they're telling uh, telling Jeff to ease up. Who, who's calling? Okay. Right. See him back on the flat. He was flying yep. for a few laps. Yep. Look at this. What's this? That's oil. Oh. Or something. 
I wanted the lens fluid. You know, no, the, I wanted I the bet lens. It burned the the lens. lens melted up in the in the fire. Yep. How's that? Any other guesses? That's it. The lens melted in the fire. Right. Huh? He's coming down pit road He's now. Stopping. Mark Martin running down on the apron and on to pit road as he tries to preserve third in the Winston Cup point standings. That's for Mark Martin's roof cam. Still ticking. That suspension cam. Wow. A few new parts folded on there. And this is meltdown cam inside the car. It's amazing it's still running, but it looks like it melted the lens. Garage. Went back to the garage. I'll tell you what, they might be looking at the number of laps they needed to run what they can pick up here. They've got to go a hundred and something laps to pick up on the next guy now. Good point, Neil. He, he ran enough laps to get past Rick Wilson, who's out of the race. That moves him up to 33rd. But to gain one more position, he would have to run another 81 laps. Jeff Bodine on pit road, so is Greg Sachs. The family Channel Ford for Bodine. 40 car, Kenny Wallace in. Hit position number one accorded the Winston Cup championship team, which this still is for the rest of the season. Even though Jeff Bodine has purchased it and is now driving the car, it is still the Winston Cup championship team for 1993. And still the AK on the nose of the car. It's still being operated as Alan Pulicki Racing through December of this year. We had a couple of questions about that on our 800 number. Jimmy Spencer, Ricky Rudd, third place at stake here. Well, they've been going at it, too. I mean, they have been racing hard. You know, we just had a call, the 24 car. They called him and told him to ease off. They told him the two car had already backed the pace now for him to slow down. So they're trying to get Jeff Ward to slow down just a little bit. He's turned out a little bit quicker laps than they want him to run. I just had a report that Jeff Bodine come in. He had a flat right front. So he was lucky he didn't get up into the wall. Now, it's Something on the back of Jimmy Fennick's shirt about 40, which is the age he turns this weekend. He's the crew chief for Jimmy Spencer. One thing I tell you, just be glad you keep turning. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> right. Those people say, I don't want to celebrate any more birthdays. You tell them, well, now think about that. Man. Yeah. 46 star going out now. Pit Road, they've got it back in. Back to run it again. Spencer. Bobby Allison, Meineke Muffler's Ford. They had a car in the parade lap that was a giant muffler. Ugliest thing since the Wiener Mobile. Here comes Rusty Wallace down Pit Road. No, he didn't oh, down Pit road. road. Tried to turn down Pit Road, but missed it. Oh, and he's going back. I think he's getting back up to speed. He might just miss the opening. Does he have a flat? They say one tire is down. Yeah. Now it doesn't look flat because of the Goodyear safety inner liner. Yeah, but did you see the black strip it was put down as it went through the yep. corner? Might have been going too fast to make the turn to pit road. Well, if that's right front is down, it's hard to turn that thing, especially on the inner tire. Don't we'll make another shot at it right here to get out pit road. Randy Pemberton is waiting for Rusty Wallace. Well, no question about it, guys. He cut down the right front. What do you say? They're going to go ahead and just change the right side tires. Boy, the crew is just beside themselves. I mean, a great race car, but I mean, that's the price you pay. They know that there's a possible problem with these, and they go out and lead like that. It's very difficult for a race car driver, the caliber of Rusty Wallace and Jeff Ward, to back off the pace. He cut one down. He's fortunate he's not in the wall. A great two-tire stop. Last week at Richmond, he came from a lap down on a penalty. How about a win? How about 10.9 for two tires? How about that? You guys get the job done, I tell you. They've already got the four tire stops down to 16 like it used to be for a two tire. Right. But now they're bumping the two tires down to 10 seconds. If I was Jeff Gordon, I'd be awfully careful right now. Well, I thought Jeff Gordon was just keying that radio. He's talking those pits, and I'm sure they're telling. They've already asked him to back the pace down. The one thing he's had in his favor all day, though, they've been putting, putting bite in the car, but it's been a little bit loose, and you won't bust that right front down as long as you stay on the loose side. Got to be Last about it. rookie winner for a Winston Cup race is right here at Dover, 1987, Davey Allison. 
Jeff Gordon leads this with 288 laps down. Ricky Rudd has moved up to second. Kenny Schrader is third. Three Hendrick cars in the first three positions. Oh, I'm telling you, mighty good teams. Jeff Bodine driving for the team that he has purchased and will operate. We asked him about the timing at this point in the season of his move to the new race team. We all just thought it would be better for Ford to uh, make the change, get their drivers in their cars they're going to run next year, plus maybe ho hopefully uh, help them win the manufacturer championship this year. Has the right front Jeez. flat. I don't know how. <clears throat> they make it to the mandatory. Are, are they <laughs> going to do a 30? I don't know. Yeah, they can still run. Yeah, they, I don't see anything wrong with the 11 car. Derek Hope just hit the wall again. Again. Trying and to bring out caution. the caution. There it is. And there's Mike Waltrip with one down on the right front. Yep. Boy, it's almost on time, isn't it? When one goes, they all start going up there. Did he hit the wall too? I don't I don't know. <clears throat> Butterscotch. There's Neil. Butter Butterscotch Neil. Q is hot the chocolate. Sundays. I, mean, cho Where's I this? got a chocolate myself. Got your name on it. Oh, okay, that's good. Mm. Thank you. Bird. Thank, you, thank you very much. Yes. Number one in our eyes, I'll tell you. Yep. And special delivery. That's terrific. Now, we got to talk, or we, how long are we off? Thank you, sir. Just like we appreciate it. Two tires at the same time. That's crazy, isn't it? You see, Mike, TNN Motorsports coverage of the Split Fire Spark Plug 500. He is brought to you by Keystone, Keystone Light, and Keystone Drive. Michael Walter's car sits center of your screen. He cut down a right front tire. He came to pit road. Derek Cope slid up toward the wall again at turn number two, and caution is out. Tenth one of the day. And again, we'll show you this TNN innovation so you can comparatively clock the pit stops of the race leaders. Three Rick Hendrick cars come into the pits in first, second, and third position. And on the right side, you'll see them move down the pit lane after their service is completed. Ricky Rudd's pit is furthest up pit road toward the entrance, so he gets stopped first, then Schrader, then Gordon. Champion picks his pit first, and then you pick in order the way you qualify. That's why they're in the positions they're in. Fight for the windshield on Rudd, finishing up the left sides. Now he gets out in 23 seconds. But he's got a long way to come down pit road. Looks like they're having trouble on Jeff Gordon's left rear there. And he gets out just behind Dale Jarrett there. Just behind Jimmy Spencer before he got in line there. Wow. This was bad for uh, Rusty Wallace also. Just having to stop on the green, then the caution comes out just a little bit later. It'll be hard to make his laps up. And it also puts him a lap out of sequence. He has to pit on the second lap now because it's a lap down. That's right. He won't be able to pit with the race leaders. Wallace, in fact, is two laps down after that green flag. Pit stop. As you watch from the safety car. I seen Michael Waltrip go to the garage area just then. It looked like suspension broke on the right front of that car. Yeah, they said he lost the tire and got in the wall and they damaged the car. Here are the cars a lap or more down led by Rusty Wallace coming on to pit lane. Jeff Gordon in the DuPont finishes Chevrolet of Rick Hendrick, Ray Evernham, the crew chief, 
And the rookie driver trying to become the first rookie in six years to win a Winston Cup race. Jeff, this is TNN. It looks like these last hundred laps have been a pretty good, clean run for you. Yeah, uh, you know, things are going our way right now. We're just going to keep our fingers crossed and, uh, you know, hope that the rest of the race goes this way. The biggest thing for us this whole year has been making it to the halfway point, and uh, we've made it that far, so uh, the car is good. I tell you, this DuPont crew is doing an awesome job in the pits. I'm real happy about the way things are going. Jeff, what did you think when Rusty Wallace waved you to the inside and waved you by? Did you think maybe he had a problem, or do you think he was just letting you go? Well, you know, we talked, uh, our spotters talked there at that last yellow, and we both agreed that if we could try to pull away from Earnhardt, and if we got out in the open and I was faster than him, then uh, he would work with me or I'd work with him. And, uh, you know, I was putting the pressure to him, and I was trying to get by him, and he just let me go. Uh, that's what real race is all about. You know, you got to wait till the last 50 laps or 100 laps before you really go for it. Okay, thanks and good luck. Thank you. Jeff Gordon currently running third behind Kenny Schrader and Dale Jarrett. Jimmy Spencer is fourth. Gary Lamonti up in the fifth spot. We'll be right back. What's up? Yes, thank you. I will. I'll hold you that. Yeah, on the three, on that uh, triple box, can we wait to slide that over until the last car has left the pit to show the relation? It would be nice to keep that a little longer, and then we can we can talk them to the right side. But I mean, I love it. I think it's a great shot. It's a great effect. You're not hot. You're not hot. I'm hot. You're hot. Mm -hmm. God. At Rockingham. He's yeah. hot. Or Phoenix. I mean. See if he'll let us have a little air. <laughs> Hit it. Sure, <laughs> go ahead. Finishing up this caution period here at Dover Downs. All of TNN would like to thank Dennis McGlynn and Jerry Dunning. Here at Dover Downs for their hospitality they've shown us as we try to bring this race to you. It's been quite a weekend here at Dover. We battled the rain all day yesterday to get 200 laps of Grand National Racing in. And here today, just perfect weather. And Ken Schrader out in front. Dale Jarrett, Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Spencer, Terry Labonte. Ricky Rudd was in the top three, but came out of the pits in seven. But still, counting Jarrett, that's 300 power plants in the front three positions right now. You said a mouthful. Kenny Schrader is a dominant figure on this racetrack. You remember when he won here a couple of years ago. I mean, he just drove right in the corner harder than anyone. Green flag at lap 298. Here goes Rusty trying to get one of those laps back. He's out front now. He's got to catch a caution. Remember Wallace made a green flag pit stop. Tried to get down pit road with a cut tire, could not make the turn, and went two laps down in the process. So now he is one lap and distance down to Ken Schrader, the new leader. First time Schrader has led today, the 13th race he has led this year. You talk about those five Winston Cup bonus points piling up. Earnhardt has only led one of the last five races. He has not yet led today. No, that's unusual. They usually run, you know, go for those points. Just have been able to get up front. He don't have the 200 more laps to find out whether he can lead a lap or not. <laughs> <laughs> so Wallace is in front, but he is not the leader. He's a lap and distance, almost two laps down. No, and I, I would think Rusty tried to question, does he just stay in front of the leader and hope for a caution, or does he really try to stretch it out? and risk creating the problem he had earlier. I had to run too hard. 
Jeff Bodine is right behind Schrader. But uh, Bodine is now posted one lap down. They don't want to get Rusty anything back, I'm sure. They're going to try to put him back that lap down because that could come back to home later. That's right. For you fans new to NASCAR racing, after a caution flag, when they line up on a restart, the cars on the lead lap line up in one lane. The cars a lap or more down get to come all the way around and line up on the other lane. And that's what put Rusty right alongside Kenny Schrader on the restart by moving out ahead of him. He is now just one lap down in distance. Second place. Third place. Car three. Earnhardt moves up one. Takes a spot from Dale Jarrett. Terry Labonte having a strong run today for the Kellogg's folks and Billy Hagan. He's in fifth just behind Jarrett. Trader's day has looked like this. <laughs> well, we have this graphic <laughs> to show you. I'm telling you, it looks like this. He's been going round and round. Here it is. He's moved up from seventh to first over the last 53 laps. The Bear. The Bear. That's the Bear if you're in the Chicago. Bear. You got it. Ooh. Bonnie and Bodine. Yeah, Bodine and Bodine, uh, Bodine got together. Bodine slid up about our lane. Got to bring up no man's land. Jeff Gordon watching that action right in front of him. Now he's got to be really patient not to make a mistake coming up through this traffic. That's so easy to do when you have a dominant car to make a mental error, you know? And here's where you see this young fellow's experience. Jeff Gordon. He's going to make the moves where he can. He gets underneath Terry Labonte. Even though he's a rookie on this circuit, you're right, buddy. If he takes his time, he's not going to bust his way to the front. Right. That car just as smooth. Look at the back of that car. It never wiggles. It's just as straight as an arrow off the corner. That puts Jeff Gordon up into fifth place. Jimmy Spencer now has Earnhardt filling his rearview mirror. You know, Spencer has really driven a great race today. He's up to second now, and he's just driving the wheels off the race car, and he's showing a lot of maturity. We noticed that in the Bush race yesterday. He didn't take chances that he would have probably done last, last year or the start of this year. He's showing a lot of... He's a hard racer, but he don't take the chances he used to. He's 1.8 seconds behind the leader. And I think, buddy, you, you hit on that a bit ago. When you have a car that good, you don't have to take those chances. Whoop. There goes Earnhardt by. One better. And Dale Jarrett right behind him. Just as you were by, we saw Mark Martin come out of the garage again, so he's out riding around again. Look at Jeff Gordon come up through there. He's throwing that pack down now. He's going to get in the battle for him. Well, That'll go all the way to second when he passes that group there. Dale Jarrett just ahead. Yeah, he's running the field, like you said, but that's what's two right here put him up there pretty good way. Yeah. It's like Jarrett's car is working a little bit better than the 12 car of Spencer. Ford versus two Chevrolets. He's kind of close up in the center corner. Spencer's car is really strong down the straightaway itself. Jarrett has a look underneath Jimmy Spencer. He's going to open the door, and Jeff Gordon's going to fall right through. It's almost more difficult. I don't mind one of you going by, but you can't get the door closed before everybody in line goes. He did manage to close it on Terry Labonte and Jeff Purvis. Purvis and the Kodak 
car now in 13 one lap down. Boy, that motor is turning up some RPM. Do you hear that, Neil? Oh, yeah, they don't mind abusing them. Well, it inhibits motors. They've got a lot of power. They don't mind turning some RPM with them. He's got a call. It's in the 28 car. This player go. We just saw him on the left. He just came out of the garage. So they've got Ernie Irvin's car back on the track again also. And, and he's only a hundred, only a hundred laps down. But Irvin needs 12 laps to pick up a position on uh, Lake Speed. You know, Rusty had a good bit of room while ago. Schrader in the last few laps has really closed back in on him. I'm sure he'd like to get that two car lap down. He'll keep his, he's within one of getting it back now. Like to put that other lap back on him if all possible. Jeff's tried everything to get by Dale Jarrett. He just can't quite get, they seem to be running. There he goes on the inside, finally. Boy, he's been wrestling with him for the last four laps. Once you get that inside, the wrestling is over. Yep. Dale Jarrett's marched through the field over the last uh, 60 laps. Closing back in on Earnhardt. He got around as far as back in traffic. Well, it looks like Gordon running him down. Battle for sixth place. Jimmy Spencer, Ricky Rudd, Harry Gant. Ooh, looks like they touched right there a little Just bit. A little bit. Spencer looks like he might be a little bit too tight. The car is moving out the center part of the corner. He's not able to come off the corner. 319 laps down. We'll be back to Dover Downs after this. How long? You guys are sitting. Two minutes. Two minutes. You guys are seeing the superstar in the making right here. I'm telling you right now, that boy driving. Okay. DuPont's happy. Oh. <laughs> Ecstatic. <laughs> Where can you get a jet dryer? Where do we get these questions? Where can you get a dr jet dryer? Jet dryer, drive probably, track. Probably cheap in Russia now. Yeah. Frank Wilson, Rockingham, North Carolina. Okay. The National Network back with you live at Dover Down. And Dale Earnhardt has dropped two spots while we were away. Jeff Gordon and Dale Jarrett moved up to second and third place, respectively, behind leader Kenny Schrader. Here's the pass for second. Or for third, rather. Going that turn one. So I can see it all day long. Get that inside lane. It, it's yours once you do that. So Gordon goes to second, and here Dale Jarrett moves up to third. Wow. And here's Harry Gant closing in for fourth place. He passed Ricky Rudd just as we went to commercial. Gant did that, is there's Rudd. So now fourth, fifth, and sixth. Bernhardt 
Earnhardt has a problem, or maybe he's just he's run a few laps on this set of tires and he's taking it easy. Not taking it easy. Terry Levani, Jimmy Spencer battling. Ted Musgrave. The Jasper ends his U.S. air car in ninth. And they both move up a spot on Spencer. Boy, this crowd's loving it. They're not using these seats for anything but something to stand on. Harry Gant moves up to fourth. That's what put the crowd on their feet. This battle six seconds behind the leader. Gant just kind of been plugging along at it all day. Seems like the longer the run, the better it gets. Really sailing. He looks like he's running down. Uh, oh, he's catching Glenn Joe. Oh, Glenn, listen to that. Dale Jarrett. It's getting to be almost uh, Harry Gant time. You know, we're about lap 330 here. Looks like Jarrett is back out in the 28 car. Let's go to Randy. Richard Childress, he's backed off. Any problem? Now, you know, we just try and take a little bit easy on the chassis right there. You know, we just. Richard Childress is a thinker and a planner. He's got a way to fix that car. They're just waiting for the next pit stop to do it. You know, he said something a while ago. We heard uh, one of the owners say, you can't win if you're in the pits fixing a race car. So I'm, I'm sure that leading the points like he is, he's not going to take a chance. Let me tell you one thing you've got to think about, too. Earnhardt is as tough a guy there is on the right front tire. And yes. they pretty well pull the reins back on that thing. And, uh, you know, I can't help but think when you see him pull over and people come by, that they're sitting there, you know, that this championship thing's on the line. And I'm just thinking that, you know, they know if anybody's going to pop one of their tires, they're a good candidate for it. That's right. Pass for third. Do you think that showed any muscle? He passed on the outside. Of course, that's where he used to race. He's had a lot of experience on the outside, but Harry Gant is flying around this racetrack. If he'll move up about 30 more feet, I'd say he's in his old place. <laughs> <laughs> it's got some room left up <laughs> We may see him up in the Harry Gant group before the day is over. I hope he plans to go up there. Kenny Schrader is the race leader. Rusty Wallace is nearly two laps down, still running just ahead of him like he has since the restart. Here's Glenn. Well, guys, we've noted how much pressure Schrader keeps putting on the Rusty Wallace to keep him that second lap down. Let's ask Ken how to if that's what he is doing indeed. Ken is running the car awfully hard. Is he trying to put that other lap on Rusty? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Could he try again? Is he trying to put another lap on Rusty? No, not right now. We're just trying to ride and save the car. There's been a problem with tires. We're trying to be careful. Run some more laps, see what happens. They say be careful awfully fast. They say the 42 has a tire down. He's coming in the pits right now. Also, the four car coming in right behind him. We saw this before. When one guy would lose the tire, it'd be a rash of them. 42 down pit road. The four is on the other end of pit road. Mark Martin is also in. Ernie Irvin is back out on the track. Just picked up two positions by running more laps than Derek Cope or Lake Speed. Both of them are in the garage. Well, I'll tell you what, the air reaches are getting to work out today. Those tire changes are yep. putting in a day's work. Jeff Purvis on pit road. Ricky Rudd has, has passed Dale Earnhardt. And that puts the tide of Chevrolet back up on the leaderboard in fifth. So at 335 laps, it looks like this. Kenny Schrader, the leader. Jeff Gordon in second. Harry Gant in third. Dale Jarrett in fourth, and Ricky Rudd now up to fifth. There's the rest of your top ten. We'll be right back.
was nine six four three. Okay. Got it. Rusty get that lap back with him. Welcome back to Dover Downs. Mike Joy with Neil Bonnet and Buddy Baker. Glenn Jarrett and Randy Pemberton in the pits for TNN. As Kenny Schrader continues to roll on here at Dover Downs. We are told that NASCAR will be bringing the caution out at lap 345. Five laps from now, they have informed the team that that is as far as they want to go on this run of tires, that they will have a caution flag so everybody can come in and change. And let me tell you, it's within the realm. You see Rusty Wallace, it's really critical. We're just four laps away from that caution. If he stays out there, he's going to get one of them back. And then if he can do it again, 45 more laps, he gets another one back. Boy, look here, of all things, right here with four laps to go, they get in this traffic right here. When I say four to go, I'm talking about to this mandatory caution. Mandatory it's critical that Rusty Wallace stay out there. And there Sterling is Martin. not get exciting, boys. Sterling's looking for a hole to crawl into as he's holding up the race leader. Now, he is battling Wallace, who is just now two laps down. Sterling is trying to keep from going. Would you believe? A lap down. Boy, I don't think it would have been a problem for Rusty to keep that... You know, get that lap back or they ran up on that lap car. But you can't blame Sterling. He's trying to stay in the lead lap as hard as Rusty is. You're exactly right. Harry Gant slowing down, we're told. Oh, man. You know, when he was running those real quick laps, that was one of our concerns. How much was he abusing? He's sitting there waiting for that caution. He knows if he's got a problem, he can hang on for two more laps. He'll take advantage of that mandatory caution to go through out. Yep. They're ready for Gant with tires. Trying to get him to hang on a couple of laps. Two more laps from when NASCAR says they'll hang out the yellow. One lap now. And Wallace will remain two laps down, it appears. Darrell Waltrip shoots around Gant. He drips now back. back Mark Martin. Oh, boy, oh, he's got a tire down. Yeah, you see him run up towards wall. the wall? Can't win any longer. Yellow is yellow. Yeah, but can he get back to the line for the leaders? He made him. Yep. Yes, Gant will stay on the leader lap. <laughs> You think they're calling these mandatories pretty close? They've got a good feel on how long these tires will last. We had two other guys have flats just prior to this. So a tough break for Rusty Wallace. He stays one lap down. And Gant, with that tire down, is trying to stay ahead of Wallace and the pace car. He does be, so. He's got to be real careful, that inner tire. If it goes down, you talk about a trip across there. He don't have to be up to full speed to hit the wall. One hundred fifty five laps to go. Let and me see how many stops will that be. <laughs> two more. Yep. Probably two more. Eleven cars are on the lead lap. Gant is the last car in the lead lap. Give a call to Bobby Labonte who's 10th. Darrell Waltrip ninth and again we'll split the screen three ways for you. The three leaders as they come in will be Schrader Gordon. And now Dale Jarrett. Ricky Rudd is fourth Ted Musgraves up to fifth. He's had a good day. There are the leaders, and on the right side, you see Pitt Road. And Rusty Wallace will stay out. He has to because he's laps down, of course. Only the lead lap cars can pit. I think he'll stay. He'll have to come in one of you. Yeah, just go let him in the next lap. Dale Jarrett's away first, but he, of course, with 19 and a half second pit stop, is way up pit road. We'll watch for him to come into the right side of the screen. As now Schrader pulls out, here's Jarrett, the green car. Schrader's out, goes past Gordon and Earnhardt. Gordon made a chassis adjustment. Pit stop range 19 and a half to 21 seconds flat among that group. Pretty close. Wow. But it'll be Schrader. We'll have the lead when we go back to green. I don't know how these guys do that. You know, how many pit stops have they had today? And these guys are still pumping out with wonderful times like that. Looks like it wear down after a while. Well, I'm wondering how much nitrogen they have in the bottles. <laughs> you come on pit road with just a certain amount, they're going to use it up today. One of the big battles in NASCAR racing is for the Manufacturers Championship. Very coveted title. And we asked Lee Morris of Ford Motorsport how he feels about Ford's chances of winning that title in 1993. 
We had it once, had it last year for the first time, and it was really sweet and great. I'd like to experience it at least the second time. So hopefully we can, uh, you know, we're getting close. Uh, Mid-season, it didn't look like there was much chance, but after the last uh, four or five weeks, who knows? Well, again, it was lucky. Yeah, mm -hmm. very. <clears throat> you know what we just say? Yeah. We just, you know, he ran so fast we could see it coming almost. Yeah. yeah. You call that about. <clears throat> Thank you. You call that 20 lap before it happened. Yep. I don't understand. I sound fine in my <clears throat> ear now, but when we go back on program, I sound like, sound very hollow. Like you. Woo. On the return. Yeah, Can you it. guys hear me? Yeah, I hear you fine. Oh, okay. Well, split uh, fire. <laughs> My uh, return when we're out, when we're on the air. Now it sounds fine, but when we're on the air, it sounds real hollow, like a, almost like a reverb return or an echo return. So, what? Did you see what Rusty did to Schrader when they looked in and when they caught up? No, I no. And when you were pointing at something, I had no idea what you're pointing at. Oh, that's fine. I was trying to show Greg. No. Pulled right up alongside him and drove him up. Hey. Like Schrader, or, uh, Rusty did that to Schrader. Because it wouldn't let you do that. probably laugh. You know, you know right. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Pretty good inner liner, so I'll tell you that. Seems to be better Please. than the outer Yeah, because I forgot. They did tell me I forgot. <laughs> when he said we were going to have a keystone, I was thinking. But he said they're pretty good inner liners. <laughs> The Split Fire Spark Plug 500, an exclusive presentation of the Nashville Network, is brought to you by Split Fire, the patented performance spark plug. It only costs more till you use it. We've had a lot of questions on our toll-free number today about the manufacturer's points. There are the wins and the points for each participating manufacturer, and although Oldsmobile is not officially involved in the sport, there was one Olds in the race today, Bob Schacht's car. If a Chevrolet wins the race, Chevrolet gets nine points. No matter how many Chevrolets are in line, the next manufacturer to finish, let's say Ford, even if they finish 10th, if it's nine Chevrolets and then Ford, they're the next manufacturer, they get second. That's six points. And then the next manufacturer to place a car gets four points and then three, two, and one. That's the standings right now. Ford, six points back to Chevrolet, nine wins to seven, seven for Pontiac, six of those by Rusty Wallace. Here's Glenn. Uh, the fans have heard us many times talk about the inner liners on the tire. We've got a perfect example of it here. This is the right front tire that came off of Harry Ginn's car. You can see the outer liner is shredded completely away, but you see this inner liner here. That kept the car up, kept him from getting in the wall, enabled him to stay on the racetrack until the caution came out. The thing I like about this, look right here. Inside that lifeguard inner tire. Boy, that's a perfect name for it. Mandy? Ray Everham, crew chief for uh, Jeff Gordon. I heard Jeff came over with Radio 1. No, how come you guys aren't having a tire problem? Uh, I guess it's because you're so smart with the chassis. Well, I don't know about that. Um, we've been lucky, and the kids looking after the tires real well. Um, there's still 150 laps left, so we don't hope we don't have any tire problems. But um, the car's been balanced real good. The guys have been doing a good job in the pits, and they did a good job preparing the car all week. So hopefully for uh, DuPont and Bobbley and Rick and everybody, we can get a good finish today. Great run so far. Hope it stays under you. Thank you. Ray Everham, former modified ace from New Jersey. This is his home racetrack at Dover Downs. One lap to go, we'll go racing. 350 down, 150 laps to go. Up front, Ken Schrader, Jeff Gordon, Dale Jarrett, and Ricky Rudd. That's three Hendrick cars and four Hendrick engines in the front four spots. You probably couldn't fit the smile on Rick Hendrick's face on camera right about now. You got that right. In fifth, Dale Earnhardt. Sixth is Jimmy Spencer. Seventh, Ted Musgrave. Eighth, Bobby Labonte. Ninth, Darrell Waltrip. And tenth, Terry Labonte. Eleventh is Harry Gant. They are all on the lead lap. 
Then Jeff Bodine, Hutt Strickland, Sterling Marlin, a lap down. You know, here we go. We see Rusty Wallace on that inside again. Even though he pitted on the second lap, he's able to do just like you told him before, Mike. He's able to pull up to that inside line and be directly beside Schrader, the opportunity to get the lap back. And that, Neil, because he was the first out of all the lap cars to come out of the pit, so he gets the front spot in that line. Even though he's two laps down and Jeff Bodine is only one lap behind. Bodine gets back on the lead lap and Rusty gets one back in a little breathing room. From Jeff Gordon looking at the leader, Kenny Schrader. Did you see that? <laughs> Jeff Gordon had a handful just for a second. He got completely sideways. Got to have a lot of trust to take these cars down into the corner on the first lap on green tires before they're up to temperature. Well, that's probably what happened there. If you don't get all that debris off of the car, when you go down in the corner on that tire, it just feels like you're on ball bearings. I tell you what, you know, you talk about the smile on Rick Hendrick's face. He's also got to have some concern because he's been in this position before with his cars running one, two. Matter of fact, it happened in Marsville. They run a one, two, and a big wreck, and he took each other out. So the hardest you have to run on these tracks, they're going to have to be careful racing against each other. The Hendrick owned cars are Ken Schrader, the leader, Jeff Gordon in second, and Ricky Rudd in fourth. They also build the engines. Rick Wetzel oversees them. Hendrick Engines program for Dale Jarrett, the third place car. Yeah, I'll I tell you what, Mike, there's no doubt he gets just as good an engine as anyone else because, you know, one day Tony, he's run up the points all year. Jarrett is fourth in the points. The point leader just moved past him. Earnhardt, here comes Spencer. Spencer's coming along also. Hut Strickland down low now against Hut's two laps down. Yep. You can see what happens when you get caught in that outside. No matter what kind of car is under you, he's going to make that pass. There goes Jeff Purvis by. That's correct. Hut Strickland is one lap down. Uh, he's 13th. He's a lap behind. And Purvis now has dropped three laps back uh, in the Kodak car. I didn't see it happen, did you? He run well all day. He come in at least one, maybe two stops under green. Buddy. Yeah, he was one of the guys while ago when two guys had a flat at the same time. He was on pit road. So right. Yeah, that tire problem also. Rudd and Earnhardt closing in on Jeff Gordon. Yeah. Well, this, maybe Gordon not ran long enough to do what he normally does. After he runs a few laps, it gets better. But I tell you what, they've been working on that car ever stopped. I've been watching. They've been putting a little bit of chassis to him. I thought they've been working on that right rear every time he came in on the, on the spring, changing a little bit. Up there's something on the racetrack. Looks like a piece of hose or something. The duck work. I could get a good view of it. That's in the back straightaway. Depends on where it is and what the type of debris it is. If the NASCAR official in that backstretch observation post feels it's something that would cut down a tire, he'll call for a caution flag. But if not, they might just leave it there. Yeah, we just had a call back that the 24 car did run over it. We don't, we're not sure what it was. Well, he, he's back up to speed again. I guess he had to convince himself he didn't hurt the car by running over it. We'll take a look, see if we can tell what it is. I believe that's a piece of that ductwork, that plastic hose. There's a wire off of yeah, it. What is. it is, it's a blower that goes to the brake. Yeah, brake ducts. Brake ducts. All right. Rubble, it's Jeff Bodine. Oh. Going off turn two. Oh, man, he hit it a ton. Now the race back to the caution flag. This is where Rusty Wallace will get a lap back. Yep. Yeah, Rusty Wallace was in front. Got that lap back. Well, Jeff Bodine, the driver, have to go back and explain to Jeff Bodine, the car owner, what happened. Tough break in his first drive in the AK Racing Kowicki team, Thunderbird. Report is that he and Jeff Gordon may have gotten together. Yeah, look at the front end damage on Jeff Gordon. He had some damage prior to this, but nothing like what we see right now. Look at the right oh, front. Look at that right front. That'll hurt him when they get back on the green, too. Man, what a, you know, the car runs so strong, too. Caution is the 12th of the day. Let's see if we can tell what happened. Here's Gordon on the bottom of the racetrack. That's, oh, there's Bodine right up in front of him. Okay, he's trying to go under him there. Trying to get up under him off this corner. Looks like it just touched right there. Oh, man. Oh, he just, 
move. Then he climbed up. Wearing down the damage with the yeah. hit to the left front. Gordon went up a little, but Ein came down a little, and they got together. There Look goes at Earnhardt. Earnhardt. You talk about somebody lucky. Yeah. Richard Petty used to say, I'd rather be lucky than good, but you got to be pretty good to, to be luck. that lucky. Yeah, that's it. There goes Earnhardt scooting by. Well, Jeff Bodine was having a good run in his own car. Here yep. we go, coming up off the corner. They've already got together back in the middle of one and two. Oh, he hit hard. You see yeah. the car lift off the ground there? Look, there's a bunch of the lead cars. There's Ricky Rudd coming by. All right, we're going to show you what Jeff Gordon saw from the in car in real time. In other words, at speed as it happened. Okay, he's under him. They did make contact there. Oh. Bodine was one lap down. See Jeff coming in. Running in 12th position. A lot of damage. We'll be right back to Dover Downs and give you another look at see if you can figure out the photo error in our Polaroid Captiva photo fake out game and see if you might win that trip for two or the grand prize a trip to the Daytona 500 and a thousand dollars. Stay tuned. We got a camera that can show the right front of uh, Jeff Gordon's car. If they don't make a piece of aluminum or something to put over that, mm -hmm. that car will lift Just like there. crazy at the end of the straightaway. Mm. They won't be able to drive it very well. Yes. You know what? I'm not so sure what the problem. Looking out the windshield, you see the light. The sun hits you right now. Um, at that place. Either man. You know. You're right. That's terrible over there. Might not be the best timing. Yeah. No, no, I didn't mean that, but I mean during this caution. Did you notice that sun right in his eyes right when that happened? Oh, yeah. I did. We'll talk about that. Too, but you know, yeah. I've done that in Atlanta, just cream somebody, just run in there and not even see him. I think uh, Kale hit Richard one time there, didn't he? Drove him right in the wall, going into three. John, is there any way to show that the position of the sun versus where you are in turn two there? Well, that thing at the windshield, that shot we had really popped in your vision when as soon as it happened. Yeah, maybe from the in-car again. Just like we had. After the accident with Jeff Bodine, you see Jeff Gordon's car. And there's the Bodine family channel for being hauled back to the garage area. Now the damage to the right front on Jeff Gordon's car. They have taped it up. There you see it there. What's it going to do to that car when we get back to speed? Well, what it's going to do, the air is going to go up under all that raggedy edge there on the front. And it's going to try to lift when you turn in to go in the corner. And it's going to really make it push bad. He is still on the lead lap. Let's go to Randy. Well, they're waiting for his arrival right now. They've already pitted once. They changed the right side tires. They wanted to keep him on the lead lap if possible. Of course, uh, uh, beyond the cosmetic damage that you see at the front of the car that's going to cause an aerodynamic problem, they're talking about a tow-in problem. And uh, the way these tires have to be absolutely perfect today, you definitely don't want that uh, tow-in uh, running inside and out. Uh, so now they're going to say go ahead and stay out. So they come back in the second time. They change the left side tires. They strung the, uh, uh, they put a string from the rear tires to the front. They've checked the toe in. There is a little bit of a toe in problem. And they're also saying it could be a bent tie rod. And uh, they would have trouble replacing that. So right now they're going to stay out. But Ray Abraham is still checking with NASCAR to see how long this cost is. Now. They may bring him back in. Randy, I think that Ray is being informed by the NASCAR official that their team is being assessed a five lap penalty for the collision with Jeff Bodine. We'll follow up on that here in a moment. But Jeff Gordon and Jeff Bodine getting together there. You know, that's a real shame. I hate that Jeff got in a wreck, but you could see that he couldn't, the visibility coming out of that corner and the windshield and all, he couldn't really see all that well. And I, I you know, I just don't know about the call. When you exit turn two here at this time of day in that banking, you are facing straight into the sun. 
where those two cars got together. You'll see Gordon come down to pit road. Well, it's in this area we're looking at right now, Mike. Yeah. You know, coming up off of here, sun right in your eyes. And, you know, you're driving along with, you know, if you got an engine room before you, it's okay. And that's about what it takes. And if you slip a little bit, you get into someone. So they're going to bring him in. They're going to set him down for five laps. Well, that's with a clean windshield, but that was after a long run there, and the windshield was dirty and everything, and that really messes up your visibility. Well, if we're still caution when we come back, maybe we'll get a chance to see it again. 364 laps are complete here at Dover, and Jeff Gordon trying to become the first rookie to win a race since Davey Allison did it in his rookie season. Has his number up on the black flag board. Here he comes to pit road. And the DuPont Chevrolet obeying the pit road speed limit and idling along for Ray Everham and the NASCAR official in his pit stop. Well, you think that speed limit feels slow pit road, wouldn't you? just have to sit there. They better take the hatchet away from them. They might use it on somebody else. Here's Glenn. Jeff Bodine has walked out of the infield care center. First of all, uh, obviously you're okay, but uh, we understand Jeff's been given a five-lap penalty for that. Uh, your comments? Of course, I need to say hi to Kathy. Matt Barry, I'm okay, guys. Uh, got a good car. It held up. The seat held up. I learned from my brother the other day. I put another headrest in and didn't have any problems. So I was uh, trying to make a lap up. You know, we had a flat tire, a lot of tire problems today. This baby's fast out here. The tires are tearing up a little bit. Uh, and I was just trying to make my lap up, but... I could see I wasn't going to do it. Schrader was pretty quick, but I wanted a ride there just in case something happened. And Jeff came up behind me, and he was a little quicker, so I kind of slid up here to let him go by. And, you know, it's really tough off this corner. so rough and bumpy. You know, he probably got in a throttle, and the thing chattered out. And, you know, he ran into me, obviously, and somebody me around hit the wall. It's really a shame. The, the car was running good. We appreciate the Family Channel sponsoring us. Uh, they're going to be on the car some more this year. Still looking at, for that big sponsorship for next year, though, guys. So... <laughs> Do you feel like that penalty's justified? Well, you know, I didn't see it. NASCAR saw it. They're watching the whole thing. Uh, they usually do the right thing. So uh, if they feel uh, he, he deserved it, I guess he did. But, you know, like he said, it's, it's a tough place to pass. Probably got in the gas. It chattered up, and he hit me. Okay, we just understand that NASCAR has reversed the penalty now, so we'll go back upstairs and let them straighten it out. Yeah, Glenn, let, to explain that, NASCAR did call for a five-lap penalty. Ray Evernham talked to his driver, talked to the NASCAR official on pit road, appealed the penalty, gave their version of what had happened, and NASCAR gave them the benefit of the doubt that there was contact between the two cars, but that it was not intentional. So the black flag stands. Gordon goes to the tail end of the field for the restart, but he is not penalized laps. That is the situation right now, and we'll be back to Dover Downs. 366 laps complete. We'll be back after this. Well, I don't know how else to explain it. <clears throat> what? I don't know how else to explain it. So they did say five. Because I mean, we, you know, we. You did the right thing. Did okay. they say five to start with? But we were told from the radio that that they, yeah, that they did assess a file penalty, and then he came in and they said, well, okay, okay. Yeah, but NASCAR usually never reverses. That's right. That's very rare. Very rare. I think. Okay. 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 That's fine. That's fine. Thanks, T. And I, and I think we're fine. Neil, you made the perfect call on that windshield deal. Boy. Yeah. I didn't Can we see the in-car replay again, please, to show the windshield thing when it was a mess? And the other thing, if if we're still yellow. No, coming up during the red. Right there you go. That's yeah. it, right here. Okay. See the windshield. Look at that windshield. Look. Look, look right there. That's see what I'm talking about? Nothing. You can't see. Dude. Yeah, that showed it all there. Looks like we're getting plenty of Also, we keep the first replay because I think if you look at Bodine's car on the line, you'll see Jeff coming down a little bit as well as Jeff Gordon coming up. Well, you can see the visibility, too. Before contact. I mean, it's a, it's a race and accident. You know, the first one. Uh, earlier, earlier to show, and we'll say, watch the relationship between Bodine and the white line. 
see this one come down as Martin comes up. You know, is it a uh, I don't think he ever seen him. Here's Rusty Wallace fixing to get another lap back, too. We're going to race first. Okay. We can front, you know, just tell him to hold the base. But, and we. Okay, thank you. And, and then, then, then good, then we need to show it again. Show you what they saw. Right. Okay. All right, but if we if we could please hold those replays because I that'll be a neat story. Okay. Neil, show both those this two. This time you hey, talk Wayne. about the windshield. That was your story. Wayne, you you Sorry, might relieve. Jump. Oh, May. Trouble on the restart. They just waved the green flag. Earnhardt, Rudd, and Hunt Strickland and Jeff Gordon are all in it. They had just waved the flag for the replay. Rick Mass' car is a mess. He and Jeff Gordon tangled at the back trying to avoid the melee at the front. Look at Ricky Rudd's tide ride. There's Earnhardt crushed in the front and the back. It comes straighter back around the start finish line. You know, I still think the pace car's got a good shot at it. Man, Mr. Jordan trying to get it cranked up. Baylor and Hart's crew come over to check their driver. And Ricky Rudd, who had what could have been a winning car today, comes on to pit road. Man. Jeff Gordon's car. Well, never mind that little dent in the right front corner. Yeah, just as we came back, they dropped the green flag, and boy, it all happened one time there. Let's show you what happened here as Rudd comes to the pit lane. Looks like he may get back in this race. Okay, looks like Rusty oh. turns the 27 car into the three car, and Ricky was on the outside there. He ran in the back yep. of Earnhardt when he made contact. When well, Morgan Shepard got a slap there and got through it, so did Jimmy Spencer, Dale Jarrett. There's another angle from up on high. Yeah, this is after they're already going. And there in the back, Jeff Gordon and Rick Mast got together. Yeah. Well, that's just chain reaction. Yep. Let's show you that. Let's show you that first Here angle one more time. See, Rusty, he hits him in the back there, turns him into Earnhardt, and then Ricky's just picked up in the wreck. He goes up and gets to the outside there. I'll tell you what, if we take a look at this again, it looked like the 27 car floated the valves or something, maybe shifting gears. I saw smoke out of the left side pipes of the 27 and Rusty hit him in the rear. Something happened on that restart to the 27 car and he get up to speed. Let's show you in car. Is this Rusty or is this uh, Jeff Gordon? This is Gordon. This is just the end of the wreck here. Oh, he got hit in the back. And then he hit the outside wall. Ooh. Ooh. And the inside wall. Yeah, you might as well be in a bowling alley when you come off that banking up there down in front straight away. You're going to hit the outside and the inside. As Neil asked, let's show you the first replay once again. Take a look at the left side. I couldn't tell. I'll go that the red car with the McDonald's car. Watch the tailpipe on the left side. It looked like as he was coming down They're through here. They're accelerating here. Coming up through the gears. A little yep, bit of puff right, right there. There was a little puff. And see Rusty puff. jump on the brakes. It looked like something, the 27 car stumbled a minute. And Rusty tried to miss him and hit the rear. Shot the 27 out in Earnhardt. And then in the rut too. But that 27 stumbled a little bit on that start. what really stacked him up. Now the carburetor could have been loaded up and make that little puff of smoke. Whatever it was though, he did fail to go up to speed fast. Let's go to Randy. Got guys, uh, obviously you can see the damage on Earnhardt's car. When you talk about the Winston Cup points leader here, they, they're called for a radiator, right front chassis pieces. I mean, this thing is a mess. 130 laps to go. They're going to have a hard time getting this one back out there. Glenn Jarrett. We're standing by with Hunt Strickland. Hunt, it looked like uh, we obviously saw Rusty get in the back. Did he miss a shift or something? Well, he wanted him to, be able to come from second to third. Now, I guess I wasn't fast enough coming from second to third there or something. I don't know what happened, but... Uh, yeah, he caught me in the back and just turned me around. He's, you know, I don't know, took out a bunch of cars. It was one of them things. 
Well, tough luck, but that's evidently what happened. He didn't come up to speed. It's just one of those things that happens on the racetrack. Can't really blame Hutt or Rusty. Let's show you from up top here. From the uh, Raybestos Brakes aerial platform. Watch the right side of your screen. And the left side, every side, because there's going to be a big mess here. You see him start bouncing off that inside wall. And there's Hutt Strickland's McDonald's Ford. Looks like the Hamburglar's been at it. And Jeff Gordon's DuPont Chevrolet, another potential winning car today. Dale Earnhardt's would-be championship Chevrolet. One shy of the race record for caution. Leader Ken Schrader was out ahead of this. Morgan Shepard squeaked through with minor damage to the left side. Jimmy Spencer went past unscathed. So did Dale Jarrett. Here's the wave they're running. And another rookie moves into the top five, Bobby Labonte. We'll be right back. Probably had in third. He didn't say he didn't. He didn't miss the gear. He just was slow getting up to speed. He said. Yeah, but he said second to third. That ain't second to third. Then. No, you no. Was, you're that's right. Third to fourth. Probably didn't take it out of third. Floated the valves. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Let's. Should we go back and tell the one before? Because this is going to be a while. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> this is really Neil's story that I stole about the sun <laughs> over there. Well. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, we have the in-car and then the, the first replay. Okay, thanks. All right. And the 25 car beat Rusty back, huh? Was uh, Gantz? He didn't pick up the lap. No, he didn't beat Right. Him. He didn't get back. Mm. Gantz still on the lead lap, just barely. Yeah, it looked like he had nose damage. I couldn't tell. Okay. I don't know if he was or not. I just saw him go by. No. I thought I saw some damage. Bobby Labonte's in fourth now, <coughs> and Darrell Waltrip's fifth. Right, DW? Same lap. That's right. It's hot. Well, we're running out of lead lap cars. We're down to just eight of them. Okay. They both. One hundred twenty five laps to go during this 13th caution of the day. We're going to go back one to the 12th caution flag and show you another look at the Jeff Gordon Jeff Bodine incident as we saw it and as NASCAR also saw it their review of the incident was part of this. But first the issue of the sun Neil Mike they're coming off this corner and you're playing with about an inch or two clearance right there. Look right here where the action occurred. Look at the sun. That's the worst place you can be on this racetrack right in his eyes. You can't see like buddy said the windshield wasn't clean. They got together after reviewing this NASCAR saw this particular tape. They decided it wasn't intentional as reason to change. Now watch Bodine's car and the white line. That distance gets a little smaller. He does come down a little bit as Gordon goes up. NASCAR's review of this on the appeal from Ray Evernham. They decided it was a racing accident. The black flag stopped to bring Gordon in just cool him down. That put him to the back of the field and he wound up in this accident. Here's Glenn. We're standing by with Jeff Gordon. He has crawled out of the car. He's talking to radio right now. We'll get a word with him here in just a moment. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, Jeff, uh, can you tell us what happened out there? Well, you know, I just kind of got caught up in uh, in another wreck there. Uh, all I saw was the 27 car get sideways and start slipping, and whoever's behind me didn't really check up as much as I did and turned me sideways. Uh, it's a shame, man. We we just had a great car today and. And uh, I just thought really today was going to be our day. Everything was going our way, and then things 
totally turned around. What about when uh, you and Jeff Bodine got together? It looked like maybe from the in-car camera, you just couldn't see him there. Well, there is a, a pretty strong glare over there, but he got in the corner and he got loose. He drifted up. You know, he's a live car, and I'm trying to get back up. Leaders, Rusty was trying to get his live back. I want to make sure Rusty didn't get his live back. And, you know, I probably was a little bit impatient, but, I mean, I, he drifted up. I, I tried to go underneath him, and we hit, and he, he spun. You know, I, I didn't want to wreck anybody, but uh, I was just trying to get in the front. Okay, tough luck, Jeff. Randy? Ricky Rudd standing here. Uh, Ricky, any comment on that? Well, they got the goodies headache award. They ought to have the rubber head of the race award, and I give it to Rusty Wallace. That's my vote. I don't know about the rest of these guys that's sitting here tore up in the garage, but that was just a dumb, stupid move. I mean, you know, I don't know where he was going. You know, you just got to wait your time. Track's greasy. Everybody pretty much was biding their time, and that dumb SOB comes up through there like an idiot and uh, calls the chain reaction. Ricky, one of your best race cars this year you had, too. Nice and smooth ride you were having. Well, I just hate to see it get wasted. You know, a lot of guys work awful hard at that. You know, in fairness to everybody involved, what Ricky saw was the obvious thing you would see, and it might have been the first thing you saw at home, that Rick, that uh, Rusty ran into the back of Hot Strickland, but as we say many times, there's always several points of what happened in the story. We have the best camera people in the world, and we make mistakes up here, so you know yeah. sitting back in a race car when things start off like that, I mean, you can be wrong. And, I, and really, what Ricky saw was what happened. Rusty ran into the back of Hut Strickland. There was more to it than that, as Hud explained. Bad deal. You, know, I, you hate to see a bunch of the good cars go out. You can, you can understand, too, the drivers being upset. Uh, you know, these guys aren't out here playing dominoes. No. They're playing a pretty tough sport. If you're not really into what you're doing, you don't need to be there. And they climb out of those things. Uh, sometimes they're going to say what's on their mind. And I don't, I don't uh, hold that against them. And, uh, you know, it's true in any sport. In baseball, did the pitcher hang the ball up in the air? Or did the hitter just get a hold of a good one and hit it out of the park? You know, there's two there's two sides to every one of these deals, and well, now we've heard them both, and then some. We're 122 laps from the finish, and about this manufacturer's battle, we asked Jack Roush his opinion on the increased number of Ford's teams as it relates to the balance among the manufacturers here. I'm not particularly happy to see to see more people running Ford's than makes sense. Uh, if we have too many, well then. Then there'll be the interest in uh, NASCAR wanting to make sure Chevrolet stays healthy and it may be harder for the ones of us that uh, the old guards have had the port. Well, didn't it look like 27 stone? Was no, much better. Didn't look like 27 didn't go. Yeah, it did to me. I mean, because well, everybody, you know, everybody else seen kept, the smoke come kept out moving of the pipes. In. I mean, right. that means that something happened. He either loaded up and it wouldn't take off clean, or he I did. missed the shift, like you said. We well, start. Who's going to 18? Uh, we start the race at New Hampshire Monday, and I'm okay. starting third. We go all off down to turn number one. I'm down on the apron taking the lead. There's a guy inside of me. I forgot the shift. No. I was eight coming out of the corner. Easy. And I don't have any and I don't have any talent. So what I'm do you think, guys? I've had him kick out. Yeah. Yes. We are getting. Oh, that no, was done halfway. Yeah, was DNN Motorsports live coverage of the Split Fires Park Plug 500 is brought to you by Peak, the heavy duty engine antifreeze. Don't stop short of the peak. Well, in case you're wondering, here's the top 10, and <laughs> look who's on top of the leaderboard. Right, DW? Well, it's 120 laps to go. Ted Musgrave, Harry Gant, Dale Jarrett, and Kenny Schrader, Jimmy Spencer, Bobby, and Terry Labonte, then Rusty Wallace. And Sterling Marlin. Double check on the lap count. It's it's so hard to know in a big incident like that just exactly what triggers it because 
oftentimes as not there's more than one cause as we saw just then Harry Gant coming on to pit road this is the move by Harry Gant right here you know he gets great gas mileage he may not have to stop again this may put him over the top he might win the race on this one move he was in that wreck also even though he's topping off a fuel look at the nose of that thing he wrapped it in the back of somebody in that big wreck both the Leo and the Richard Jackson cars come to pit lane. That's his school teammate Rick Mass right behind. That only makes Harry better. Every time he gets a torn up car, he flies. You know that. Did you notice all the extra time cleaning that windshield? Yeah. He's getting that time of day. A couple of questions on our toll free number 800 451 7331 about Harry Gant and would he retire? We, we understand he's firm for next year in that car. Uh, the rumor persists that it might be his final season in Winston Cup racing, but right now that's just a rumor. Why? I mean, yeah. he still goes very well, you right. know, and he's, he's very active. He hadn't been hurt or anything. I'd go until I couldn't see the straightaways. <laughs> yes, yeah, September. Look at the damage up. He's got to hit pretty hard. I think they're actually going to give one to go this time around. That is the call on the left side of the car of Rick Mascar is now well up in the air. As they continue to service him. He may lose a lap here. Yep, they're, they've got a little more work to do on Rick's car. He was part of the back end of that wreck with Jeff Gordon. I'm not sure that the car out there has got a good nose piece on it right now. I think everything here is gnarled up a little bit. Among the point leaders, Wallace is ninth. Earnhardt is 20th in the race right now. That's only a 35-point swing for Wallace. Of course, if Earnhardt does not come back out of the garage, right now he could finish as low as about 30th. Mike, we're going to try to take a look at the front of the two car since he, you know, he really got into the back of that 27 on that start, but you can't see where it did a whole lot of damage to the car. That's that rubber nose on Pontiac here, and you really have to smack it to tear it. I would say that's pretty good proof of while ago. Pretty good lick, and not a lot of damage there. Well, he will line up next to Dale Earnhardt on the restart. Wallace, right back there. And there are the point leaders. They're listed in order of their position in the points, and that's where they're running in the race right now, all over the lot. Dale Jarrett stands to gain the most right now. Yeah, Rusty Wallace really stands a chance to get back in the lead lap right here. This would do it. Green flag. Brother Walters gets a good restart, and Ted Musgrave right with him. On the bottom lane, Wallace and Bill Elliott. Sure, Ted Musgrave is second place. I've heard a whole lot from him today, but he's showing up here at the end. He's been kind of flirting with the top 10. Flirting with the top of the track now. Yep. That outside lane. <laughs> and here comes Dale Jarrett up against him for second. Second place into turn three. Jarrett, Musgrave. Walter out front. And Wallace looking underneath. Ooh. There he comes on the inside. That's going to put him back on the tail end of the lead lap. And if NASCAR initiates that, uh, that mandatory tire change, caution for tires later on, it's going to get it back for him if he can stay there. Darrell Walter in 55 laps has moved from 10th to 1st. A couple of those lead lap cars eliminated in the crash. Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt. If Bill Elliott, if I can get, he's going to try to get a lap back. And he has three laps down. Dale Earnhardt. Supervising repairs on his good wrench Chevrolet. They've been in the pits now for 14 minutes. Or in the garage, rather. For Chief Andy Petrie. Trying to get things finished. And get him back out there for some points. So one part dropped the inside. Rick Mass, he's going out. He can't get up to speed. See, Bernhardt comes back on the track. He only needs to run about three laps to pick up two positions. If Ricky Rudd does not come back. Rick Mass. Waltrip now has quite a lead. Dale Jarrett, the green car, is second. And Ted Musgrave now third. Then it's Jimmy Spencer, Kenny Schrader, Terry, and Bobby Labonte. And Harry Hamm. And Rusty Wallace on the tail end of the lead lap. 
I've been watching Harry Gann. I tell you what, he is flying around this racetrack. He's making up some distance right now, and he just topped off the fuel and all. And that might be the guy we have to watch right near the end of this race. You might be right, buddy. He wins this thing today. He might decide to run five more seasons. Maybe ten. I just don't think he can do it with mileage. I think the tires are going to dictate your stopping before you can, you can make it on mileage. I don't doubt they could go distance to fuel, but we've already seen him be one of the guys that had a little bit of tire trouble trying to go a long way. Sixth place battle right here. He'll call to Bobby Labonte, the rookie driver for the Bill Davis team. He's kept that car on the lead lap and in the chase all day. The Maxwell House Ford. Now, as I was talking about here again, he started slowing down. I don't know what's wrong. Everybody's passing him all of a sudden. Front end just took a big push up out of that corner. Yeah, just wiggling all over the track all of a sudden. Re regroup and see what happened. Let's go up to the race for second. Sterling Marlin is one lap down in 10th. Dale Jarrett, the Interstate Batteries Chevy, trying to get past in 10th Musgrave. 55, the third place car. Car strong. I mean, he just, whoops, you see that little wiggle there? That'll take a half a lap to get back up to courage. Sterling's a lap down, but he seems to be running a pretty good pace. Yeah, he's running quite well. Here comes Spencer again. Of course, all Musgrave take a look at the outside. And here we go. He's got a run on him on the inside. Got a run on Sterling on the inside. 55 car will probably take advantage of that also. Go with him. And a 12. Yeah, Spencer's on the move right now. And Schrader. And Schrader. Schrader must have been one of those last guys to stop ball to go because he was leading his rut back and out. Yep. Gary Dehart, the crew chief. And Ricky Rudd. That'll be a lot of fun driving that around there today. Mm -hmm. Well, he can move up in the points as well. He is 13th in the standings right now. From overhead, I look at Dale Jarrett leading Harry Gant and Jimmy Spencer with the red of leading Ted Musgrave in 55. And Jimmy Spencer trying to close up on that pair. That's our Ray Bestus aerial camera. The best in brakes. Bringing you these aerial pictures. I hate to tell everybody this, but there was just a report that the 55 car has a fluid leak. We heard that from the scanner here. Keep an eye for that. Second through fifth right here. Chevrolet, Ford, Ford, and Chevy. If there's a fluid leak here, Spencer will be the first guy to know it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> behind this group. Bobby Labonte, Terry Labonte, and this man, Harry Gant. Here's Glenn. Well, the problem with Harry Gant is one that every race driver hates to have, Mike. The throttle sticks wide open when he runs it full throttle down into the corners. It won't mm. release, so therefore he's afraid to run it wide open, and I don't blame him here. So he has to just ease in the throttle, run it about half throttle. He can't use all the engine. At the first opportunity, they're going to bring the car in, try to adjust it, fix it. But uh, right now, he's just kind of stuck running half throttle. I tell you one thing that caused that you see this hood bent down on this car in those fender areas that hood fits flush on top of the air cleaner in turn the air cleaner doesn't clear the throttle linkage but about a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch because they want to get full maximum uh, distance between the air cleaner and also that little bit of damage to that hood might have that air cleaner shoved down against that throttle linkage. Good point Neil. You see Schrader got by Spencer there and he's moving up on the back of the 25 55 car rather. And Jeff Gordon is back in the race. He is ninth in the Winston Cup point standings and the leading rookie. He's back out to put some laps on the board. 102 laps to go. There's Gordon. He's got a handful just right yep. on the apron. Yeah, that thing looks bad. That's low. Third gear. I don't know about third gear, but I know he's got three hands full. He's coming in, Mike. You were right. Yep. He's gearing it down. He's back in. Well, they bring it out here to pit road or maybe they'll string it. Doesn't sound good either. Said the rear end's running around on the back end, which means the rear track bar is broken loose and it won't stay centered up. It's floating back and forth, so they'll have to fix that. 
So Gordon got back on the racetrack. Ricky Rudd is back in the race. Dale Earnhardt is not. You see he's still out of the car in his white Simpson suit. That's Andy Petrie standing next to Earnhardt talking to him. They've been there now for 20 minutes. Not an eternity as far as this race is concerned. Yeah, I've seen that cutting torch there. They're fixing to lay it on it. Mark Martin was in the pits for over an hour. Or in the garage. Came back out. There is the race for second. 100 miles to go. Up oh, there goes Mace Musgrave. Oh. There's that fluid leak we are talking about. Yeah. Now we can see it. Leaking all over the headers. And putting a ton of smoke in the air. And a bit of caution right there. Yep. That will be a caution. My old spotter Curly's pretty tough, I'll tell you what. He knows things way back before they happen. That put number two back on the lead lap. He got his lap back. That's correct. So Rusty Wallace is back on the lead. How's that go? Rusty's back in town? Yeah, Rusty's back in the race. Have you seen that commercial where he drives around and he blows up the speedway and everything? Yeah. Somebody called in and said, who did the stunt driving for Rusty in the commercial on our 800 <laughs> He drove that himself. They just they got the dark visor, so you can't tell, but that was rusty. This is Ted Musgrave, 55. This ties the record number of cautions for this race. We could be going. I, for I didn't record. know we were going for the record. I think we just got it right there. Okay. The average speed of this race is now 98 miles per hour. The last super speedway race to be run at less than 100 miles an hour average. Only Greg Fielden knows this stuff. 1977 at Rockingham when Richard Petty averaged 97.8. Another record we're going for today. 97.8. Right. I think I averaged 99.6 that particular race. He beat me. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you another record that's going to be in jeopardy day is us getting to the airport when this is over. Yeah. On a nice day. Yep. Clear the freeway. We're coming. Dale Jarrett, second place car on pit road. Darrell Waltrip, the race leader. I guarantee you this much here did not see Rusty Wallace get back in the lap. Definitely not. There goes Jarrett. That was tire smoke, everybody thinks yep. then when he's leaving pits. And Waltrip's going to beat him out. Plus Jimmy Spencer. Oop, there's Schrader. Boy, Schrader had a good stop. Yeah. Yes, he did. He was just behind the 55 when it blew up. That's right. And now he's coming out to pick up at three or four positions. Somebody called the 800 number. Ask what they use to clean these windshields when they get oil and everything on them. The best thing to do, they put ammonia. They usually just use plain ammonia. The driver says, I got oil on the windshield. They'll pour a little bit of lacquer thinner in there also. And they could care less how much it needs to paint up. They'll just dump it on there and let it run. <laughs> So Waltrip leads, Jared is second, Schrader is third, fourth is Spencer, and fifth, Terry Labonte. We'll be right back. They roast him. Jesus, it's hot. Is photo fake out void in Virginia? Good grief. Now, come on. <laughs> Only if you're a member of... send us that stuff. <laughs> employee of Polaroid. Why do they send that up here? I don't know. Was it the four car? Why don't they have a window on the passenger side? Pat from Georgia. <laughs> if Elmo was running in the race, would he be the leader? Yes. Of course. He's he'd the leader bonus. right now. He'd have bonus points, I guarantee you. Boys, we might have to make another ice cream run. Oh, I don't know about that, but thanks. <laughs> no, no. Thank this you. That was really good, longer. though. Thank you a bunch. Was yeah, that your dad that came through? Yeah. Well, thank Boy, you. Tom, I'm sure we you appreciate, appreciate that, man. That's great. We thanked him, but thank him again. We got two calls asking if the pace car's ever been in a wreck. Yep. Yeah. My dad turned uh, Enix Daily over on the back straightaway at Greenville. Oh, gosh. We got to tell that one. <laughs> of course, you remember when Elmo Blue blew the pace car up at Richmond. Okay. Course, then if we're, still, if we're still yellow, we got another Elmo story. Back live with you at Dover Downs, Delaware. I'm Mike Joy with Neil Bonnet and Buddy Baker. Glenn Jarrett and Randy Pemberton in the pits. 96 laps to go. Here's Randy. Well, Steve, uh, 
Believe it or not, Miller Pit Crew Award of the Race. That goes to you. Well, we're going to break it up in little pieces. There's so many guys that worked hard today, but you guys were back in the garage here really, really early, and uh, you got that car back out here. Yeah, we're definitely the dirtiest here. I don't know if we're the best. We appreciate the award. All the guys dug in. We're counting laps right now to see how many spots we can get. Looks like only a couple. It took a long time to fix it. This hurt pretty bad. A lot of stuff was burned off, but we're proud of this, and we'll be back next week. Randy, according to our figures, you can tell Steve in 20 more laps, he'll pick up two positions, and that's probably all he's going to get today. But uh, they sure gave it a valiant effort to get back out there. Stein from uh, British Columbia called in. What drivers lost the most races? Boy, boy, I have no idea. I guess uh, Richard Petty. I think it is. Yeah, Richard said he's always won the most and lost the most. Sure, it's because he's run the most. I don't think anybody has lost more races than Richard Petty. Nope. It's hard to put him in that category of losing oh, races. Tell, yeah. That's kind of a I mean, left-handed left deal there. He started 1,000 races, won 200 of them. 200 batting average would not get you in the Hall of Fame. Except will in this. Car. It will in this, that's for sure. Um, we've had three people call in, buddy, I can't believe, on the 800 number. Richard's lost 985 races. Wow. For those of you keeping mm. track. Asked if the pace car had ever been in an accident. Yeah, my dad hit Enix Staley at Greenville one time, turned him around on the back straightaway, and he got in the wall over there. So, yes, it has happened. Did he go to the penalty box? Oh, yeah. You can bet on that. NASCAR never passes up a deal like that. Now, Buddy's dad, Buck Baker, for you younger fans, was NASCAR champ back in the 50s. Now operates the racing school at Rockingham in Atlanta. And uh, he doesn't teach people how to run in the pace car. I guarantee you that. No. Well, what happened is back when the lighting wasn't all that good, and he come out around the corner leading the race, and the caution car had pulled out, and he didn't see the yellow and come right off the corner wide open. There he said, oops. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 94 laps to go. Harry Gant, Rick Mast, and Jimmy Horton are making pit stops. There are eight cars on the lead lap. We'll be right back. I'm serious. Nah, nah, nah. We'll just go back and play. That's neat. Yeah. But you know, a lot of people, you say you're dead. A lot of folks that watch today, they, they don't know your dad. I mean, they don't, they weren't watching racing then. I tell you They'll what, have to watch I'm winter glad to have him stuff. with, I tell you this, I'm yeah. glad to have him with me now. Oh, you bet. He scared me about a month ago. Oh, no. Jesus, I tell you what, I've run um, races, I wasn't this high down. There you go, Greg. Has a race ever been run when they let, ran more yellow than green laps? Mm -hmm. Besides today. Mm -hmm. One to go. And then we'll reset the record for cautions. <laughs> I got to remember what time my clock was. Tomorrow. 98. No, more if, it's laps. A, if it's. What time we normally go up? Five. Is that about? Oh. We're on schedule. Schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Schedule. Schedule is going to pass us by. <laughs> the the guillage. That's the, it. Yeah. Let's They're go over to Atlantic City to the Showa. Ooh. Well, there's a thought. Everingham. He put that on me the other day. The Showa? Yeah, let's go over to the Showa. Showa. Yeah. It's kind of like how well, they pronounce it in Massachusetts. Massachusetts. That's what Barney says. I'll Massachusetts. Tell you what, that place up there. Yeah. That well, we had the modified race and all. Oh, New Hampshire? Oh, I wow. love it. Gosh, it's beautiful. It's great. Mm. Modified. That's racing. Yeah, man. Well, we got them here. Yeah, Ricky's is. Yeah. There goes Elmo. Losing the lead. As they wave the green flag, Kenny Schrader behind Darrell Waltrip. They haul the field off into turn number one. Clean restart. Dale Jarrett is third. Jimmy Spencer is fourth. Terry Labonte is fifth. Followed by Bobby Labonte, Rusty Wallace, and Harry Gant. They are on the lead lap ahead of Sterling Marlin, Morgan Shepard, and Bill Elliott. Bobby Hillen up to 11 for two laps down. Yeah, we just got a call, Mike. They said the 12 car has a broken motor mount. I mean, it's a motor. Every time he stands in, it's right a little rare up and down. Ooh. So he's got a problem he's going to have to deal with. Did you see Sterling Marlin's car off the corner just then? <laughs> here comes Schrader. Walter Bleed Race. Schrader's going to turn right up under him here. 
every time I see a race car get sideways like that, I want to kiss this chair that I'm sitting in. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we still got 90 laps to go right here. I think that's one reason that you didn't see uh, Walter put up too much resistance. If he could, I don't know if he could handle it straight or not, but Walter has played his cards all day on getting to the end. Yeah, on the other hand, there's still 90 laps to race here. So we're talking about 90 to go, and I, don't know, I haven't seen a person yet that can go that far on tires. Folks, if you heard her voice quiver just a little bit just now, Ray Hill come through here from NASCAR and tripped and knocked us all sideways in our chairs here. Crash in the booth, and we didn't have it on tape. Mr. Schrader. Kenny Schrader has not won a Winston Cup race since the spring race at Dover in 1991. Look at this race. You talk about two guys. They went at it in the Bush Grand National Division, and now here they are in Winston Cup fighting it out again. Jimmy Spencer, two-time NASCAR National Modified Champ out of Berwick, Pennsylvania. The last win for Bobby Allison as a team owner, he owned Spencer's car, was in 1974. He was the driver. Louis Chabelle, probably. 74, yep. wait a minute. Yeah. Maybe it was. Maybe the Matador. 82. Did he run the Monte Carlo? He didn't, no, that was Roger's car, the Matador. It was Roger Spencer's. Yeah, but we had one of you there for a while. What about the Coke machine? You ought to know You this, know Greg. better than ask me trivia questions. That's right. You don't remember dinner. Get busy over there, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, Neil. I'm kidding. <laughs> I got an excuse, though. What do you have to do? No, no. I'm only kidding. Well, you see, the Jarrett got back by Spencer. They are really going at it. Richmond, 1974. Bobby won in the coach machine. Look at Rusty Wallace coming here. You talk about a car on a mission. Yeah, his mission all day is to get those two laps back. He's got it back. I think he's going to have to use some, some concern and, and pace himself to get to the front, though, because he's already experienced a little bit of problem when he runs too hard. Yeah, but Rusty's already back up to fifth place and closing in on Spencer. Of course, now, it's not like they let Rusty get back on the lead lap. Oh, no. He earned, he, earned, he earned getting both those laps back. If he joined us late, Wallace cut down a tire and could not make the turn on the pit road. He had to come around slowly under green. When he finally got a service and back out, he was two laps down. Got ahead of the leader three times on restarts. The first time he did it, Schrader passed him back using some lap traffic and held him two laps down. But on the last couple of restarts, he's gotten himself back to one lap down and now back on the lead lap. Wallace, the pole sitter, now the fifth place car. You know somebody we never even talk about is Terry Labonte, and he's running quite well today. He's right there behind Rusty Wallace right now. He's running a very good race. One of his best in the season. He had the ball for yesterday's Bush race. Ran up front for quite a while. So the car had problems. Dale Jarrett had his car right up on the wall. Coming off turn four that time. He's really hard. Really got the car up against the wall last night for real. For the race fans, Neil, this is a great, beautiful, sunny day. But look at it from the driver's perspective again. Now down the back stretch, not, not too bad in the shadows. Back into the sun again. You see how well they got the six car put back together. He's actually running right along with the good cars now. He lacks five laps of moving up two positions in the finishing order. Past Lake Speed and Derek Cope, both of whom are in the garage. Turn one, turn two, and there's the glare right there. I think that was the big reason NASCAR made the call like they did with the questionable thing with the 24 car. When Jeff Gordon and Jeff Bodine got together. I think you're right. Man. Shucks, I thought they heard me. <laughs> Look at Spencer. Spencer went the corner, got high, and slid way back in. And Rusty Wallace closes up. And 18 is closing up on Darrell Walton. Yep. Coach Gibbs is probably going, okay. Throw the ball. Fourth Throw the ball. and 20. <laughs> Fourth and 20. We're going for it. That's it. Did you get an estimate on the crowd today? Probably around 60,000 here at Dover. H-U-G-E. Whatever this place will hold, they had about 20,000. <laughs> yep. They're packed in. wonder what the Redskins drew today. They're, they're in the same category. Yep. Yeah. 
look at this. Well, I'll tell you what, you couldn't possibly see as much Ooh, easy. as Never. much contact at an NFL game this weekend that you see right here in this race. It's over. We got Mike Walker back out. He's going on trying to finish up some good points. All right, he's 28. Now we're at lap 423 in 32 laps. Yeah. NASCAR will give the teams another caution to check tires. That will split the distance between the last green flag and the finish of the race. Just about half, that's how they determined that. The green last came out, I believe, lap 408. So they kind of split that and picked lap 455. And we'll take a caution at that point if there is not one between now and then. Kenny Schrader's leading now, and you see. Walter's having a hard time holding Jared off there. I'm going to predict we set a few records for cautious this race. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, you wonder why these guys are running so hard. They know there's a caution coming. If they could just stay right where they're at. Other than track position being so critical, they might want to be right. in front. Be the first guy to pit road, first guy. This guy here doesn't have to worry where he's at. When he pits, he's probably going to come out. First. As the pole sitter, he had second choice of pit positions after the Kawiki team, Jeff Bodine. There's where Wallace has progressed. He's gained five spots in the last 56 laps. And of course, he led over 150 laps today. He will, 195 laps he has led. He will almost certainly pick up the five bonus points for leading the most laps. Look at Dale Jarrett, is Ray Walter down. Cars handling well. I don't know whether he's holding something for the last little bit here or not. But that, that car is like it's on a string going around here. And Rusty Wallace has clinched the five bonus points for leading the most laps. Not necessarily by leading anymore, but by some of the other guys falling out, had a right. chance to run him down. All right, he's really pushing Jimmy Spencer right now. And Terry Labonte coming up. Spencer's car slides up right there in the corner, but Rusty's still not able to get under him at that particular part of the track. He's oh. tried it several times. When he grabs that accelerator, he goes off that corner, though. I tell you, that, that car runs well, though, every race. And there's uh, Terry Labonte moved into the scene. But, you know, these guys, every one of these drivers here know there's a caution coming that will pick the door. So, you know, that's the concern to get there, and then we got, we're going to have the last little run for the win. 25, 26 laps away. Average speed today just might be 100 miles an hour. Look at this. Darrell Walter, <laughs> Dale Jarrett. <laughs> Dave Marcus gave him a lot of room. Yeah. Yeah, we saw Darrell once Jarrett got under him. Jared ran him down from a good way back once he got there and made that move. Walker personally pulled over, let him go. While they were doing that, Strader got a little bit of a breathing room out in front of him. They moved past Kenny Wallace, Kenny in 17th place. Neil, that would have never been that easy with 10 laps to go. Oh, no. We can make them real wide with 10 to go. Oh, I guarantee <laughs> you. There's a look at that second place battle. Kind of surprised. I really thought, you know, no, not taking anything away from Spencer's car is really good. But I thought Rusty, as stout as he'd been all day, would be able to get up here and drive around Spencer. But Spencer's done a good job. Ford, Pontiac, and Chevrolet for fourth place there. If Spencer makes one wiggle, though, he'll go back two spots in a hurry. Yeah, that's 14 will take advantage of it also. Here's your Napa Field standing update. Eight cars on the lead lap back through Harry Gant. Because there are no unimportant parts, I'll buy your local Napa store. Back through Harry Gant there on the lead lap. One lap down, Morgan Shepard and Sterling Marlin. And two or more laps down from the rest of the field. This would have been a good location for a park store today. 
We got one. But, yeah. Used parts, real used. Yeah. You know, while we watch the leader's race here, I don't know how Harry Gant's driving that car with the throttle sticking like that because what happens is one lap it won't stick and you get a little brave and you'll nail it down and you get ready to back off going in the next corner and it's like somebody's pushing you when you back off and you keep going and, and you got to get up there and try to get the switches turned off. It's a handful. Well, I've ran those things buddy before. Just turn the switch off when you get in there. Back on, back off, back on. You run several laps. We're going to go. I'm telling you, you know yourself, it's not a lot of fun. Do they run a deal over the throttle pedal where if you lift your foot back, it'll pull that pedal back? You know, that's a funny thing. Uh, not many of these guys do that. But all, uh, like Jeff Gordon, that's the first thing he puts in one of his race yeah. cars. And it comes from the sprint cars where if one of those ever hang up, you wake up in the next county. <laughs> or up on top of the billboards. That's right. Of course, sometimes if the interference is like you said with the air cleaner, you may not be able to pull it back. Kenny Schrader laps past Sterling Marlin to put Sterling two down. Here at Dover, 63 laps to go. Our live coverage on TNN continues after this word. For me that I seen. What's that? What was that I seen on that thing about Buddy? That Greg can. Where I wrote a note and sent it. I don't know. Did you write a note that had his name on it? I thought I seen that. Am I going bland? Is Good that buddy? your Doug, no. monsieur? No. <laughs> hey, um. Frank, Joel, you're doing a great job. I know. Fax back and get her phone number. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mike Joy. What was it, Rusty Blackleg? You're doing Black a Lake. great job. I didn't know I had any fans in Canada. Wendy. Wendy, Wendy Canada. Oh, good. We'll just call all the Wendy's in Canada and find oh, out who she was. <laughs> Look how many people call won't know it wasn't Black Lake. Yeah. Did you say you just raced in Canada? What's that? Didn't you say you just raced in Canada? No, yeah, that's what it is. No, New Hampshire. Close. I'm getting a tan. I tell you, this is hot. This that's why like driving a race car in here. That's why the crud's on the windows. We only need to cut it back up to about here. Man. And then we need to get some real dark stuff. Yeah, but I think it's magnifying glass. That's, but yeah, See what right. she's doing? She's peeling the stuff over here. But It'll you can't because there's a glue on it. You're going to make a real mess. Well, lap 40, uh, 45 or 54? <laughs> 445 or 455? 455? 455. Okay. Yep. Where's the groundhog? What is he? Is he sleeping? What is that? What is that? I see people yeah, that's walking not a, around. That's not a freeze. Who is it? That's Jeff Gordon. No, he woke up. Welcome back to Dover Downs, where Ken Schrader Leeds, Dale Jarrett, Daryl Waltrip, Jimmy Spencer, and Rusty Wallace. Had a lot of calls on the 800 number about why Rusty Wallace wasn't black flagged after running into the back of Hutt Strickland. And you may have missed Strickland saying that as he got down into turn number one, the car kind of faltered, wasn't going as fast into the corner. Might have been a case of him backing into Rusty rather than Rusty driving into him. Too close to call. NASCAR said no harm, no foul, no penalty. Racing accident. That's why. Good call. You're going to penalize somebody. Really has. You really have to be sure that the action was deliberate. Otherwise, you penalize somebody. You can't take that back. Wendy from Canada. We agree with you. Mike Joy is doing a great job. How about that? That's his cousin in Canada. Mike I don't goodness. have any. I don't know. I don't have Up. Any. Yellow flags out. We have a caution. Mike Waldrop has gone into the wall at turn number one. And there's a car up against the wall in four. They seem well. to come Jimmy in pairs. Horton. Air Horton. Seems to come in pairs, doesn't it? Boy, oh boy. That boy's had a hard time this year, I'm telling you. So Mike Walter brings out the caution in one, and almost simultaneously, Jimmy Horton got up against the wall in turn four, which prompts this question from Terry in Indiana. Has there been a race where there were more laps under caution than green? 
In 1952, Herb Thomas won a Winston Cup race at Wilson, North Carolina, and averaged 35 miles an hour. So you would guess they probably had more cautions than green laps that day. Records don't go back to 52 to indicate how many yellow laps there were. That took care of the mandatory caution right there. They won't have one now. I'm That's almost right. positive. The thing that concerned me, they were talking about doing it 454. They didn't make it to this point. You know, they didn't split it halfway. We lost one before we got here. Will they extend it and try to get it to a safe point? We'll see. This could be the most important pit stop of the day right here. Leader Ken Schrader, second place car Dale Jarrett, third place car Darrell Walter, but they came into the pits. Jarrett will get four tires. Jack Van runs around on Walter's car and on Schrader. They're going to have to be tough to beat Dale Jarrett. Here comes Walter Bout, and Walter did it. And Schrader comes out, and he'll be the leader. That was the disadvantage of being way up the pit road. Dale Jarrett actually had the fastest pit stop. But he, of course, he stopped Schrader, too. That right. the other time. Eight cars are on the lead lap. Terry Levani has called in. And the cornflakes got soggy. Uh-oh. Says the engine has gone soft, and he will have to nurse it home. He's had a great run here today. He is in sixth place right now. Has seven top ten finishes this year for Billy Hagan. But he will run it to the finish. His brother Bobby's in the top ten as well. He has four top ten finishes in his rookie season. And Bobby right now is posted on the lead lap, one of those top eight. We'll go down to Randy Pemberton. Well, we got ready to talk to Dale Renard. He's climbing in. I'll see if I can get away with him. We're going to have to sneak in. These guys are still really thrashing on this car. Dale, any words to say at all? What can you say? You know, you guy takes out all them race cars. Just got caught up in it. He's a little upset, understandably. Man, these guys have worked hard back here, guys. 47 minutes they've been in the garage area, Randy. But he's got enough of a point lead, 284 points over Rusty Wallace. That this will not put a major dent in his lead. Jeff Purvis, Greg Sachs. Schrader's the leader. Jared is second, Walter third. Spencer fourth, Wallace is fifth. Sixth, Terry Labonte. Seventh, Terry Gant. Eighth, Bobby Labonte. Ninth is Morgan Shepard. And tenth is Sterling Marlin. 53 laps from declaring a winner at Dover Downs. We'll be right back. Yeah. I would, wouldn't just have to see him run some. Rusty, rusty, rusty. He didn't gain anything on the pit stop, did he? Mm -mm. Yeah, he got around Spencer. Oh, yeah. That's, that, that's, that's a big move yeah, that right was there. Yeah, him trouble. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay. Do we have, do we do that graphic on the Winston Cup points, how points are awarded? We must have 20 questions on that. Who is that? What team is that coming across now? Uh, Ray Bestus. They're still hmm. in the race. <laughs> Two <of> <laughs> that is a little alarming. A couple of Sterling's guys leaving across the gate. They're still in the race. Am I weak? Am I weak? Just, just in it here, please. Okay. Oh, all right. <clears throat> It'll be 51 laps to go next time by as the sun bakes down on Dover Downs and the monster has had its fill today so we go on to a track that's just as tough and twice as hard. The one they call the Rock. Yes, and they're not saying that because it's got a big stone out in the front. It's a hard place to get around. Another mile speedway where you see great racing action live on TNN. Saturday, October 23rd, and Sunday, October 24th. Bush Racing Saturday, Winston Cup Sunday, the AC Delco 500, 12.30 Eastern Time, right here on the Nashville Network. And then we'll be at Phoenix. 
And here, look at the cars that are officially out of the race. We might add Lake Speed to that race. A list of the Bud Moore car. Been a bad day for Bodine. You know, I'd have thought more cars were out of the race than that. Seems like it's been a steady stream going in the garage here, but they fix them all and get right back out. Well, Mark Martin has just pulled to the garage after picking up those two positions. He did pull in. Hut Strickland and Ted Musgrave are also out. It's been a tough weekend to be a Bodine. Although Todd won yesterday's Bush race, Brett Bodine broke his wrist in practice Friday. Brett crashed into the wall here in the Butch Mock car, the factory stores Ford. And Jeff Bodine got tangled up with Jeff Gordon and crashed into the turn two wall and is out of the race. Some of the uh, pit crew members have early <laughs> planes to catch. That's the uh, gap in the fence at the start finish line. There is no access tunnel here at Dover Downs because we're so near the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, the water table is pretty high and it was not practical to dig a tunnel for access to the infield. So uh, they come across the start finish line. Rusty Wallace right now running in fourth position would gain 85 points on Dale Earnhardt out of a lead that was 284 at the start of the day. Yes, we know they have a tunnel in Daytona, but the geology there is a little different. We're told. I'd say. <laughs> I don't know why, but I guess it is. <laughs> well, we said it, so there's a look at the uh, Unical suite, the board of directors suite, and the that's the front stretch for the horse track. Here at Dover Downs. Yeah, those Close guys are tight. They're roughing it there. Yep. Let's go to Glenn Jarrett. No, I'm Glenn? Glenn? We're, we're standing by. Jimmy Maycar is in uh, discussion with the NASCAR official right now. We're not sure what this is all about. Uh, let me find out and I'll get right back to you guys. Glenn, I think they're going to give him another caution at 475, is what the discussion is about. We'll see if that's the case. They're holding a couple of teams on it right now. And again, concern over tire wear, whether or not they'd want to go 50 laps to the conclusion of this race under green. Well, if you talk to crew members, they'll say no. You talk to the drivers, they'll say yeah. But they're the ones that got to live with explosions. That's Carl Simmons, the NASCAR official, talking to Jimmy Maycar. I said Jimmy said whatever it is, he don't want it. Right. Glenn? Well, the discussion was, as you said, Mike, they are going to throw another caution at 475. The reason Jimmy Maycar doesn't want that, Dale Jarrett's car runs better on used tires, so it's going to slow him down. His car's a little slow when they get on fresh tires. The longer they run, the better he runs. So that's the reason Maycar is upset. They don't like that call at all. I guess the benefit, if there is one to this, Glenn, is with a 25-lap run under green, you can much more let it all hang out knowing you've only got to get 25 laps out of this set of tires. Yeah, can you imagine having these guys on 40-lappers, tires on 10 to go, and tell them to go after it? Uh, yeah, it could be a bad situation. In fairness to the tire company Goodyear, their engineers do their best to come up with a tire that will give longevity, consistent speed and not trail off for a run of a fuel stop which here at Dover is about 100 miles and that whole combination the way the teams are applying it to their chassis setups today perhaps didn't come together quite as well as everybody would hoped so they have these precautionary caution flags so that we don't get into major tire trouble green flag 48 laps to go. Kenny Schrader, Daryl Waltrip, Dale Jarrett. Look at Daryl. He's showing a little muscle here. He said he had a real good race car off in practice. Here he comes. Oh, oh, man. Got into Schrader a little bit right there. That was almost a little more in casual contact there. Look, he caved the right front of his fender in on that right front side. He'll hold on to second. Jarrett is third. Wallace is fourth. Harry Gant is fifth, Bobby Labonte is sixth, Jimmy Spencer and Terry Labonte. The lead lap cars. Well, I tell you, Darrell Walter's car is flying. Did you see how fast he can come straight or back? Well, when did we call this plot twist about lap 100? Here yep. comes Darrell, and there he goes. And he took the 18 car with him. Here comes the two. Rusty Wallace able to get up on the inside of Schrader also. If anybody moves up, everybody moves by. First yep. to fourth in one lap. That's right. This 
out here, the racing they're doing right now is really just positioning for this last caution that's going to come up here in a few laps. But it's real important, Neil, because if you're in Waltrip's shoes and if you're the first guy into the pits, you've got a better chance of being the first guy out of the pits than if you come down that pit lane third, fourth, or third. Absolutely. That's exactly right. Like that was the reason I was making that point. It's so critical being the guy that dictates when you go in, get the first one in, get in there, and maybe have a little bit of edge on now, also, you see games played every once in a while. If you know everybody else is pitting way down the line, nobody says you have to come down pit road at the speed limit. You can bring them down real slow. We see that every once in a while. And you can't pass that guy in front of the pit road. Not on the pit lane, no. And it comes down to this. I'm going to tell you what. I wouldn't want to pick a winner. Well... Don't go tell Joe Gibbs the Redskins lost today. Uh -uh. That's the team he coached to Super Bowl victories. Now the race team he's trying to coach to another win here. You know, it looked like uh, Schrader might have been pushing a little bit in the first three or four laps there, and now it's coming back to him. He's running this group back down, and he looked like he's in very good. Oh, look at Harry. Harry's moved up here. Maybe the throttle stick in there is better. No, I imagine they <laughs> fix that boy under the caution there. You think this is the time of the race you'd want it to stick down? <laughs> no. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Never. Me too. No. I was kind of joking about it, but you never want that thing to stick. <laughs> so Gant is reeling in the lead pack. Jimmy Spencer behind him, Bobby Labonte, and Terry Labonte. Then one lap down, Morgan Shepard, and two laps back, Bill Elliott is up to 10th. Darrell Waltrip's last victory, the rain shortened Southern 500 at Darlington, 1992. Dale Earnhardt, 56 minutes to make repairs to get him back in the race. Got a modified out there, but he's back running. It's going to be tough to get by Darrell Walter the way he's handling right there. But he can almost dominate the line that he wants. I'd love to play you the interview that Neil did with Darrell yesterday down in the garage area <laughs> where he said, you know, we got frustra <laughs> frustrated, he says, with ourselves. And he said, we're going to come in here. We're going to have a bunch of fun. They had karaoke set up on the back of the truck. He, oh, he went high there coming yep. off the corner. And there it's going to get him. He actually went high to go around Rick Mast. And he got up just high enough that it enabled him to get on in the gas and get up beside him. Here comes Gant. Caught that pack. Ducks under Kenny Schrader. Not that time. I said Walter told us that he and his team were going to concentrate on having fun and having a good time and enjoying this sport. They're enjoying it today. You bet. You know, he also said, hey, I've got a good race car right here. And he said, this thing is as quick as anybody here. Looks good now. Mike, you can pressure yourself right out of contention. You can get under too much pressure and make stupid mistakes, and that's what he told his crew. He said, let's go have some fun. We win, great. If we don't, let's just have a good time in it. Here He's he coming right back at Dale Jarrett. Got inside Jarrett after they lapped around Dale Earnhardt, and Walter goes back out front. Oh, he's got to be loving this. Folks, don't pay off the pool just yet. <laughs> Here comes Jarrett back well, for another run. Time. Well, Daryl gave him a little room down on the bottom. Yep. A little room wasn't a lot of room. You know, with 10 laps to go in the race is when you really get on the thing here. 10 laps to go before this caution right now. They know there's a caution coming. They want to be up front, close to the front, to make this last stop. Harry Gannon passed Schrader now and is in fourth place. Yep, he's really in there, just like you said, buddy. He must have a roof put on late this afternoon in Taylor or something. <laughs> no. You get this good a race, you kind of forget how many good cars have fallen out of this race. Raider's car was real high there. Yeah, I think yeah. he's got a handling problem. Like you said, but it's going to seem to be pushing up. Well, they'll have a chance to fix it. We'll look for caution here nine laps from now. It's pretty impressive, Walter. Got a little high, the 18 car passed him, but he came right back and went around him. Really impressive move. Going around Mike Walter, the 24th place car. 
Darrell's best finish this year, fourth at Martinsville in April. I think the same man built all these motors. You notice they all seem to run the same speed down the straightaway. Just kidding, folks. Don't write me hate, man. Just write me. Write me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right here's where Walker had to go around a lap car earlier. They got under his able to hold him off there. Well, you remember how he started the day? Remember lap one? That was what, about 48 hours ago? Yeah. Look at it. This was coming around the second lap of the race. Hardly ever see him get in that kind of trouble. He was very lucky not to get knocked out of the race right here. Look at his car. No. Dick Trickle did a great job of not running head on into it. Got to be good to be lucky, right? Oh yeah. Okay, what? Look how much when you know, they pull up on him as he comes up on lap traffic, which means he's probably playing it safe, and then he just drives away from him. So he's got a lot for these guys. In five laps, we'll look for the caution flag. And again, it's because of NASCAR and the team's concerns about tire wear. We well, need to have a safe race. You know this, Mike. They might beat him, but they won't outthink him. He's one of best thinkers in all of racing. I tell you what you're talking about thinking. I can't help but think Rusty Wallace sitting here in third place knows the type of pit work he's been getting year in and year out all season long. And uh, it wouldn't surprise me to see those guys really throw something at him on this next stop. If they're going to be fast on pit road, this will be the time. Raider looks like he's reeling them back in. That car comes and goes. They might be just driving the heart out of it and getting in trouble every once in a while. to the caution, 28 to the end of the race. When they give them that 20, they give them that caution, they always have two laps of caution. They at least let the leaders come in, and then they let the cars a lap down come in. So we're going to get a restart probably with about 20 to go. Sixth place, Jimmy Spencer, Morgan Shepard, one lap down in ninth place. This is not for position. Spencer goes on by. That big scrape on the left side of Shepard's car came in the lap one accident, but since then he's had a good run. Up front, Walter trying to drive away another lap here. Get that caution from around and once the pits are open, get in and get done. Dale Jarrett, Rusty Wallace, Kenny Schrader, Harry Gant, and caution is out. How would you like to be on one of these pit crews now, the pressure involved? People always call and say, how can I get on a pit crew? This is when they earn their money. It's going to be so critical getting in and getting out in a good position. Pit crew on a NASCAR race, over the wall pit crew, has become every bit as essential as the skill positions in any major sport. You can see I've been on pit road now. See the crew chiefs going on giving pep talks to the, the crews. That's their pep rally right now. Wait, you asked for one car that didn't have a nudge on the nose. Look at Terrell. Yeah. That clean his as a body, whistle. His body, man, is kind of like that guy, the, I can't say the brand name, but the guy that's supposed to fix these washing machines on television, the loneliest guy oh, in yeah. town. He Mate. don't get to work on on the 17 car, because Daryl don't tear it up. Well, he, he missed a good chance. Repair, man. We can say yeah, that. okay. He but missed a good chance early to work on it. I think even Maytag let him go. I don't think they use him in the anymore. <laughs> that, Here we go. That looks like the Teflon nose on uh, Walter's car. That seemed to lead in the race. You see Walter was able to roll down two or three car lengths ahead of these guys. Look, look how slow he's bringing it down. Mm -hmm. uh, there goes Jarrett. Here goes Walter. Now, Rusty's way down the end of pit road, because yep. as pole man, he got second choice of pits. Now these are just the lead lap cars that are in right now. Will somebody gamble and take on just fuel or just two tires? What do you do? What do you do? Four tires, it looks like. I, I think you have to. 24 laps left to race. There goes Walter, pal. Jarrett. I tell you what, the Walter too. Walter too did a good job right there. And yeah, they did. Picks up another spot. Picks up another spot. Now. Yep. That's so critical. Just a few laps to go. 24 laps to go. 
Darrell Walter with an 18.7 second stop. Stays out front. Next time by, they'll be racing. Hopefully for the last restart of the day. 23 laps to go right now. Walter about in front of Rusty Wallace, Kenny Schrader, Harry Gant, and Dale Jarrett is back to fifth. Our thanks to Ray Best at Best in Brakes for giving you the pictures from our aerial platform. And also our thanks to Racing Radios out of Forest Park, Georgia, that allowed us the two-way communication hookups with the drivers during today's race. Dale Jarrett's crew had trouble with the jack on the left side of the car during his pit stop. And then it cost him, sent him back to fifth, where he'll line up on the restart. And Mikey was second to fifth back there. So there is Waltrip looking for his first win of 1993. Nine points for Chevy for the manufacturer's title. There's a Pontiac in second, a Chevy in third, fourth, and fifth. Pace car drops down off the banking. 22 to go. There were the pit times. Aaron hangs the tail. Walker out in front. All the cars on the lead lap did get four tires. Here comes Rusty up on the inside. No time to wait now. He's got a little room down there. Nose under him. That's the position. That's the position. Well. Schrader moves up to third. Harry Gant goes to fourth. That pit stop by Rusty's crew put him up there in second place. He was behind Spencer and behind Jarrett. That gave him one car to pass for the lead. First time Rusty's led this race since lap 265 when he waved Jeff Gordon past down the low side. Morgan Shepard getting out of the way of, of uh, the 25 car so he can get up there and make a try. Then behind him, Gant in fourth, Jarrett in fifth, and Spencer, the Meineke car, in sixth. Behind them come Terry Labonte. Spencer taking a look to the outside of Jared. Now that'll be a hard pass. Drop back inside. That's not going to happen on the outside. If he passes, he may pass him on the bottom side. 17 laps to go. Spencer took a look to the inside. Couldn't quite get up beside him. Hard to imagine you'd have to run this hard all day, dodge as many wrecks just to get in a position to try to challenge like this. You don't have time. You just can't get under. Wally Dollenbach brings the Keystone Ford to the pit road. Makes a stop. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Just don't quite have enough muscle to get all wet. Oh, uh, there goes Harry up high. Boy, Jim can run along at fourth place and slip way up. Boy, he's talking about a couple of wrecks. There was a five and a three going on. Oh, oh look at this. Jarrett and wow. Rocky Rudd. Trying to get down out of the way. Oh. And Gant gets Spencer. I tell you what, that was pretty close to a wreck right there. Rusty Wallace's move was the 30,000th lead change since the modern era of Winston Cup racing began in 1972. Spencer's turned up the wick a little bit now. He's trying everything he can to improve his position. But I tell you, those are pretty good race cars he's trying to pass. Jarrett, Spencer, and Gant in sixth. Then the Levani brothers, Bobby and 
Terry. Spencer's car is beginning to drift up higher in the corner now. He, if he if he's going to make a run at him, he better not stay up there very long. On the last lap of yesterday's race, Tracy Leslie drifted up high in the corner and lost that spot, bounced off the wall and almost into Ricky Craven. Craven almost had himself in position to get by Walter just then, but he didn't take that chance going down in the corner. They're black flag in the five and three. I guess they feel that the two cars are kind of in the way right now. Plus, Paul well, Earnhardt, if he ran to the finish, he would pick up one more position. We close right there a couple of them. I believe Rusty's got out there, kind of got the lead he wants. He's one of these kind of guys who wants to get the lead. Yep. He knows how to take care of it. He said at the top of the day he had the car to win here. And there is Earnhardt coming to the pits in the point chase. Wallace second in points. Earnhardt the leader. Earnhardt right now is in 27th position in this race. Jeff Gordon's battery car has also come to pit road. The best thing that can happen to Rusty right now is these two cars start racing side by side. Boy, you talk about losing some time around the racetrack. You lose a ton when you get side by side. Eight laps to go. This runner takes a look at inside. He wants to make that move no matter if he's clear enough. Make Walter always think about that inside. Traders have, what, eight top five finishes this year? Eight top tens? Looking for a win. Right up under him. I don't know whether that'll loosen him up at all off the corner. They look like they're closing in on Rusty just a little bit. Up oh, there goes Paul Walter. He made that mistake. He moved out just a little bit. Second and third, right there. Schrader, Walter. Now for fourth place. Dale Jarrett, Harry Gant, Jimmy Spencer. Five laps to go. Mm. Pretty good race in here with five laps to go, I'm telling you. Spencer looking back his car out and off that corner. Doing everything he possibly can.
Wallace picks up that skins game bonus, $22,800. For winning from the pole. Goes up, of course, 7,600 a race. Will be a win with some controversy attached. You heard Ricky Rudd's account of the incident on the restart between Wallace and Hutt Strickland. But you also heard from Strickland, and as he has done every time he has won this season, in a tribute to his friend and longtime adversary, the late Alan Kowicki, the Winston Cup championship, the Kowicki victory lap that Alan pioneered when he won his first Winston Cup race at Phoenix. And Alan said that day, I wanted to do something the fans would remember. We all remember. You know, I like that for a lot of reasons, not just because, mainly because of Alan. But all those fans lined against the fence that have sat there all day, now they get to see that driver up close and through that door window as he comes around, receives their accolades. They get a good look at the man who has worked hard for 500 miles to earn their cheers and now to celebrate this victory. They follow to the earned it, I'll tell you that. He drove a wonderful race. Rusty Wallace goes to victory lane for his 28th career win. Ties him on the all-time list with Rex White, the 1960 Grand National Champion. Here's Glenn. Well, only five hours and 22 minutes ago, <laughs> I talked to this man on the pole position. He told me he had a really fast car. He said he thought he could win the race today, but boy, it was a lot tougher than you thought it would be, wasn't it? It was a tough one. I lost the right front tire, and I got two laps down. Had to make them back up and got them both back and won the race. Car handled perfect. Everything was great today. I know you, I know you had some uh, some worry about that. One time you almost got your first lap back. Schrader got got you about lap back down again, but uh, you kept pedaling. Still, still came on the victory circle. Everything really worked out good. It was a pretty tense race today. I'd like to thank Miller. Uh, Miller Janio Draft, Goodyear Tires, and Mobile AC, and all Pontiac, and all the people involved. It was a great day for the Penske South Car. All this way. Well, he's crawling out of the car right now. He's going to give a big wave to the fans. There it is. Rusty Wallace, another victory in 93. Randy? Darrell Waltrip, uh, you talked to Neil Bottoms the other day, or saying uh, you wanted to have fun now. I guess that was fun. Boy, that's a long, hard race right there. It was a great time, and praise the Lord for uh, a good day for the Western Auto team. And say hi to everybody at home, Mom, Dad. And sisters and mother and follow Frank hope you're feeling good and uh, the car was incredible and a pit crew I mean have they stepped up have they stepped up beat Rusty Wallace out of the pit like he ain't nothing now he beat me on the track like I ain't nothing but we had a good time this afternoon and uh, praise the Lord for a good run for us I give him all the glory and the credit because uh, he's uh, he's blessed us today and just tickled to death I, I needed to win badly I didn't need that last caution I had a great set of tires good year in their defense, I don't know what was going on, but with the weather, we didn't get the buff tires. And so that's probably why some people were having trouble. We were having zero trouble, and we needed to win, but caution flag saved Rusty and killed us. Congratulations, Darrell. Uh, good run for you. Well, that's DW, the car owner, had to get his word in. He gets to sign the check, after all. Slowest Dover 500-mile race ever. We'll be right back. Exclusive coverage of the Splitfire Spark Plug 500 on the Nashville Network has been brought to you by Haviland Formula 3 Motor Oil. Add more life to your car. By Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Splitfire, the patented performance spark plug. It only costs more till you use it. And over, Sears Craftsman, a line of 1,600 hand tools made in America, guaranteed forever. Bring you the Winston Cup point. And here they are, Earnhardt the leader, Rusty gained a bunch. Mark Martin, Dale Jarrett, and Morgan Shepard. Today's finish, Wallace, Schrader, Waltrip, Jarrett, and Gant, the top five. Then it was Spencer, Bobby, and Terry Labonte, Morgan Shepard, and Bill Elliott, the top ten. We'll see you at Rockingham, folks. Hope you enjoyed today's show. So long from Dover, Delaware.